Good evening, America, and all the other lesser nations. It's your boy Donnie, former president of the United States, and really the best president, quite frankly. I'm here tonight to tell you not to be like China and instead donate to the OC of podcast. But don't just take it from me, the greatest and most loved president of all time. Listen to these other satisfied customers. I think of the host of the OCA podcast as my five and a half additional children. And like a good American father, I support them by donating to their only fans. If only I had started donating earlier, Uncle Ben might still be alive. I never met my real dad, but that's okay. Because after donating all my savings, the host agreed to be my new dads. I want the change out of his coin purse to donate to the podcast. No, not my coins. Yes, your coins. It's time to do, 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 do. Donate to the Patreon! Alright! The OCA podcast needs my money more than my sister Serenity! Donate today! Welcome back to the OCA Podcast. I'm your host, the Anime Collector. <coughs> Joining me tonight is Random Eleven. Hello. And Reese2753. Hi, go. And also, this G Fuel. Nice. <sighs> Presumably, Green Line will be here when he's done eating. I don't know about putting him. Pansy has work in the morning. <laughs> yeah, come on. Screw him. Um, also, I just wanted to mention, um, I don't want to give out like too many personal details, but King Style was hospitalized um, after our last show. Uh, he's been discharged recently, but if you uh, are the thoughts and prayers type, um, there you have it. So let's uh, start screen sharing. Not, right. used to, not used to being so close to being on time. <laughs> so, I'm not used to almost making the, the finish line here. <laughs> All right. First things first. If you would like to support the OCA podcast, there are new and amazing ways that will be revealed over time. There is the OCA podcast Patreon. There is also the Anime Collector Patreon. And if you would like to support us directly, you can do so here uh, at ocapodcast.com slash support. So jumping right in, we've got a lot to... Uh, yeah. Okay, so hold up. <laughs> hold up. The Oh, the Discord is shit. Okay, I, I read that as Twitch for some reason. Um, so I was panicking behind the scenes just a moment ago because when I hit go live... Everything went live except for Twitch because the word shit is in the title. <laughs> so I was like, oh, fuck. And I changed it to like shit with an exclamation point instead of an I. Um, and then I had to eventually just change it to poop head. <laughs> and that uh, that pulled it off. So it's, we're, we are live on Twitch, as you can see. Mirage. Lee Mirage Lee. Just <laughs> Give me anyway. the shit, too. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. Anyway, um, jumping right in. Uh, first things first. So um, I've got a interview here. I was tipped off to this by Ronan Ja. Shout out to Ronan. Um, with uh, Wendy Lee regarding um, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. So let's go ahead and hear what she had to say. The Bleach remake, I guess. Yeah. And that's still going. And I yep. have not been a big part of it yet. So I have a very small role, um, uh, Manoli, who showed up uh, early in the first few episodes. So I got to come in and do that. But I'm like, so when do we get to Yodoichi? <laughs> that's the one I'm really waiting for. Um, so I got a little nervous about that. But the fans have been telling me, based on the manga, she has a very big part of the, the final story arc. So I'm looking forward to that. And I know nothing about it. So it'll all okay. be a surprise to me. Yeah. Sounds like you might know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, as you can hear, she was asked to come back to play the minor character at the beginning uh, and was extremely excited to get to voice 
Yoruichi again. And they gave it to Anaris Kononez, everybody's favorite union voice actor. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, I'm the English voice of Yoruichi Bleach. That was your blood war. Whoa, black cat emoji, ninja emoji. Right. So, um, Zeno Robinson had this to say if I see anyone giving Anaris any problems, I'm swinging. The only reason I haven't actively looked is because I don't want her to see it on the timeline because there's also a majority of us celebrating this win. But don't let me see that BS like how y'all tried to harass Jameson Price over people of color playing people of color characters. Now, there's a massive difference here. In that Jameson Price voluntarily stepped down, mm-hmm. didn't he? Yeah, he made it seem like it. Wendy Lee did not voluntarily step down, yeah. And the dubbing studio had the gall to have her come in for a minor character, but not the main character she had played. And it, that interview I just showed you was from a month ago. So they didn't, you know, let her know even back then, like, yeah, we're planning to go another direction. Right. Um, So Zeno then says also super glad to see Bic is in financial trouble. Now, most people who saw this thought this was referencing Vic because some of the kick Vic types intentionally spell his name. Any so it does, so it does it come up in, sh- in searches? I don't know, but they, they do it as a mocking gesture. Yeah. Now, that's kind of a dick thing to do, considering this is how Vic handled it when Zeno Robinson took over his character of Junpei, when he said, big congratulations to Childish Gan Zeno in taking over the role of the beloved ace detective himself, Junpei. You'll be great. Ta-da! Zeno has leveled up. So, again, I just want to point out when when Zeno Robinson took over Vic's role, Vic celebrated and congratulated him. When Anaris takes over Wendy Lee's role, I'm the English voice of your Ouija and please talk to your blood war! Like, <laughs> I don't know. Just seems kind of like a dick move. Didn't even mention Wendy Lee or say any of the platitudes like I will honor the legacy that you paved the way for no, nothing, no, nothing about her whatsoever. So that's kind of a dick thing to do. Now I will say that, um, uh, well, I guess we'll address this first. Also super glad to see Bic is in financial trouble. So Squally also thought he was referring to Vic and said how to show you are not a POC but a POS in 150 characters or less. <laughs> now, um, that's quite the statement. <laughs> uh, Squally says that she is was under the impression it was person of character. Wow, WTF were you going on about, right? Rather than person of color. Um, I don't know no if offense. I believe that. Yeah, but no offense to Squally the, that uh the way that she phrased it, the way that she phrased it is a little weird if she did know the proper acronym or initialism. She word. obviously would. I don't know. I mean, you it seems like common knowledge, but um, but the way that she phrased it, how to show you are not a POC, if you read it the way she's saying, person of character. How to show you are not a person of character, but a piece of shit in 150 characters or less, right? Versus how to show you are not a person of color, but a piece of shit. And her, it makes less sense. I don't know. Either way, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, now, here's the thing, though. Actually, he's not talking about Vic. <laughs> he is talking about Bounding into Comics, who tweeted out that they had previously covered Anaris Canona's antics when they were triggered over Crunchyroll casting a white voice actress to play Suleta Mercury in um, Gundam, uh, The Witch from Mercury, right? And then I said, 
immediately after that. We are in very critical financial situation. To support our continued Bleach Thousand Year Blood War coverage, please donate to our cash app at Nerdigans Inc. Bounding into Comics has not put out an article in two days. Oof. So, RIP, they're going the way of... Uh, of um, one angry gamer. <laughs> don't don't it like pro tip. If you're being serious about being in financial situation, don't use the emoji that looks like it's like laughing crying. Uh it makes that's, it seem like you're joking. That's not. That's the tears of Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Like this is the twin waterfall tears, but yeah. I mean, I don't know that I, the way the reason I bring it up is only because there is actually a tilted head laughing so hard tears are coming out emoji. Oh yes, right. So I thought you were referring to that one, and I was like, wait, no. that's not what that is. Anyway, that I don't know. It, emojis are weird, but that one to me looks like it's crying but happy, and just the emoji like, in general, <laughs> just the emoji emoji in general. Uh, yeah. I, I take that as like a kind of a way of lightening the mood. Like, mm. oh, don't take it so seriously. Um, so I almost would, if if you didn't tell me that they didn't post an article and I didn't know anything else, I would have just have assumed that was a joke. Well, I got to tell you, I'm really, uh, I'm really disappointed to hear this because as, as far as, content goes behind the scenes producing this show i fucking hate going through crunchyroll crunchyroll is a bitch because they release a billion articles a day and less than one percent of them across the two week period of you know from show to show are worth covering um so it's just a huge pain in the ass to open all these tabs read the headline and the decision fatigue of deciding do we cover this do we not cover this um and trying to aggregate the knowledge of what is the overall flow of the show going to be, you know, and all it's, it's pain, painful, right? Bounding into comics has almost the inverse problem where they have so many articles that I would love to cover, but they are so long that like, I have to sacrifice every week. Like let's, let's skip this one. Let's skip this one. Let's skip this one. Right. Um, and I got to tell you, whenever we do cover them on, on stream, they're one of the best, news outlets that we do because they are extremely thorough compared to everybody else. Like Sankaku complex is my favorite because the amount they, they just get stuff in like three paragraphs, whatever another website wrote that was a 10 pages long, three fucking paragraphs. That's Sankaku complex. I love it. Right. Bounding into comics is not like that, but the level of detail their team goes into to find out the backstory of uh, whatever, you know, controversy they're covering and why it matters because the lore of the character from Bo like they are fucking on it with that stuff. So um, I would really love it if, uh, if they do not go out of business. Cause quite frankly, um, even though only about again, 1% of the articles that they cover are ones that we end up going over. Um, they've always been pretty fucking great. So yeah. Anyway, back, do we have back to the topic for a sec? Sure. Um, so do you think the other guy's name was price, right? Whatever. Jameson uh, price. Sure. The other one that stepped down from his role. Yeah. Um, price. so do you think that he voluntarily, like actually voluntarily said was offered the role and said no. And then they said, well, since we're replacing him, we may as well replace your as well. Or do you think they went to him and said, listen, we kind of, we kind of want to go with the person of color for this role. Uh, we don't think that you're, pr you did a great job, but we don't think that we sh should return with you. We should give it to someone else. Let them have a chance. And then he internalized then he that to... as, okay, fine. I'm going to say, yes, I'm stepping down. How and then can when I they use did this to virtue signal? Yeah. yeah and then thing? when they did the same thing to Wendy Lee, most likely yeah. she wasn't or possibly I... wasn't as supportive of that. Perhaps I should have um, taken a page out of uh, Founding of the Comics uh, book and actually looked up Wendy Lee's Twitter and see if she said anything. Or or maybe they hadn't got to her uh, yet with the, the memo. 
<laughs> All right. Let's see. Does she have a Twitter? Yes. All right. I don't want to put it on screen because uh, then I have to add it to the doc. <laughs> but just see if she said anything. No, doesn't look like it. I'm looking all the way back, like September 11th. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I Jameson Price came across as super slimy, um, and he was like, "Remember, he's like, because um, didn't so." And it was also different with Jameson Price because Jameson Price previously already left the show, right? Like that was a thing uh, where where he wasn't yeah, even. He wasn't even the last voice actor to voice Chad. Yeah. Like he actually left the show to try to pursue other things. And then he came back after the fact because the show actually became super popular and he seemingly didn't know that that was going to occur. And now he wants a piece of the pie back. Right. Remember we talked to, I'm pretty sure he was the one we talked about this with, right. Where he wanted to get back in and his, the way that he was um, treating it, was like he was, um, you know, as I often call it, weaponizing your Twitter followers to renegotiate a deal you didn't see eye to eye on, right, um, with the the company involved, right? Um, but then he came out and said, there's a lot of rumors going on, and he's holding up the paper, that Jameson Price hates Viz. On the contrary, I love Viz. Viz <laughs> is wonderful, right? That was his whole stupid spiel. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I don't know if he I ever was said in the brand. We, we, I used to have the video. The, I used to have the videos the in the brand. Kind of clicked on it, but yeah, because he, yeah. he and then he, uh, he, he. I think he. I don't remember. Yeah, now that I think about it, I don't remember if he actually voluntarily stepped down or if he just tried to save face after the fact. Now that I think about it, let's see what the chat says. Well, it, or it might have been the other, the second voice of. Uh, uh, I don't even remember his name, so I don't think so. But anyway, um, it's Clownfish TV. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> TCG says the reason they use Bic is so Ron Toye doesn't show up because <laughs> he like he frantically. Uh, remember we we covered when, uh, um, like he would come into posts. And just and like have that same copy and paste thing on everybody's post, even when it was, uh, even when it was that guy who uh, what was his name, uh, K.W. Miller. When he's like, um, there were seven founding fathers. I am the eighth, right? <laughs> anyway, um, and yeah, he showed up in the comments there for the Dragon Ball porn or whatever that thing was. Um, we should keep this in mind if we ever need... Oh, for like Wendy Lee? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, anything new? We just covered uh, We just covered the Wendy Lee situation, Ronja. Not heard from us in a while. Um, uh, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> what about you guys? How's life? Mm, I'm all right. I've been devastated in Super Mario Wonder. <laughs> I don't think you should be talking about that right now. That's a <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely don't want this channel to get nuked because of you, Randy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I will talk about that in a minute. Ron Toye was in the comment section for the sacred ointment. Okay. You mean the? Do you mean um, elaborate, Kasibo? <laughs> anyway, so um, moving on from here, we got some other. We've got some other semi-related to Vic News. I guess directly related to Vic News. Actually. Hold on one sec. One sec. Mark Warden voiced Chad for the first eighty-five episodes. Jamie Price voiced him for the rest of the series. There you go. Oh, did I fuck that up? So the and, well, whatever, whatever it is, the first guy. Uh, oh, oh! I remember now. Yeah, thank you. So, um, what it was is that he got mad he didn't get cast for Thousand Year Blood War, 
And we said, dude, you weren't even the original. They've already they already had a history of replacing voice actors for um, who, who voiced Chad, right? That's what it was. I must be thinking of something else where the guy left um, because he didn't think it was going to be big and then got mad later when it was big. No, that's definitely – that's Mark Warden. That's him? Or The first voice of Chad, whatever it is, he definitely mm-hmm. left mm-hmm. for some reason. He's And then there was a rumor – I remember covering this. And there was some rumor that he didn't want to do voice acting anymore. And then he came back and was like, no, 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 I'll still do voice acting. And, like, trust me. I, and he, he, he was the one that sat on the thing. And that's how I remember it anyway. And I remember the video that you're talking about where he was reading the paper. Mm-hmm. talking about. I how... used to have them in the brand. I, I was hoping to, I could just click on them. We could watch them again. But they're not. I, I must have removed them. Um, they're not in the Vic brand anymore. Actually, maybe they are. Let me double check. But, yeah. And then from my memory, too, the second no. voice of Chad was the one that was, like, bowing down and saying, I'm glad I can give up my role. But anyway, it doesn't matter. All right. Done now, unless they're going to redub it for the Blu-ray. So, um, <laughs> moving on from here, we got another we got another interesting uh, thing that has occurred. Okay, I really need to... Fuck. I think I need to leave the, the call and clear my cookies, because... Or the cash, because... Uh, it's going super slow for me again. Let me know if my mic starts to cut out and shit. All right. All right. So this person uh, put out the tweet said, here's Chuck Huber captured on audio telling a random fan at a recent event that Vic Mignogna is stupid as a 12 year old and that he quote, should have been taken down for his behavior, but it was just the other Funimation actors insulting Vic, right? Chuck. Um, so I've got this video. I'm going to play it. It's you know mostly audio, but whatever. Um, Say it ain't so, Chuck. A lot of people hated him. So I'm just going to cancel. Is it playing? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. One of the guys was doing incredibly yes, shit all things that should have been taken down. That was a genuine like curiosity I had because I was not following it, but it was something I definitely paid attention to. But it was, it was like, yeah, his strong. biggest issue was the higher Probably the scummiest lawyers. A bunch of people were like, we can make money off of this. Oh, really? It's naive. It's like a 12 year old boy. As long as you treat Vic like he's a 12 year old boy. Oh, no. Super. I mean, can we even tell that that's Chuck Huber? I can barely tell. I I 100% believe that's Chuck Huber. Now, here's the thing, though. I actually don't think this is out of line for Chuck, given the uh, Vic. I think Vic is a sex addict uh, right. thing. Okay. Um, so a lot of people are saying like, oh, Vic, you don't have any friends. Even your good friend Chuck Huber is throwing you under the bus. I don't think that's what's happening here, personally. This is just my take on it. Okay. But what Chuck is saying. So he says the guy was doing incredibly shameful things that he should have been taken down for. I would love to have Chuck elaborate on that. My take on this situation, this is, I was kind of thinking about this um, when we were prepping for the, sorry, prepping for the show. My take on this is that Vic dates much younger women. And although I have no issues with consenting adults, you know, um, having a relationship, if I was 60 and I went out to go bowling or something with my buddies who are also in their 60s and I brought my 60-year-old wife and one of my buddies brought his 24-year-old girlfriend, it would really create a weird dynamic. Yeah. It's <laughs> you just know like, what I mean? Ah, come on, dude. Like, it would be Chuck super one- weird. Wasn't Chuck the one that wrote the email that was supposed to like arborate or yes. whatever? That's um, where the that's where he was he was trying to come up with a way to get both sides to concede because again, I don't think Chuck believes I I'm I, I think I could say with full certainty that Chuck does not believe Monica's story, right? He doesn't believe he can clearly see that like he saw the animosity against Vic. He saw the way people talked about him behind his back, right? So he was trying to come out and he's like, I know you are all lying <laughs> with your bullshit. Fucking, um, what's the guy that voices that character in Naruto? Um, 
Neil Kaplan, um, with the his dick was pressed up against the back of my head or whatever, uh, and all that. Like he saw all that unfolding and looked at it like, come on, you guys are being fucking ridiculous, right? Um, so I personally I think that that when Chuck wrote that, he was like, where can we have both groups concede some ground and meet in the middle and not have this continue to spiral into what it's become, which has been destroying the fandom, right? Destroying the entire industry uh, in the West uh, effectively. In a well, I mean, yeah, you can, you could look at it like that, but you could also look at it like maybe he legitimately thought Vic had a problem and it, so, and the problem could be as little as he dates people that are too young yeah, um, not so. I, I'll just say I young, do believe but just is too young act. for his age. I think that Vic is actually. Um, I think that Vic. So th- let's address the twelve-year-old comment first, right? About him acting like a twelve-year-old or being as stupid as a twelve-year-old. I think Vic has arrested development, right? His father left when he was ten. Um, I think right around that age, a lot of trauma came into his life, and it, he's got arrested development. I think it's one of the reasons why he gets along so well with younger people, right? Not necessarily minors, although I'm not saying he's bad at um, at interacting with minors and stuff at conventions. But um, I just think that his ability to connect with a younger crowd um, versus, you know, becoming a crotchety old man, so to speak, uh, at his age, um, I think it's one of the reasons why he connects so well. Right. Is that he is still a kid at heart. Right. Because he's got that sort of arrested development. Now, something that happens to people when they are in that sort of situation where they do not really age up mentally, um, like obviously people gain new information, they learn new life lessons and stuff. But when you are sort of stuck in a, uh, a way of looking at the world that is still very childish, um, sexual relationships become very strange. Because I think what Vic is actually addicted to is validation, right? Like, I think that it is, like, more important that he gets than oxygen. Okay. Are they set up? Yeah, they're all upstairs. Awesome. Okay. Be safe. Sorry, she's walking the dog. Um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, so I think, I think um, like I said, I think, I think Vic has a validation addiction. Right. I think it, it's more important to him than oxygen. Right. And so I think that Chuck sees that addiction and sees how it manifests into Vic spending time and, and having relationships with younger people um, and looks at that as that is being the shameful thing. I'd love to hear Chuck, you know, elaborate on like what, what is his exact words here? Oh fuck! It's right, right before that part. Shit. <laughs> that was his exact phrasing. A lot of people hated him, so they used it to cancel him. The guy was doing incredibly shameful things that he should have been taken down for. Boy, doesn't that sound like Shane Holmberg? <laughs> um, so, personally, I don't know. I don't think this. Um, I don't. Fuck's sake. <laughs> um, I don't think that this actually invalidates uh, the friendship at all. I think. Chuck is just a straight shooter in that regard. That's just my take on it. Now, he did actually quote tweet this in reply, and this is what he had to say. Hold on. Hold on. I just want to say this is what I was laughing at. Is is Chuck taking both sides or toxic position? (laughs) Rephrase the question. (laughs) Um... (laughs) I feel like I feel like a reference is to uh, kick Vic and I stand with Vic are equally toxic is in there, yeah. <laughs> but I yeah. don't quite understand it. So Chuck said this. He said, "Unlike you, virtue signaling ass kissers, I speak the truth to my friends, even when it's hard." And this is near verbatim what I told my friend and his lawyers at the time. I also told him not to sue anyone, and certainly not any women. But if he felt he had to sue to focus on the corporation and, if necessary, the spineless turd man. (laughs) (laughs) He's got your number. It's just like stuck (laughs) under our shoe, man. (laughs) I just can't get 
get away from it. <laughs> Didn't even need so, to tell us who that was. I either. We just we just we all like, know. He must be talking about Ron Toye. <laughs> he can't be talking about the spineless turd under our shoe. <laughs> 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 He goes on to anyway, say, moving on. He goes on to say, and yes, we're still friends because our because your friendship, oh, because your friendship doesn't mean shit if it evaporates during hard times. Yeah. So uh, I said this before on the podcast. Uh, it says uh, Jesus said in the Bible that frankness is the sincerest form of love, meaning that when you care about your friends, you point out when they're making mistakes. You know. So um, I think. I think Chuck is actually a pretty good friend. For, Randy, for being a you love friend. me. I what? get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love you too, Randy. I love everyone. Yeah. Random's an equal opportunity uh, corrector. <laughs> anyway, do you guys have any thoughts? Um, this kind of like just dropped, so I I, I mean really I got nothing. To formulate. It it doesn't surprise me considering he was the one that was arbitrating and mm -hmm. admitting get, like trying to get Vic to admit to uh you know some bad things like like cheating on people and stuff like that um that he would have an issue with that behavior and it his friend lost a lawsuit that cost his friend a lot of money I'm sure he does not like the lawyers. Um, and so here's a here's a crazy uh, just quickly thing that his unfolded. point his point about the you know focusing on Funimation and Ron in the lawsuit probably would have helped him out he would have probably had a better PR uh, aspect of it not soon now legally I don't know how it might have been harder yeah or I don't more I don't think but... that would have worked um, because Ron's even though Ron is the one with the greatest amount of defamatory tweets um he wasn't like his didn't hold weight to cause vic to um to get ousted from the industry the way that monica's did well right? it was ron admitted to calling all of those conventions yeah. right yeah but that was that was after the the ball was in motion right on the lawsuit i don't remember the exact right? time so um i think th i don't think it would have worked i think i think Chuck looks he, back. At he the could situation. have still dropped the lawsuit against Monica and and uh, Jamie once he found out that Ron sure. was the one that was calling. I don't know, man. I don't. I just. I I don't think that would have been the right move because no, it probably wouldn't have been. But in a because, PR sense, that's what I'm just talking. Like about. it's easy to look back and say, "Well, how would you how would you have handled it differently, so to speak?" But I don't think it would be the right move because, pardon, um, because. If you have initiated a lawsuit arguing that these statements are defamatory and then you decide to just take them out of the lawsuit, I think it weakens your case. I think it makes your case look less um, strong because you are dropping people who said things that affected your career, right? Um, and on top of that with the Slaytosh, which again, this is well into the ball rolling on, on these pretrial motions and everything uh, with Slaytosh's affidavit. Um, they were able to show that uh, the text messages where Ron Toye said, you know, Monica's agent is calling all the cons telling them she won't be there if he is or whatever, whatever that was phrased. So I, I just, I don't think there is an option. I think, I think, I think Vic picked the right people to sue. I just think that the, that the people he chose to have re represent him weren't very good at, you know, the law in terms of getting stuff there. However, I still think that um, the biggest problem was Chup in the sense that he treated a bunch of the um, the procedures incorrectly for the Texas uh, yeah. Rules of Civil Procedure. Like he he outright threw the book out the window, right? Um, and it just it wasn't. It, like the writing was on the wall pretty early on. And if the, um, if the appeals court wasn't going to turn things around, then there was nothing they could do. And I, I think ultimately the thing that eventually tanked the entire lawsuit was uh, the mobile notary scandal. Like Chup already didn't like Ty, right? He was already um, 
uh, impatient with Ty. He hated fucking Lemoyne, but Ty didn't get, you know, like he, he liked the people who weren't wasting his time. Right. Which would be, um, um, Jamie Markey's lawyer. Although Jamie Markey dodged the fucking process over like a bitch for quite some time, but that didn't, that didn't affect Chup's schedule. So he didn't really, um, have to deal with that other than them, I guess, coming in and no, because they didn't come in to talk to him about that. They came in to talk about the, uh, um, them trying to, uh, depose and then file tcpa yeah which honestly a way to a good way to handle like that like let's say um reforming that tcpa anti-slap would be you waive the right to do tcpa if you do a deposition although i guess they couldn't because even even in that situation the entire reason they were able to to file tcpa and it applied to every defendant was because Jamie Markey had dodged the process server long enough that they were able to do the fucking depositions. And then as soon as she was served, they had 30 days from her serve or whatever to file TCPA. So while Monica and um, Ron um, and Funimation's TCPA had lapsed, um, Jamie's like ability to do it had not. And then when she filed, it applied to everybody. What's up, Stan? What are your thoughts on Chuck Huber? No. No, she's not here. Hey, close my door. <laughs> Can you please close my door? Appreciate if, it. If you fix my problem. Nope. That does, that's not how it works. I don't negotiate with terrorists. Come on. <gasps> oh, damn. What do you mean, please? That's fine. I, you I, either I, deal with I, it. When he can just watch. Oh, uh, okay then. I, I, I just took a minute. I, oh, I don't know what they're, I, thought, I don't know I what they're legit, saying. Like, dipped, but using yeah. piracy while he fights terrorism. Yeah. The terrorists have been neutralized. Nice. <laughs> All right. Counter terror win. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Huber's. Uh, we don't. We don't need to have him admit it. It's pretty obviously fucking him. Um, DiCaprio moment right there. Ronan Jaw says, "I already suspect from day one, with the recasts and the unnecessary multicasting, not giving new VAs a chance to audition. Plus, there's not even a lot of characters in Bleach. Uh, there aren't there like eighty-eight Stern Raiders or whatever the fuck those things are called. Yeah, didn't, there's a billion Stern didn't they? Yeah, didn't they have a whole thing about how the Thousand Year Blood War was like depriving Japan of voice actors because they needed yeah because so they were all they were yeah. all in it yeah and like I mean we're we're past that discussion but like it's they could have cast that so many people in so many different things and instead it's like now nah, you just get to replace like Chuck said in his Nobody affidavit knows. that Vic was using his fame in shameful ways to obtain sex at cons I do yeah. not believe that's what he said I believe yeah. he said he used his fame in shameful ways to obtain sex. I do not believe he said at cons. Now it's possible. I, again, I'd love to have Chuck clarify. Go ahead and ask, but um, I don't believe that's what he said in his affidavit. What the fuck? Where did all the comments go? Oh, hold, hold on. Still here. And then there's no way that Vic would be okay with Chuck calling him stupid as a 12 year old. I didn't say that he would be okay with it. I'm <laughs> saying that I think that I think that Chuck believes that, and I think Chuck is right about that. I think anybody yeah. who knows Vic might agree. For fuck's sake, get out of here! No. <laughs> okay, go. What are you watching? Netflix. Speaking of twelve-year-old, or rather, the children. <laughs> uh, so, how how is everybody's weekend going? You check out that, yeah, no, same, Ronan. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm with you there. Like, just I, was really... I wish Wendy Lee was in charge. Yeah, up. yeah I, I was gonna check it out, but now I'm not. <laughs> I'm glad I never started. Yeah. All right. Good. I might have to step out of the room to fucking connect to the TV up there. Mm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
I'll be right back. So, um, did you get that? Uh, did you check out that show, Reese, that I sent you? Oh, I forgot. Oh, you forget about something like that? Oh, uh, no, never. I'm sorry. My my time was already. My schedule was already filled, man. Like, oh, really? <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't change my priorities. You know. Is that right? Uh, right. I was already set on Fair something enough. else at the time. <laughs> I've been playing the extended demo of Mario Wonder. Okay. Don't tell yep. us where you got it. It's the extended <laughs> demo. I don't know. I got it. Um, yeah. So far, it's good. But there are some very difficult levels that how's, crop up. How's, how's the voice acting? You don't notice it. Like it's a new voice, but it it could have been him. He he matches it good enough. He's back. Had the terrorists finally been neutralized? That terrorist is one hell of a negotiator. I'll tell you what. <laughs> no, they got him too. <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> Are you a terrorist? Why you do this? Hold on. Rearrange it. Were you done with? Oh. Are you done with what? Uh, his comment about his a twelve year old. No, I I've lost my train of thought again. Let's see. Okay. Um. um I mean, I have friends that are like twelve year olds that <laughs> they wouldn't like to be called twelve year olds, but that's what they are. So. Yeah. Nobody likes to be called out on their shit. That doesn't mean that it's not necessary and and something that a good friend does. Yeah. Randy. Ron Joss says, Bleach is dead. I wish. I guess you mean VA, Wendy Lee? Uh, was in charge. I don't think he means the venereal disease, Wendy Lee. Uh, yeah. Was in charge continuing the dub cast back in mid 2000s. It felt alive. The actors put a lot of heart and effort. I don't know. I didn't get past the uh, Soul Society argument. <laughs> think what you want. Okay. I don't care. I think that Chuck is being an honest friend here. All right. Yes, Ron was definitely calling conventions before the lawsuit. There's proof of that. Is there a reason that we were holding on that one? Because my connection sucks. <laughs> oh. um, can you give me some examples of the other stuff that he's been doing? Like, this is referring to the guy who uh, posted the video of Chuck, um, the audio recording. Dead air. No, no, no. No, no, no. The terrorist was my daughter. That's who I was talking to. <laughs> That's the one that, that bends your arm behind your back and makes you... Uh, Say uncle or whatever. Look up at your face. Little eyes. <laughs> All right. Then they, Stan, then they use the telekinesis on you. Stan right? says face palm is what he thinks of Chuck. Ouch. Saibo says even Mars Girl blocked uh, Jason Reynolds. I mean, that could have been before the... Uh, that could have been from the block plot, though. Or blockchain or whatever they call that thing. Uh, I would definitely interview Chuck. Um, hopefully not a, during a time when my kids are constantly interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> I defend a lot of dubs. And I'm still going to watch Bleach dubbed. But the Yoroichi situation pisses me off, and I'm not defending the dub anymore. I don't know why you feel the need to defend a dub. Do you just mean like you're in a, a dub apologist? Like you, you think that they're good when other people are arguing for subs? Jaroichi pushed me over the line. I could forgive everything else, but that ruined it for me. Really? I, I think that the the person who plays Yoroichi in the the new the new VA mm -hmm. um 
does a decent job as the bunny person from My Hero Academia. But as Yoroichi, the clip that I seen that was floating around the internet, I don't know. She's like nasally and she can't pronounce words properly. So it well, is like on top of the fact that I rerounded the podcast a little bit because I missed out on the conversation. Like the the, the chick had the your voice of your in her bio at the top, and I'm like, oh you no way! Fine. Like oh my god! Like voice of your yeah! Like starting five minutes ago, you bitch. Uh. So oh. I, I, she might be a good voice actor. She's not doing it, but in my opinion, she's not doing a good uh, your voice. Fair point. I don't know that I would say. Um, I don't know that I would one hundred percent agree, but fair point. Um, well, do we know Vic, who he was speaking to? Chuck Chuck saying this to Vic is one thing. Chuck saying it to other people is another. That's a fair point. Smart Geek ninety seven says Chuck can call out Vic for scummy behavior and still defend him from the false allegations. Uh, one does not inherently negate the other. Yeah. So yeah. real quick, two things. Um, you were talking about uh, um, him, like his friend lost a lawsuit, so he can now, it's easy to say that he hired scummy lawyers. Believe it or not, something that has come out of this is that apparently Chuck hired Ty Beard to represent him um, in his divorce with his wife. Uh, so apparently, apparently Chuck has intimate knowledge of uh, <laughs> the lawyers and is speaking from a person, uh, a place of personal experience. And then the thousand year blood war needs to be redubbed as a union dub and bring back all of the original VAs who were replaced. Um, that's a pie in the sky dream. <laughs> I can agree that it may be, it may be a nice thing to have, but uh, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> it could yeah. happen. It's well, happened it before. Come back for it Cause it wasn't union. I don't think so. It sucks. The only the only time that uh, that they do that is um, out of spite <laughs> with Crystal Laporte. <laughs> All right. All right. For so the Blu Ray, just put enough pressure on the them and they will fold. So um, I don't know that we actually ever end up covering this. The, it's been very hard to keep the show up to date on everything. But um, on October sixth, Mars Girl tweeted today was supposed to be the day of the hearing to find out how much money screamy broccoli man owes to the people he wrongfully sued disappointingly his attorney martinez not beard beard seems long gone has reported covid like symptoms so the hearing is canceled i'm sure she means postponed but um but yeah um so there you have it um i guess we are at the tail end of uh of his lawsuit coming up um where the last hearings will be to determine because uh, you guys will recall that uh, Monica and Jamie also appealed for fees. And I think I think Jamie Markey had something going on, too. Um, I think she's sued for or not sued, but like she put forth a motion or something for um, uh, to basically subpoena Vic's financial records or whatever. So um, we will report on that in the future. So they're counter suing him or no, they're just. No, I don't know. I, I still think it's bullshit that Jamie Markey should even get um, her uh, her fees paid for because she yeah. had the uh, Times Up Legal Defense Fund. Like, if anything, um, the money should go back to the defense fund. Right? As far as I know, this is all just as a result of the uh, fees hearing because he's uh, because Vic's on the hook for paying fees. Mm -hmm. So they had, and then uh, yeah, the Supreme Court came down and said that they. Uh, the first uh, chop mm -hmm. undervalued uh, Monica and Ron's um, lawyers. Mm -hmm. So, and then also, I guess there's, well, I guess there wouldn't be damages. It's just the, oh, the, I guess there's sanctions too, but yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I haven't been followed since uh, he lost it's clear uh you know Riketa hasn't been covering it no one really has been that i follow anyway it's been covering the actual lawsuit so anymore nobody except this was it after the deposition i'll need to i'll need to look for the uh the legal documents and get them into the timeline to see like it all laid out on 
on how all that happened. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it was after the deposition. Um, same as uh, what's his name? Um, Todd Habercorn hired Ty to represent him. Um, and that in re- the stuff with um, uh, Jesse Pridemore, uh, which that all just seemed to fall like evaporated. I'm sure that just the, the mere thought of being uh, held legally accountable uh, caused her to fold. I think the new Euroichi VA is fine, but they did this f- for status and that's it. She got the role because she's black. So the black community can claim Yoichi when she was never just theirs. I mean, it definitely seems like a political move um, to it's cast 100% her. A, a political move. And I, I really despise this because I want to live in a world where black people can voice white characters. Like, I don't, I don't think that this is actually a good move you're making, you know, yeah. like it's, it's just really not a good place to be where you, uh, where you try to build a world around people's skin color, you know? We did, we did and I was telling this to Footnum, they kind of screwed her over because oh, yeah, it's like, okay, yeah. they're going to, nobody's going to go to your conventions to get your Ouija stuff signed. They're going to get, you know, Mirko stuff signed, but not your Ouija. They're going to pick Wendy Lee a thousand times over. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and honestly, Anaris has shown to be um, divisive. Like a, 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 yeah, just not, not a great person in terms of uh, um, like demanding. And she, what, how many it, it, minutes did she have lines worth of in uh, in the uh, Jujutsu Kaisen movie? Like, Reese, yeah. it was oh, like, like five or something. Like, like less than 10 minutes, right? She got all bent out of shape. The movie brought in like over a million dollars or whatever in, in theater screenings. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, the weird thing is Viz did a union dub for Yashahime, but couldn't do it for Bleach. Yeah. That is what I'm hearing is that um, one of the reasons that the characters are getting recast is being attributed to, although I think there's other reasons for these specific characters who have been recast, yeah. including Roger Craig Smith didn't come back for Bleach. Um, I think that was because of the union thing, and I'm I still bitched about it. I still like heard yeah. the voice, and I'm like, ah, uh, it's not the same. <laughs> but, but they got uh, Ichigo. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think yeah, I think a lot of people would notice if you know the main like three people who do it, you know, aren't there. Where does Chuck live, by the way? That's Chuck's fault for not getting a lawyer that lives closer to where he is. Would Ron's misuse of his insurance affect the money awarded to Ron and Monica? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I heard the, uh, <clears throat> I heard the, like the idea floating around that he was misusing his insurance, um, in to to handle the lawsuit. But I don't know that that ever got like. Um, pursued so i i doubt it i mean maybe there is a world that exists where yes the answer would be you know like yeah it could um it could affect it's also it, on but... his it's also on his insurance company to care right right so i like it, it there yeah there probably is a scenario where it could matter but i don't think it will this seems to care more about inuyasha than bleach and that pisses me off okay the latest hearing was rescheduled for November 1st. All right, cool. Good to know. Uh, the whole point of VA is to ignore looks. Um, I don't know if it's the whole point, but uh, but the whole point of meritocracy is to give it to the best person for the role. Um, Jesse still talks shit about Todd to this day, claiming that for legal reasons she's been silenced, but still talks shit about him. Jamie got the court to compel Vic to reveal his finances because he missed the deadline to pay her fees. Okay. Uh, three minutes. Yeah. Three minutes, three minutes. This, this girl voices the character and, and thought she deserved, you know, a percentage of the million, you know, that it brought in or whatever, the 10 million or whatever it was. David Lodge can't come back either because he wasn't approached. Yeah. Maybe David Lodge is the one I'm thinking of. Um, uh, who, for maybe Bucky? I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting him and oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting him and Jameson price uh, mixed up. David yeah. Lodge is the one who left. And had already been replaced, um, I believe. Yeah. Maybe. He had anyway. left ages ago. It's like him coming back now would have been like... You could tell how much I give a shit about Bleach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that all of this stuff is not fresh. All right. Yeah. So real quick. Japan's Japanese population is dropping in every part of the country. Foreign population rising. 86% 
local government leaders say, we need gaijin foreigners or we'll go extinct. Hell yeah, boys, let's move to Japan. Why you do that? <laughs> I didn't want you to scroll down. I'm not scrolling Jeez. down. <laughs> nice. 75% of Japanese Gen Z have, quote, no hope for Japan's future due to the elderly. And end-of-life companies look to innovate as Japan's death keeps rising. Um, so, you know, we talk about this a lot. Um, just kind of keeping the finger on the pulse, you know. Um, I hold on to articles for months at a time so that I can just read the headline and then read, you know, one of them like we're about to do. Uh, but it's it, good timing. It ain't getting we're, any better. We're in, we're in October, you know, it's Halloween month. Yeah. Japan, the land of the zombies. <gasps> it works Japan, out. land of the zombies. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um. So they say here, uh, Japan's end of life industry is struggling to keep up with the high number of deaths amid the graying of society, but some companies are coming up with new products and services in response. According to the health ministry, a record 1.57 million people died in 2022, up from 1.25 million in 2012. And issues, uh, and issues like a lack of crematoriums or space in mortuaries have made headlines in recent years. Indeed, a survey published by the All Japan uh, Cemetery Association in June found that 27% of funeral homes um, who responded felt that they were short of facilities to store dead bodies. Fucking imagine that being a problem for you. To, to I would solve. say, Grandpa just died, but we got to put him in the dumpster. Like... Like I think of the Monty Python, like bring out your dead. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's how fucking it, it sounds like a biblical plague is occurring in Japan for there to be this many dead bodies that they can't even store them. Right. One of the companies looking to tackle the problem is Sanyo, a business that originally manufactured industry grade cooler bags but which recently developed a refrigerated box that bodies can be kept in temporarily until they are cremated. So uh, yeah, st stick them in the meat freezer. <laughs> Sanyo became aware of the increasing lack of facilities to store dead bodies a few years ago and realized that by utilizing the technology the company already had for its cooler boxes, it could offer a solution to the issue and expand its business into a new field. Imagine owning a refrigeration company, a King Styles here. Howdy, buddy. You're muted. All right, I'll get back to this. <laughs> so imagine, imagine having a refrigeration company and being like, you know, man, we're in this horrible recession. Inflation's through the roof. We can't even uh, like... I don't know how we're going to continue to stay afloat if things don't turn around. He's like, I have an idea. <laughs> Fuck. Let's just stick bodies in the refrigerators. <laughs> 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 it just seems unbelievable. Let the bodies hit the flow. Right? <laughs> just like uh, that song said. Uh, drowning Called pool. bodies by drowning yeah. pool. <laughs> <laughs> drowning pool right yeah back in the day that was the they played everywhere movies yeah. wrestling you name it that shit was fire man <laughs> still <Literally>. is <laughs> have you guys have you guys seen the tiktok with the with the muppets singing that song no and it's like um one something's wrong with me two, two. something's wrong with me three two. something's wrong with me four i can only count to four i can only count to oh four like, so fucking good. <laughs> ah. All right. that sounds like the jam so sonia became aware of the increasing lack of facilities stored of bodies so they stuck them in their clear boxes mm -hmm. um Quote, we probably are the only ones who are manufacturing them, said Yuki Utsui, a Tokyo office manager at Sanyo. 
manufacturing them like like there's anything different from yours from your refrigerators to your to your fucking um uh what do you call those um like casket uh shit what do they call those in the morgue like the the, the pull out <laughs> you know things like literally they just um the way you know the difference is one of them has a sticker that says refrigerator and one of them has a sticker that says dead bodies inside <laughs> they have like glass caskets that like they 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 do something where they preserve the body so it doesn't smell right i i, I remember seeing this like there are people who lost their wives or their husbands and they don't want them to be buried and they would put them in like a glass casket or something like a taxidermy <laughs> yeah essentially oh it's a tax God. it's essentially a taxidermy right but they I'm put them in a glass like, box i'm picturing like the mummies that they have in in museums behind yeah a glass box. <laughs> it's, it's basically that but with a glass box and they're wearing like a suit or a dress depending on if it's a man or a woman and they're in their house just like, get a wax sculpture for god's or, sake or oh pre-made God. or pre-made them or something i don't know <laughs> But they have them in their house. So and it's some... the box. Go oh ahead. man, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go I'm ahead. just saying. Like, it, there's some cases where this woman, I think her mom died, and she did the same thing. The police came and told her, "Look, we know you you miss your mom and stuff like that." And this was like a like a woman in her 50s or 60s. Like her mom was like in her 70s or 80s. But they, he told her, "Look." We know you love your mom and stuff, but you have to get permission. We'll we'll help you out. You this is technically illegal, so you need to get like, this straight out. Like mistri- it's like mistreatment of a cadaver kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> March for cadaver rights. <laughs> All right. So the box, similar to our small refrigerator, is attached. Small ref- what? <laughs> Do they like take a chainsaw to the body first? <laughs> like I'm thinking, I'm picturing like a mini fridge, and you've got like hands in the spot where the beers go. Fuck. <laughs> 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 so the box, similar to a small refrigerator, is attached to a small device that operates like an air conditioner and can maintain the box at between zero to, to three degrees Celsius, which is the ideal temperature in which to keep a corpse. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. Utsui said I, that, I needed to know that. <laughs> Utsui said that their ability to offer storage in a smaller size <sighs> for the midgets that's run with half the voltage of industry grade refrigerators at a cheaper price was a game changer. <laughs> the smaller version can be purchased from 770,000 yen. Oh, we lost JT. Or not JT. <laughs> Oh, that, that's you made oh, it. that is an unforgivable slip up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going to go. Sanyo's products were displayed at Endex Japan 2023, an annual funeral and cemetery exhibition. Fucking imagine having an expo for funerals. Oh my God. I want to see the uh, the uh, the furnace exhibitions <laughs> for the, the for the I'm, I'm gonna creations. keep this joke in the private chat uh, <laughs> because I don't want to cancel. This better be good. I can <laughs> click on this thing. <laughs> oh, that's not right. Nice. That's that's not right. Given the current situation, I just don't think I've ever. Oh, <laughs> no. to say that. no, that, that's not right. I'm gonna go cook something. I'll be like that. <laughs> All right. So um, it was very popular at this year's exhibition. It's what he said, adding that their product is purchased most often by funeral homes looking for an easier and cheaper way to increase facilities for storing dead bodies. The popularity of the product was a testament. Fuck, I just, I, it, this is such a fucking doomer situation. Imagine running a company and you're like, you're counting your dollar bills and you're like, fuck, we're raking in the dough. Yeah, it means your country is dying. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus, imagine having a company that, that does well when the rest of the world is, is going to hell in a handbasket. Arms dealers know what I'm talking about. (laughs) 
so the popularity of the product was a testament to how new technology like this uh, is needed in the industry going forward. I don't know. I think we've probably gotten enough out of this article, uh, but holy shit. I just thought that was nuts. Anyway, moving on from here, I would like to share with you one of the funniest things I saw in the last two weeks. Chinese high school reenacts former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's assassination. Like, it's not just a group of kids on YouTube. It's like, this was this. The, imagine fucking hating somebody this much. Yeah. That, that you organized the school to stage a reenactment, which, by the way, they fuck up. He was shot from behind, you idiots. A video service online showing a reenactment of the assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe by a Chinese high school during a school festival. Okay, so so I guess it's maybe it's uh um you know like when when they do the school festivals and you get to pick what you're gonna do as your like talent or whatever, if it's gonna be a, a cafe or whatever. <laughs> the video shows all the students gathered on the school's track and field with the reenactment of the attack carried out by a group of students after Shinzo Abe is shot. Several students run across the track with a banner mentioning two gunshots left the dead bodies and contaminated water leaves a legacy of suffering. The short reenactment was met with applause from the venue, which was discovered to be during uh, which was discovered to be during a sports festival at a high school located in Shangdong province. Great job, Shangdong province. Um, the high school is said to, uh, to provide education based on facts and science. So the Japanese internet denizens were left baffled, given that former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe had nothing to do with Japan's release of treated water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. <laughs> anyway. Are they putting their hands like that? <laughs> I knew it was a dude's kid. <laughs> Are they put, uh, were those mimicking cameras? Is that What's what up? they were doing? They're, they had their they're... hands up like in a square. Were that was that them mimicking cameras? Probably. Oh, you t oh, these guys? Yeah, yeah, probably. Didn't even get the part where he gets shot first and he looks behind him. Like, how fucking awful are you at this? Look right at the. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a cardboard cutout, of Shinzo Abe's face on him. Yeah, you didn't know that right away. <laughs> I'm like, that's a really old looking kid. And I'm like, oh wait. <laughs> it's so blatantly obvious. Like, what the turn sideways? <laughs> all right. Wow. All right. All right. All right. What do we got here? Um. <laughs> Anaris has had generally bad takes overall. Sucks that Zeno defended her. Well, what did you expect? Um, Viz brought OG Sashomaru VA back when he was recast, but couldn't do the same for Kenpachi, which frustrated me. Yeah, we're all frustrated. RIP Japan. <laughs> RIP Hentai Land. No more death by a thousand nuts. <laughs> Death by a thousand nuts merch win. <laughs> yeah, Bleach originally went non union in episode 244. Really? So it was union before. Okay, so uh -huh. interesting. You got a, you got a very uh, encyclopedic knowledge of this stuff. I, you are a true fan. Immigration will be the downfall of Japan. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's being it. orchestrated into a situation where. There is no recovery. There, it just doesn't exist, right? Um, it's partially because of you know um, central banking and you know inflation that is outright out of control, um, world geopolitics that are 
impossible to overcome while dealing with the problems they have at home and everything. It's just, it's, it's, it's a shit situation. I'm not dead. <laughs> Referring to Monty Python. It's all fun and games when the freezer company accidentally sends grandma to the butcher and the pig to the funeral. Oh, fuck. AC is based. Thank you. I'm glad somebody noticed. <laughs> um, putting beers next to grandpa to cool. Just like he would have wanted. <laughs> Igloo cooler is going to make casket sized coolers. Yes, for your beers and for grandpa. <laughs> imagine having an expo for anime. Yes, I, I imagine that in person many times. Uh, it's all fun and games until Igloo has a cut of the funerary industry. Yeah, no, seriously. It's a job that someone has to do, might as well be them. A high school play. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, I'm just going to the Bleach Wiki. Oh, wow. Uh, less impressive than I too can Google. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Pickups. Let's do some pickups. So I guess I'll go first. Um, oh, well, shit. First of all, uh, earbuds. Hey. Ah. I picked up three 12 packs of G Fuel on Prime Day <laughs> because oh, they were 70% off. For the last <laughs> Don't hurt your shoulder. Oh, yeah, it's uh, 36 cans worth in here. <sighs> that was uh, a very awkward position to have to lift that from. Um, <laughs> and then in addition... Um, I recently picked up a VHS tape piece of history here um, from back in the days of collecting anime before there were any legitimate releases and you had to go to hot ramen video <laughs> to get four fucking episodes <laughs> of uh, Utena. Damn. And Lord knows what's even on here. No, it says on like that's, so when you hear the stories of a copy of a copy of a copy, uh, this is one of the one of the ways that that occurred. All right, now that you guys are back, let's go into pickups. Danny picked up from Reese stuff, Blue Exorcist. Is that the complete? I'm assuming. Wow! Thanks for being here, Reese. Um, also, My Hero Academia one and two. And these magazines. Uh, Mega Mug picked up Princess Tutu, Venus Wars, and Those Who Hunt Elves. Have you guys seen Those Who Hunt Elves? Fuck, I love being on this show. I, I, I haven't <laughs> seen it, no. I haven't seen it. Sorry, I'm trying to like, take a picture real quick. <laughs> All right, so um, we, we, we got to do this as a watch club. This show is so fucking funny. Bobby Hill had, oh, uh, nice foot. I'm glad that's in the shot. <laughs> random 11 approves. Yeah, um, random 11 approves. Picked up Noir. Uh, uh, I, think I do not approve. I think that's my first girlfriend as a gal. Megazone 2-3. Here, comes, uh, here is Greenwood. Um, Phoenix. Appleseed. Um, Mao Chan. Angel Cop. A Silent Voice and Perfect Blue. Look at that. I know him. As well as Millennium Actress, Ocean Waves, um, Battle Angel, Tropic of the Sea. Never heard of that. Uh, Children of the Sea. I'm guessing. Oh, Satoshi Kone. Is this, is this a, a manga? Look at all the people with their candles for uh, pour one out for right stuff here. <laughs> My last right stuff order. Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. Uh, and the second season, um, Maddox 01, Sergeant Frog, Gunbuster, Cromarty High School, Project Aiko, and Ursae Atsuro as well. Nice. Uh, Mirage picked up uh, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. What is this? Is this just uh, the like a side story game? 
Um, I want to say it is. It's what is it again? Say the name of it. It's Final Fantasy. It's a uh, Crisis Core Final Fantasy. Yeah, Crisis Seven Core Reunion. was a spinoff of like. The Crisis Final Core Fantasy. was the was an anime that came out around the same time as uh, Advent Children. It was like a special feature. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know there was a game. It was like for the PSP, but they made a remake of it because the you know the remake of Final Fantasy mm-hmm. Seven is out. <sighs> Um, Mirage also picked up Trials of Mana, Destiny Connect, Tick Tock. Is that Tick Tac? Tick Tock Travelers. Okay. Very anime. Thanks. Um, Reese with his anime pickups picked up some earbuds. Yeah, just like. Oh, the and then they, <laughs> these, this is what you meant when they weren't working? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they're just, uh, it's, it, yeah, I was talk, talking to you with the, yeah. So uh, th- these works for your, whatever. Forget it. Okay, but, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I also got the uh, fuck blind people and uh, nice call, call <laughs> the night, call the night complete collection for fifteen dollars at Best Buy. That was awesome. And then uh, yeah, lucky bastard. Good, goodbye, Donglaze and uh, uh, Jose the Tiger and the Fish and Love Genevio and other delusions ultimate collection. Huh. <laughs> That's me saying fuck blind. <laughs> Uh, let me play that for you guys (laughs) that was good (laughs) all right tab with audio here it comes you know what fuck blind people you can't have cartoon (laughs) And then Green Line rushing in with uh, Misty. Yeah, rushing and... in with a shitty ass photo of yeah Misty and uh, nice. Goldeen. This, little, this like, feels miniature. reminiscent of uh, of um, any metal Viking when I extended it with <laughs> AI. <laughs> and then I also have another pickup, but it's in. You'll have to view the Velvet Room, which Random Eleven Ooh, join the already did. Discord. Yeah, join the Discord to be yeah. as we recently, as Random Eleven in the Velvet Room. We recently did a colonoscopy of our Discord, and it is now <laughs> clean as a whistle and ready for you to join. <laughs> and ready for you to enter in any hall. <laughs> all right one piece to make history this is literal history happening guys with a Luffy <laughs> balloon at Macy's Day Parade history to make <laughs> inside joke nobody in the comments ask about it okay <laughs> all right it's historic right here um yeah so it's uh <laughs> What's the history that it's making? Um, that it's the like fourth anime character <laughs> to be in the parade. Oh my God, we got Goku, Pikachu, Pikachu. Luffy. Yeah, like what was, what's historic. The other one? Truly, <laughs> what a time to be alive! <laughs> it's the first One Piece character, though. Whoopie <laughs> do! Oh. I want you some head type but balloons. Yes, where's my, where's my um. Bible Black uh, Macy's Day Parade. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I need to get an AI art to draw me a a balloon of the characters from Bible Black. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, all right, so I couldn't think of a better place to put this, so we're just gonna talk about it now. Um, men overrun the Grace Hopper Women in Tech Conference by registering as non-binary. Uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was supposed to be a space for women. Well, here you but, go. But, uh, quite a few men there. Yep. How dare you? Well, I mean, th- you know. Hey, they're nine binary. You cannot judge them. Yeah, my favorite part about this is that <laughs> they are more pissed off that men got into this conference than into their bathrooms. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you let this thing go. Rampant. I just want to point out the fact that the YMCA, the Young Men's Christian Association, admits women. Yeah. Even though the YWCA existed, the women had to come into the YMCA. Because they actually did outdoors. Even stuff. though the Girl Scouts existed. They had to become inclusive enough to let girls into the Boy Scouts. 
cry harder, everybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is the future you wanted. <laughs> All right. Embrace it. So, uh, Noir Caesar launches a Kickstarter campaign for graphic novel based on Osama Tezuka's Alabaster manga. Whoa. Although, fuck. Oh, come on. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> what? I, uh, I pasted the title instead of the link. Good job. You're a jackass. When I put the... Uh... God damn it. <laughs> there goes my joke. I, I knew I saw it said untitled <laughs> at the top, and I was like, right, this isn't going to work. <laughs> All right. Pretend I did it right. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. You suck. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Failure. Can somebody else add that to the stream? <laughs> All right. Alabaster, the graphic true. novel, canceled. <laughs> Not sure why, <laughs> but... Uh, you rolled a one. That's a critical fail. Yeah. I, I don't critical, know. Like, I guess a critical fail would be like it owes money. Yeah, I don't so, know. Maybe they money. maybe they started it and they thought, oh shit, we're not gonna make it to thirty thousand. We maybe maybe we should start it over at only asking for thirty bucks and see how much we can get. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'll have to remember to put that back in the doc. That sucks. All right. Anyway, moving on from here. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, I don't fuck this up. I have I have very Sorry, little faith. Not that TikTok. I meant TikTok. He's referring to the pickup. Oh. Destiny, Destiny Connect, uh, TikTok travelers. All right. So a new Dragon Ball anime series has been announced. It turns Goku and his friends into babies. Oh shit. <laughs> Somebody's going to need to change a lot of diapers. Yeah. That kind of sounds familiar for some reason. It does. Yeah. I've <laughs> yeah. heard this before. Huh. Wait a second. So Toei Animation has announced a new Dragon Ball anime titled Dragon Ball Daima at its New York Comic Con panel. And it is set to <laughs> premiere in fall of 2024. <laughs> Much is still a mystery about the new Dragon Ball show, but it will feature entirely new episodes for the Dragon Ball storyline, and series creator Akira Toriyama is said to be deeply involved beyond his... Oh, okay. So I, I guess it can't be like GT then, which he wasn't involved in, right? It couldn't be like that. Well, didn't they advertise GT as him having involvement when it first came out? No. I thought they did. I don't think so. I was just like Dragon Ball Diamond. No, Dragon Ball Daipa. <laughs> uh, so hold on. Toriyama <laughs> shared a message informing what Dragon Ball Daima will be about. Due to a conspiracy, Goku and his friends are turned small. In order to fix things, they'll head off to a new world. It's a grand adventure <laughs> with intense action in an unknown and mysterious world. At least it's not a grand tour am i right <laughs> like right <laughs> it's definitely not gonna be gt rebooted right <laughs> now if if it couldn't possibly get any worse <sighs> comic book said according to reports dragon ball magic hold up dragon ball daima anime announced okay according to reports dragon ball magic will not be a sequel to Dragon Ball Super or continue it in any way. Oh, thank God. It's not canon, right? Wait. Rather, this new series will focus on the gap of time between End of Z and Dragon Ball Super. So literally, Dragon Ball Super, which takes place before, what is it, like the last Three episodes of Dragon Ball Z. I think it's like the we last are now two. putting Dragon Ball yeah. Daima before that. <laughs> I saw this. I thought this was fucking hilarious. Hold on, before you. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So Dragon Ball Magic is supposed to take place before the end of Z. They're running out of timeline. One second past the end of Z. Any content Dragon any Dragon Ball content yeah. released since 2013. Let me in. Yeah. <laughs> any Dragon Ball content released since 2013. Let me in. <laughs> All right. I would like to correct you on something here. So according to Google. This may be uh, a bad correction, I suppose, but this is according to Google. Akira Toriyama was not involved in the story of Dragon Ball GT, right? Yeah, okay, we all need that thing. However, he did oversee the production of the show, just as he did with Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. He was the one who came up with the name. Uh, and he came up with something. Yeah, here. clearly, because he wants to do a fucking grand adventure now. Yeah, like clearly he came up with the name. He's like, ah, now this time we're going to do it right. <laughs> now, so, I do want to point out, though. Uh, just let me finish my point. He was involved with GT. Yes, especially yeah. in the later portion of it. <laughs> no, in the beginning portion of it. What do you mean the later portion? In, he, I'm not having this con. This con <laughs> okay. Yeah, anyway, my point is he was involved with it, and them saying that he's involved with this one doesn't mean shit. I would love it if you loved me a little bit less, Randall. <laughs> 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 so I, I meant to come back to this one actually before the English language trailer for Dragon Ball Daima credits Toriyama with original work story and character designs so let me show you the uh, we could just play the trailer like I love this so it does like this countdown which it starts at five start at fucking seven just do seven <laughs> you know and then um they show you like, oh yeah, so the manga started 1984, 85, 86 is when the, the anime for the first Dragon Ball comes out. Uh, 89 is when Dragon Ball Z starts to air in Japan, right? Oh, this cool band just keeps getting better and better. Oh yeah, uh, okay, GT comes out in 96. Yeah, it was Super Saiyan 4, right on. It just keeps getting better. Uh, uh, a little dive here, but we got, we got Dragon Ball Super taken in, right? Right on, totally. Everybody get hyped, right? That's what this is about. Get everybody fucking hyped for this. Totally. Yeah, Broly. Totally. The, the, yeah. We are so hyped. Look at we're just, we're we just moving up yeah, the timeline. Super, yeah. I didn't even watch this, but yeah, everybody's supposed to be getting <laughs> super fucking hyped for this. Like, yeah, oh my yeah, god, yeah, this is go, so go, aggressive. Go, 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 what's go, next? What's next? Me? What's next? What's next? What's so next? Fucking hyped. Super oh super super god, super super yes, super next year. Super yes, super yes, 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 Come on! I'm so close. Oh, if I can see the uh, Japanese uh, trailer too. The whole point of the show is the English one. You are weak. You're a weak little man. Okay, I don't know who this is, but way I sure cool. <laughs> yes, let's go. Come on, go, go, go. Come I on. couldn't keep it going, <laughs> but, but but you're supposed to be like super hyped for this. I might. And then and then how do we pull the trigger? Come on, Here's go. the punchline, everybody. <laughs> is this supposed to be Bibbity? <laughs> No. Bibby was in there, yeah. Had something. Okay, the Dragon Balls. What are they? Oh, I'm no, not that, that, on this geez. CG Shenron. Gross. Oh, that person That's... was not supposed to be Bibby. Or a descendant or a clone of Bibby. Oh, know. maybe it might be someone related. But... Come on. Yes. Come on. Oh, what? I'm so hyped. What's, What's happening? Dragon They're getting doing... pulled into another dimension or something. I can't. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. What happened to <laughs> yeah. face? Oh, oh, never. Come on. It's probably huh? just a distortion. We're good. Come on. Yeah. Show, show us what's happening. Come on. Oh, oh no. What the fuck? Oh, no. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> Baby is no, no, no. We need to go back. <laughs> back to 1989. Marty, get us the DeLorean. It's right. your Nobody kids, Marty. Baby it's your kids. Nobody even liked Baby Looney Tunes. Why are they doing it with Dragon Ball? <laughs> Yeah, we should drop that the PowerPoint. So, uh, big oof. <laughs> so previously, you saw that there was some Japanese text that came up. Yeah, there's nothing to hear in this, by the way. It's just music. If you were wondering. Anyway, so um, you saw that there was Japanese text, right? So uh -huh. there's an English version of this trailer. 
that has that text in, in English. And I'm going to read you what a little discrepancy here. Shockingly. The English language trailer for the Dragon Ball Daima credits Toriyama with, quote, original work, story, and character design. Leaving the phrasing a little vague as to whether it's saying Toriyama is responsible for Dragon Ball's mm -hmm. original overall story and character designs mm -hmm. or those of Dragon Ball Daima. <laughs> mm -hmm. The phrasing of the Japanese trailer's text is clearer, though, with original work, <laughs> i.e. the Dragon Ball manga, story and character designs, all separate entities, implying that Toriyama himself is the one crafting Daima story and character designs. I'm not convinced. <laughs> just like how he was involved, right? <laughs> like, just like they always do that. Like, yeah. oh, the original creator's involved. He's involved in depositing the checks they're writing him. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he, he might have a, that sounds good, involvement, you know? <laughs> Give me your yeah, idea. That right. sounds good. You're like that Don't sounds make good. It. Like make me millions. This is how he. This is how he does it. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Hand out. Pull <laughs> yeah. off the check. Slap it down in his hand. Right. Yeah. That sounds good. Mm. Cha ching. I love that sound. You <laughs> know. All right. Thanks, so anyway. So I do want to point out that everybody of the main, you know, cast is getting turned yeah. into kids, including Mr. Satan including the ox king and master mm -hmm. roshi now look i could i could totally i have master high roshi. hopes for one aspect of this if it does in fact take place before super i want master roshi's lecherousness to be off the fucking charts because now he is a kid <laughs> but then he's gonna be a kid child body, young kid hormones and he, and he has not yet had his fucking retcon redemption arc where he's not a pervert anymore so you gotta make this work for me toriyama now this is something i don't quite understand trunks and goten are now in onesies presumably diapers how can we not get away from this on this podcast by the way <laughs> And yet, Marin seemingly maybe is aged down only one day, <laughs> one year maybe. Like, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's weird how clearly there was works. a bottom limit on the wish. You know, it could only go back so far. You can't go on the pages. I gotta way. tell you, <laughs> I am not looking forward to hearing Colleen Clinkenbeard voice Goku in this fucking show. It had better be Shemmel. Just leave the adult <laughs> cast, please. Like, did man. they show Baby it, Piccolo? Yes. If it works for Japan, it works for America. <laughs> okay, like freaking... Like, Dude. Stab it, stab it his, super deep voice. No, no. Out. In the original Dragon Ball, Kid Piccolo's voice is so fucking funny. Like, that voice is hilarious. I hope they bring him back. <laughs> um, yeah, Stephanie did only or bust on this, though. I'm not going to watch it. Um, now, I want to come back to this. So this was, again, Dragon Ball Daima anime announced. But comic book wrote Dragon Ball Magic. Now, before this convention, uh, before last podcast, we chose not to cover it because it, it was a rumor or a leak. Dragon Ball Magic got leaked. Now, just full disclosure... I don't think this image was accompanying the leak. I, I'm pretty sure this was a fan-drawn image. The belief back then, they, the understanding was that Goku and Kaioshin, the, the Supreme Kai here, um, got turned back into kids. So uh, you'll notice he's wearing blue, like his GT outfit, right? Um, or end of Z, right? <laughs> uh, one second before end of Z, right? Um, so he... Uh, I'm pretty sure this is just a fan generated image. Um, I don't know about the logo. I just the fucking I, I, I gotta show you. I, I think actually, personally, just gonna say oh, wrong one. Just for posterity's sake, the panel did say that they came up with the Dragon Ball Diamond name like literally days ago. Yeah. So the leak saying it 
was called magic could have been right at the yeah. time and then they and i just want to i just want to point out the fact that the fucking logo looks goddamn awful like it looks like it's just a straight up fucking font haphazardly thrown on top of this thing tangenting and re revealing what's underneath this like brush stroke effect horribly with a fucking thick stroke that is an awful logo like that is that I'm almost more mad about that than Colleen Clinkenbeard, right? <laughs> but they at least tried with this one. I don't even know if this is the real logo or if this was just you know a fan made edit or whatever. Because um, I don't think that Japan uses this Dragon Ball um, that often. I guess they used it here, maybe. But yeah, this just looks more cleaned up and thought out. At least it's not still not great, but it's better. Um, now I. We didn't cover this last podcast, but it's so funny. I, I saw this one. Again, this is before the, the convention when it was just still a, a leak rumor. Dragon Ball Magic is already getting canceled within 24 hours of its announcement. <laughs> right? Like, So um, I read this article and what they mean by canceled is the fans rejected it and it's canceled, not canceled as in like they pulled the project and aren't doing it anymore. Um, but yeah. So any thoughts on this, guys? Uh, it sucks. And I'm I don't not buy hopeful. any Dragon Ball. <laughs> Although so, I didn't like Super, so I fucking hated Super. Look, if you want to reboot GT, fucking go for it. You have to keep Super Saiyan Four. <laughs> These are my terms. Do with them what you will. So, um, let's see. I I need to get better than. Oh yeah. Hard agree. <laughs> we are in solidarity, Kasaibo. Um, I think Toriyama did some character designs for GT, but that's it. Now with Daima, he's actually going to be working on the story. Now with Daima, they're going to tell us he'll be working on the story. <laughs> it's going to be his ghost writer uh, writing it under his name, though, right? <laughs> like he's too yeah. busy with the super. Mom. In Look. in that letter, he he said like, "I'm going to have more." Uh, input on this than I've ever had before on a project. Like more? he didn't say really? I'm doing it. He yeah. just said I'm more gonna have input more input than I've ever had before. It's like <laughs> more than the original Dragon Ball. Well, and Dragon Ball I, think, <laughs> I think he meant like uh, in Dragon Ball Dragon Ball they were have working you, in, in all the time since Dragon Ball's manga ended. Have you been crafting this manga series and you're just gonna slam it down? 800 volumes at once because you actually wrote it and that's how this is going to go because I just don't see it happening. <laughs> yeah. Look, him being involved is not the same as, you know, doing a monthly or weekly magazine or whatever and like piece by piece plotting out the events. It's going to be literally showing up to the writer's room hung over with sunglasses on going like, uh, so uh, what character are we writing about today? Oh, Trunks and Goten? Yeah, let's... Uh, Let's have them get in an Amazon delivery truck that goes interdimensionally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that fucking shit. <laughs> that that might be, but I think what he meant was like he didn't really have much say on the Dragon Balls or Dragon Ball Z anime. Mm -hmm. So this is like he's gonna have true. an influence on the. But, anime. but again, that, that's the thing though is that when he when the anime was being made, he um he worked on it from the perspective of doing the source material, right? <clears throat> So yeah. this is like it's not saying much that he's gonna be involved, like oh big yeah. deal. Fucking he didn't sit down and write the thing. He doesn't even write the Dragon Ball Super Bowl. Oh. Toyotaro basically does all of it. Yeah. All right, so into live action news. CD Project Red partners with anonymous content to develop a Cyberpunk 2077 live action project. Do you think that this will be a Netflix live action? And do you think oh that or I get maybe an HBO so that they can have the weird uh, assortment of genitalia on screen. Probably. It's going to be bad. It doesn't matter who makes it. Uh, do you think they'll even have Keanu Reeves in it? No. I hope not. His character does not look cool. <laughs> also, in live action One Piece news, they fixed the sword. <laughs> they fixed the scene. Grandy, did you write this? They fix the scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I almost passed out. Oh, hypertension in the neck. Not 
<laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, so so I do want to point out Netflix previously got called out by me on the Cowboy Bebop comics having Spike holding a um a 1911 Colt, right? And we got them to change that. So uh people are referring to this as the day 48 patch <laughs> for the Netflix show. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see this before. <laughs> 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 That's fucking amazing. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's fucking wonderful. All right. Another One Piece news. Netflix's One Piece co showrunner reaffirms commitment to respecting the source material. If you're adapting something that you legitimately love, fight for what it needs to be. And Nami needs to be more well endowed mm. every season. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to stick, I'm going to hold them to it, right? And like, hold their feet <laughs> to the fire. They need to get their fucking hands out of the story and stop changing shit. Fight for it. If you really believe that, then tell the your bosses to fuck off when they say we want to make Arlong show up earlier and we Look. think Garp should be the main antagonist of the show. Look. I uh, I am caught up to the Arlong uh, fight, uh, and I hard disagree everything you just said. <laughs> that shit about Luffy being underwater. I I was under the impression that his power stopped working when he got seawater on him. I didn't realize yeah. he could stretch his fucking neck forever. Like, oh, you just can't swim? Well, good thing your fucking power still work. Quick. Stretch your fucking legs all the way to the seafloor and then stick your goddamn head up. Stupid. What was that? No, he kind of know. He can't you... control it. Yeah. He he's not become... he's not stretching his neck. It's the, pe- dead the when you people around him were were Nojiko and uh the windmill guy mm-hmm. were were stretching his neck. So in other news, uh Netflix live action One Piece co-showrunner declares he will make this show until Netflix says no more. Confirmed season two writer's room is up and running. I thought season I... two is already written. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like every t- every time we... So I think I think that the outline, like the general story beats are written, but the like actual dialogue and all that might be what they're talking about. Like, like the story's written, but the script's not written, so to speak. Hmm. Fine tuning. I don't know. I have no idea. Could be could be any number of things. Anyway, um, also Netflix's One Piece showrunner is down to tackle Spy Family. Ooh. I don't think that. that I don't like that. Touched. That should, that should not be touched whatsoever. Why? No, hard no. Uh, Steve Maeda, one of the showrunners behind Netflix's One Piece, wants to make a, wants to take a crack at Spy Family. There is no denying the success of Netflix's One Piece. While some fans were hesitant of the live action project, the team behind One Piece spared no expense with the Straw Hats upon its release. By the way, season two, I heard, is going to have a $25 million budget per episode. Hmm. Like, that's Oda more can than afford Game it. of Thrones. Yeah. Upon its release, Netflix One Piece has, has topped the streaming service across the globe for weeks, and we have the show's, to- uh, um, and we have the show's top-notch team to thank. Um, and as for the showrunner, Steve Maeda, uh, while there's another anime he would like to tackle someday, speaking with comic book, the showrunner behind, dear Lord, verbose, why don't you? Yeah, Spy fucking Family, okay? He wants, to, he's ready to let it go. I love Spy Family so much. It's just wonderful, Maeda said when asked about the anime and its grip on the industry. It's funny you mentioned that one. I've been chasing Spy Family for a while. Yeah. Um, it's just not going to do well because on where did where show, did he say he wants to tackle it? Speaking uh, with comic book, the showrunner behind Netflix's One Piece said he had been chasing after one anime for a bit. Spy Family has sunken his claws into the producer, and Maeda isn't ready to let it go. I love Spy Family so much; it's just so wonderful. It's mm-hmm. funny you mention that when I've been chasing Spy Family for a while. I, I'm I'm almost caught up. That's what I hear. <laughs> like. I'm on. I have four episodes left. I've been chasing it for a while. I'm almost caught up. Right? Let's. <laughs> where does it say that he wants to do a live action? 
Of course, there are no plan. There are no firm plans in place for Spy Family to undertake a live action adaptation, but ne never say never. The anime industry is only growing these days as the medium becomes more popular by the day and gets colonized. Yeah, <laughs> while while the Japanese get uh, shrink in population and get shoved in mini fridges, <laughs> with manga sales skyrocketing stateside, series like One Piece and Spy Family are part of everyday pop culture. And the Macy's Day Parade. <laughs> the former series has only become more accessible thanks to Netflix's One Piece. And Maeda is most definitely interested in showcasing Spy Family the same way. I think there are so many wonderful stories, Maeda told Comic Book when discussing the challenges of adapting anime to live action. It just, it, it has just been, it just has been, I think, difficult getting the crossover. Anime really is such a wonderful source material. Uh, there are so many great things I'm going to do. Fucking, you're reading into this like <laughs> I need an actual quote where he says yes I want to do this show <laughs> anime fans are intrigued to hear spy family would uh, would fare in real life but for the moment the hit anime has more on its plate this month will mark the premiere of the show's new season and that isn't the only thing oh, fucking god damn it Ho waste of time <laughs> also uh, we covered this years ago Live action Nausicaa, the Valley of the Wind fan film has been completed and it's going to release online this month. So do you guys remember us talking about this? Nope. Nope. Vaguely. I mean, it was so long ago. I don't know. I'll have to play back to me. 4K. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'll do 10 they have a budget. <laughs> Um, they didn't use it on the CG, that's for sure. <laughs> October 10th? Oh, no. Yeah, 10. Yeah, I guess that's uh means it's already out. So anyway, um, pretty cool. Um, worth checking out on his YouTube channel. And Digimon shares first look at its new stage play. Shame FDM isn't, FDM isn't here. Digimon has revealed its first look at its stage play in China. Allow me to show you what it looks like. Come on. It's, it's like a damn so preschool a production. Mickey Mouse or Bugs Bunny costume. That's it. Wow. Uh, it's not that different. They're let me uh, crank your volume like crazy. All right, now you're like ten percent louder. <laughs> All right, so anyway, yeah, these are uh, these are how they're doing it in China. Puppets. Yeah. Yeah, they're puppets. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Can you imagine Good them doing God, the voices for each character? Yeah. Well, they're going to be doing them in what Chinese. What the fuck did they do to them? Yeah. <laughs> The cat did not make it, Gatsumon, whatever the fuck her name is. Dear Lord, oh my god. It'd be funny if one of them was <laughs> while they were doing the voice. They couldn't get kids to put on like these little suits. Uh, yeah, well, That's the, even kids were, the, the kids were busy reenacting Shinzo Abe's death. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're they do much more highbrow entertainment, those kids. <laughs> It's the adults that won Digimon. Yeah. I don't know. So For puppets, I think they nailed the look of every <laughs> character. That's a guy in a suit right there. Yeah. All right. Who says this podcast isn't magic? Literally nobody. We all say it's magic. Adult Swim's Jason DeMarco. We won't magic. be making any more FLCL. <laughs> Oh, it looks literally like last podcast. Right. It ended. It ended so fucking weird. It ended so fucking weird, too. I'm like, oh, they, that's mm, OK. They must the have next one's going to be called right? FLDL. Right? <laughs> yeah, so but... I assume that means shoegaze is the last one. And if shoegaze is the last one, fuck that yeah. ending was <laughs> terrible. Yeah, but do you think it's because they lost the rights either due to legal reasons or because uh, no, they, they bought like fully coolly, like straight up like they... yeah, let's read it. Let's find out okay. what it says. They're just not. Okay. Putting any more money I haven't read it. it yet. Jason DeMarco, Senior Vice President in the Anime and Action Series Longform Department at Warner Bros. Animation, 
and Cartoon Network Studios, stated on Twitter on Friday that while Adult Swim considers FLCL grunge and FLCL shoegaze or shoegaze, I still don't know if, if we're pronouncing it right. In fact, shoegaze. Is it shoegaze? Do they say that term in yeah. the show? Yes. Avant grade. That? <laughs> well, that's how the title is pronounced. So like... That's how I did that on purpose. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so Adult Swim considers FLCO Grunge and FLCO Shoegaze rating successes and is very happy with their performance. The company won't be making any more. DeMarco thanked fans who helped uh, make the, the two series uh, a success. FLCO Grunge and FLCO Shoegaze are two new seasons of FLCO Anime. No, what, this is just going to be backstory? Fuck. God damn it. They're, they don't tell you anything. So uh, basically they said, yeah, I thought they were a huge success, but we're just... We're so happy yeah. with all the money we got from it. We just don't even want anymore. <laughs> like, I, I love the cor I love corporate talk when they're full of shit. They're like, "Yeah, we did such a great job. We're not doing it anymore." Bye. I'm convinced. Now I could be wrong because I don't. I wasn't in the room and I don't know how this stuff works. But I'm convinced a higher up said, "We we spent how much money on this, and you only made two of them." Oh you need my to make god! More. You need to make more and. <laughs> Uh, we need to earn our money back for this like it, because if it was a, so successful right i'm not saying do it every year but every th two to three years right you'd think you crank out a new series if it's going to be like that right aruko didn't even show up in shoe gaze <laughs> it was weird yeah huh. you'd think if they're all connected they should all interact with each other like an avengers or like they tried. The they tried to like make the, a connection the, with the last one, but it didn't. It it didn't fucking work. Or like the Spider Man movie, so where confused. all the three Spider Man connected. Hell, even the Blues Clues did that with all the the three. Yeah, that's you know, clearly not what happened in, in this one. <laughs> yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. If if they all have connections with with each other, they need to be together, and they didn't do that. Like even Blues Clues did it with all the three green shirt guys that not named Steve. And one of them's named Steve. So Kasaibo <laughs> says that looks like Avatar: The Last Airbender's font, referring to Daimo or whatever Daima, Nickelodeon, Dragon talking. Ball Daima. And I, I like lost my shit yeah, a second I think, ago because I like I in my head that's what it looked like, but it doesn't look anything like that actually. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> but uh, but dude, I I was feeling that wavelength you're putting down like crazy. It does actually. Not quite. If you look at them side by side, they're not they're not close at all. A similar, a little bit similar, not completely. Like it, it is a free font that I have, the one they use for Dima. Like I definitely I couldn't tell you off the top of my head which one it is, but I know I have that font. I've used it before. Um uh the Dragon Ball manga was heavily influenced by Toriyama's editors. Yes, for the best in pretty it, much every uh instance as well. It, it was because he got angry every time an editor challenged Toriyama for doing stupid or ridiculous things, right? He would get so mad that he would create a villain based off the editor. Like Piccolo was literally because of an editor. Majin Buu, Frieza. I think even Cell was an editor too, right? I'd love to see that editor who thought he was perfection. <laughs> you know? the, fat, the, fat, the fat one, the fat Majin Buu was the editor was fat. That's why he was initially, you know, really fat. That's funny. I really wish so, the, the editors for Bleach would have done the same. For Kido, <laughs> but no. Can you imagine if Naruto they did that? Like Kishimoto, like fuck you, I'll do whatever story I want. Oh, dude, they, they did they do that to Kishimoto, and again, the editor's choices were great. He was gonna name a character Momotaro. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is Momo? Who's gonna be Momotaro? Peach Boy. The they, I think that was gonna be Haku. Oh, that was gonna be like, terrible. Yeah, he had horrible ideas for Naruto, and his editor stepped in and and like also. Yeah, how about you call this guy Zabuza instead? And he's like, oh, okay. Wait, what was Zabuza's but, original name? I don't. I, we covered it on a podcast. I have to. I have to dig that. All right, up. just let link it to me in the future. All um, right. But it, it, it's funny, though, because, you know, originally the, the fourth Hokage, or at least the third or fourth Hokage, right, was going to be a dog. The the leader <laughs> of the vi the ninja villages were going to be dogs or cats, kind of like uh, Dragon Ball with the king of the world. And then editor told Kishimoto, no, let that be Naruto's dad. Please don't don't copy Dragon Ball. <laughs> so um, NHK is going to release a documentary on Attack on Titan. Sorry, on on tack. Fuck me, 
attack. This is what I get. Titan. This is what I get for trying to shift my eyes over from the screen share to the actual screen while reading. NHK to release documentary on Attack on Titans. Aaron professional lifestyle. <laughs> whatever that fucking means <laughs> so think- air will be the first animated character to feature on the long-running docuseries oh okay so hold on so the show is called professional lifestyle and the documentary is on aaron yeah. that's much less funny you know it'd be funny comma would have helped that sentence it, like it would be f- funnier if they actually dubbed this in english so funimation dubbed or Crunchyroll dubbed it and made it more funnier Japan's I know they don't national... like putting uh, commas in titles, but God like it'd be like MXC. It'd be like um, uh, that show on Spike back in the day. Make it Japan's as possible. national public broadcaster NHK announced tonight that the next subject of the long-running documentary series "Professional Shigoto no Ryugi," known in English as "The Professionals," will be Aaron Yeager. The documentary will follow will following fucking amazing work. This is. My frustration with Crunchyroll knows no <laughs> bounds. Just saying. I mean, okay? it's English, right? They they put out a billion articles a day, and the only way they can do that is they don't fucking proofread a goddamn thing. You would think the billions of dollars that they have through Sony that you, they would have a you, hold team on. to do Scroll that. Scroll right? up, uh, AC, a little bit more to the byline. You think Daryl Harding is Japanese? <laughs> no. Could that be his pen name for? Do you for need the... to be Japanese to use proper English grammar? The documentary will following. No, I think I think uh, the guy's Japanese. King's, I agree with King Style name. said that it was English. Oh, the I think I'm telling you, pen names are pen names. You could use an English name. And, and okay, not he's be... definitely white. I've seen him. Anyway, okay. Um, the documentary well, then will be following. Then he's terrible at his job. Then there you go. Following the anime terrible characters... at grammar. Yeah. You're terrible at shutting the hell up. (laughs) You're on a delay, man. I can't help it. The documentary will be following the anime character's daily life as a soldier and his motivations. This will be the first professional Shigoto no Ryugi documentary that follows a fictional anime character, though not the first to follow a fictional character, with the series once doing a piece on Hatsune Miku. (laughs) A day in the life of Hatsune Miku. I just, I want to see that. Like her behind the scenes fighting with with uh, her talent agent and like. <laughs> Smoking three packs a day. Yeah. <laughs> Getting drunk after a show. Other anime um, afflicted people that have been documented include Hayami. I'm sorry. I think you mean affiliated. Afflicted. Anime afflicted, punished Hayao Miyazaki. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're sentenced to watch punished with long life. <laughs> you're punished to watch a thousand episodes of One Piece, including filler. So, Imagine other that. anime affiliated people that have been documented include Hayao Miyazaki and Hideaki Anno. The Aaron Yeager special will air on NHK General in Japan on October 23rd, ahead of the second Attack on Titan final season, the final chapter special on November 4th. Aaron and the rest of the Scout Regiment will be making an appearance on the special. The final, the final. So how are they really, going to portray this? Seriously, animated? it's the final episode. What, what was that? Re- so how are they going to portray this? Will it be fully animated or will it just be like a slideshow? I hope it's going to be animated. I think that it's going to be a guy pretending to be Aaron. And it's just going to be shitty the, all the way through. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be cool they made new animation for this and not just half-ass animation. They'd like actually put effort to, into it. Like I mean, animation. it could just be the voice actor, no? It'd be nice yes. if they didn't waste their time and spent their money not using CGI in uh, the anime. No, but it'd be cool to get the actual people that did the series, right, with, in CGI <laughs> together, get NHK to, to commission that, so they can actually make this documentary a lot better because if it's a guy dressed in a costume as Aaron, that'd look cringe, don't you think? Yes, I do. I expect it to be cringe. <laughs> it'd be it'd be like somebody dressing up like Mickey Mouse. Oh, it's Mickey Mickey Mouse. <laughs> We're here at Disney World. Like it's really bad. Just do a cartoon. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, this is this is what I wanted. A documentary on the professional lifestyle of Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan. Give me that. I want to see business suit Aaron Yeager <laughs> flying with the ODM gear to his office building salary man job. I want that. Give me that documentary. And his office is just like kill all the Titans. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, um, 
like those motivational pictures, you know, like um, they just have like quotes on them. You I know, want to, to you. keep you engaged. You like, like we have one in my office above my desk that says time kills all deals. Right. Um, but his, like, you just get to his desk and it says, uh, the only good Titan is a dead Titan. The only... <laughs> He's smoking a cigar. I, I'd, say, I'd say something, but I don't want to spoil how things go. Profits are up when Titans are down. You know, <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Put that on a shirt. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim takes off anime series streams the trailer. So I was hoping that Sankaku Complex would have an article about this that had like all the images for us to look at. Oh my case. Um yeah, because uh <sighs> dare I say it. Now I, I never read I've seen the movie once. I never it's read the manga that was written by um comic. It's a comic. Rest. Novel, graphic excuse, novel, whatever it's a, it's a the manga in, the manga inspired book. graphic novel, yeah, um, graphic novel by Brian Lee O'Malley. I, I never read any of it, but I know what the art style looks like. And dare I say it, this anime nails it, nails it in a way that I'm like, are we using CG here? Because mm-hmm. Like the camera moves, usually uh, like a hand 2D animated camera move, especially on Nickelodeon shows like um, um, Fairly Odd Parents, looks jank as fuck, right? It just looks fucking awful because they animated on like twos, but like in terms of the actual rotation of the character, but they animate the camera movement on ones and it just looks fucking awful. This looks unbelievable so i wasn't hyped before i so um i'm gonna say based off of the other trailer too and the like uh preview clip that scene right there looks bad okay just straight up this scene yeah the tracking with his head how his head his face doesn't change I don't like it. it. it um, I think, like I think it looks fine because th- they picked like the, the pivot point for his head to remain is perfect though. Like the point is that his head is turning with the camera. Like he's I know, looking I get at her it. as she's riding uh, in circles around him. Well, I understand what's happening. I just don't like the look of it. Oh, um, you better. But um, the other trailer had some lip syncing issues. Um uh, but for the most part, it, it does look good, I, I think. And I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. They did say that they were going to – it's not the same as the book. And, like, if you want to read the book, go read the book. And there, oh, are, there will be changes. For the movie. So, yeah. th- th- like, that was – Brian Lee O'Malley said that on his Twitter. So – or Instagram or whatever the fuck. Of course, so, I, hope, I hope nobody's course he doesn't uh, want it to be like a page by page when nobody's gonna buy the book. Yeah, that's I agree with I you. But that's what they do with the anime. Not everybody people still buy the manga. You're not gonna do word for word or line for line or drawing for drawing of something like that. It's just impossible. That's what they, they do all the time with anime. What are you talking about? You shut the hell up Literally for a second. Like a fucking joke. I hope nobody's getting distracted by these jeans. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, um anyway, so uh yeah, I think it looks awesome. Uh, the previous trailer um, had this effect where they do like the um, oh depth yeah, that of field, was the annoying as well, yeah. and that looked awful. It doesn't look so bad here in motion, um, but when they do it where the character's standing still and like, there's no like parallaxing and camera movement and stuff, like that's that's pretty subtle and it like transitions in a way yeah, where you don't really notice. I didn't even it, notice. Right? Yeah, yeah, like it looks really good, and I just got to say, like I. My hat is off to science. I mean, science is a like they're a pretty fucking good studio to choose to like. I I believe that they're the one able to do this, right? They're really uh, adept at at these um, really out there kind of camera angles and stuff, like cat soup had and all that. Uh, that was a science story, or it wasn't science story, but it was a Masaki Yuasa. That was a Masaki Yuasa, right? Like in science Saru 
it predates Science Saru, but it's basically the same people. B- B- basically, use. Masaki also made Science Saru, like Mamoru Hosoda made Studio Chizu. To, to okay. quote Je- Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad, yeah, science. Go no, science. science, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> science, bitch. Anyway, yeah. I think, um, has everyone on the podcast read the books yet? No, have not picked up a single one and don't have any intention to. Uh, I'll, watch, I'll watch the... Yeah, I'll watch the uh, the show, dude. This I, should I be a this should be a watch party. I'm not even joking. I think we should watch this in the movie. The movie for sure, but I don't like, know about this. Yeah, but well, yeah, I think everybody good. should uh, uh, pay for Netflix for one month in November so you can watch it. How about that? Absolutely, we're doing this guys. as a watch uh, club p- club, though, right? I. I uh, we could, I guess. I guess. We support. I guess since we release. don't, since we can't exactly put affiliate links in the in the description anymore, <laughs> I guess there's no point in uh, in putting uh, links to a show that hasn't been gotten a physical release yet because of this. So, I guess yeah, sure. Let's fucking go. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so um, moving on from here, Crunchyroll subscribers are entitled to a part of a sixteen million dollar settlement. American. Crunchyroll subscriber. Yeah, also a buddy of mine, I talked to him the other day about this, right? And he told me that he, he they contacted him, right, for this. Because he did Crunchyroll, right? He, he has the subscription. Sir. I don't have it. And he told me, yeah, I did. I, I applied for it. And you know how much money he got? 30 bucks. 30 bucks. 30 bucks. You're right. Ding, ding, ding. Mm-hmm. Congratulations, Random Eleven. You got your prize. Your, your private information is out there. Here's 30 bucks, kid. <laughs> they gave him 30. I'm like, dude, really? 30 bucks? Well, at least it's something. I'm like, yeah, well, you can buy a meal for yourself. That's good. There are some things, and I, I don't mean to trivialize this, because losing your information is super traumatic right here but mm. there are there are some things that you can't get back like yeah. when a woman is raped and she was a virgin yeah that it's honey, gone forever money no no amount of throwing 30 bucks at her will ever get her back her virginity and and even more egregious here is losing your information 30 bucks doesn't cover it. Right? I, I, I think it should, it should have been more money. It, it should have been more money. Holy shit. Bucks. I disavow. I disavow <laughs> everything. Oh, I, I agree it, with you, Brad, it, right there. I, I'll be honest, like, what information is it be on your name, your address? Email. I mean, that's pretty much easy to, easy to your find. Your email. All right, anyway. Yeah, your email is the most, Your, your is email, the sure. Possibly again. your passwords. Change that shit. No, they're, Damn, they're can you selling imagine? the data. They're not selling. They're not giving. And, and even if your username like, leaked and people found all of your disgusting fetish stuff, that'd be awful. Oh, no. and, and sometimes <laughs> they use so. And sometimes they use your social. What if security? it's already online though? As well. You know, <laughs> and people. Then you're not entitled to thirty dollars. <laughs> well, unless you're doing cam stuff. Oh, that's another thing. I mean, like, like I can see like your, your credit card information. Yeah, that's gonna affect you. But again, just get a new credit. They're card. not selling that though. <laughs> so it says here, Crunchyroll subscribers will be entitled to a part of a sixty million class action lawsuit settlement after the streaming service was accused of disclosing personal information without user consent. Ah, that's rape. That's rape. <laughs> <laughs> While Crunchyroll has denied allegations, the streaming company has agreed to pay the sixteen million dollars settlement regardless, likely in an effort to avoid Sounds further expenses. Sounds a bit guilty. That would come from fighting the lawsuit filed by Salvador Beltran, Eli Gross, and others in the District Court of the Northern District of Illinois in September of 2022. In addition to the $16 million settlement fund, Crunchyroll said it would engage in good faith efforts to prevent further tracking technologies used to identify users by third parties. Look, I don't feel safe using the Crunchyroll store. Bring right stuff back. I demand it. Let's start a petition, everybody. <laughs> I can actually we, agree. Can we also if, sue Sony in general? I'm sure Sony's doing it too. <laughs> Sony's a limited liability company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, Crunch, I agree. Crunchyroll's a limited liability company, so you I can't sue you. Sony. Anime collector, um, thirty bucks is bullshit for a settlement. Sixty million dollars. Sixteen million dollars. Sixteen million. To be spread and, about through your entire subscriber base. Yeah. So yeah, I that's, think that's I, change, I think you man. need to understand that what's actually happening here. Is that they are saying that 
there are 533,333 users receiving 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah, 30 bucks. Uh, that's totally... not even half their subscriber that, base. That's that's like, uh, you know, it's only in the US. US and, and I got it from the horse's mouth. I, I got it from my friend. I'd say there's more in the US. I th- they were upfront about it. Literally, Crunchyroll is just, um, they're just giving you a month free, basically, right? And Pretty only much. if you even apply yeah, for the 30 maybe, bucks. More than a month. Too much with the premium. Yeah. I, I guarantee you they're only going to spend like six million of the settlement because most people aren't even going to uh, apply for the thing, you know? No, I think I think they'll they'll get a lot of applications. But um, so they're up. First of all, they're upfront about the thirty dollars. It's not like it's hidden. Um, yeah. Secondly, um, when that's like, what was know, it? Part... Hold on. Is it is it thirty dollars like? Direct deposit to your bank account, PayPal, or is it thirty dollars? It's a Chuck E. Cheese in, gift card. It's a I'm thirty dollars sure. credit to the Crunchyroll store. I, I think, I I don't know. I think I thought it was a casting, but it could be a credit as well. I gotta ask my friend about uh, that. I think it would be a deposit or of some kind. Yeah, I thought it was a deposit, but um, whether that be Cash App or whatever. But my my point is, thirty dollars is actually a lot for um, uh class actions like you hear all the time like oh yeah so in canada the last class action that i remember happening was this big class action of uh one of our grocery stores fixing bread prices and they got caught and everyone got five dollars <laughs> that's Jesus. a five dollar loaf of bread yeah that's like okay you've been fixing the bread prices for years and we get five dollars okay thank you like it, you know, it, it's common. The lawyers take all the money and, mm-hmm. you know, the the people get a little bit of money and the company moves on. What's up, Uncono? Well, we have four viewers right now. That's, uh, yeah. Wow. How'd that Would happen? Would you rather have one with the uh, um, certain initials? Uh, yeah. No. I think there's a new policy in place. <laughs> <laughs> no shit stains allowed, right? Oh, <laughs> oh I all right. So, nice <laughs> man jailed for stabbing Combini clerk in attempt at going viral. What did Johnny Somali do now? <laughs> a 32 year old man from, from Hokkaido was sentenced to a year and a half years in prison. A year and a half for stabbing someone. Would they stab him in the hand? It's gonna be like a a, a fucking toothpick or something, or, or a fork, or a fork. Thirty-two year old man from Hokkaido was sentenced to a year and a half in prison for stabbing a Combini clerk. Combini is convenience store employee, right? Um, in a, in Ashikawa, in pardon, in Asahikawa, in Hokkaido, in an attempt at going viral. The trial was held on October fourth for the man accused of causing bodily harm in April. The unemployed man stabbed a female Combini clerk in the back with a kitchen knife. Jesus. While that's live streaming murder, the crime dude. online. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Hey, it's not attempted murder if you're filming it. Ha ha. It's just a prank, bro. If, <laughs> right? he, would, if, if he would have done it below the leg, he it would have been just a, an assault. Like legit. It's still in the back. Like, yeah. dude and the only reason why i know that is for, from on the show da- you know the Chappelle show right if he shoots below the leg it's not attempted murder it's it's a, an assault i don't know if i would take uh the comedy skits on the Chappelle show as legal advice <laughs> <laughs> i don't say yeah. it as gospel i'm just saying I, I mean, that, like you you test that theory on your own terms <laughs> make sure you stream it though because that's well, get out of jail my, my first subject would be Reese. So, <laughs> I'm kidding. They'll basically yeah, yeah. uh you have yeah. to find my legs first. <laughs> well, I'll I'll go looking. Now's a good yeah. time to play your new clip. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> Reese twenty seven fifty three. You're the shot, motherfucker, and nobody likes you. Joy. Yep. There you go. <laughs> well, the Asahikawa District Court pointed out the defendant committed the crime because he was dissatisfied with the lack of improvement in the rankings of his videos, calling it an extremely selfish crime in which the victim, who wasn't at fault, 
suffered due to an irrational, an irrational grudge. In addition to the year and six months in prison, the man will serve four years of probation. The sentence was ra- uh, the sentence was rather lighter than expected, as the court deemed that the crime appears to have been caused by mild intellectual disability. Wow. So they're saying he's dude, retarded. He, he, dude, if he killed her, what difference would it have been? Yeah, retard attempts it? murder uh, on, on YouTube gone sexual, right? Like, <laughs> pretty like that's what I'm saying. They're basically saying in lamest terms, he was a retard or dude, he was an idiot. It doesn't fucking it's... matter. The end result's still the same. Whether you're uh, yeah, I don't, or ag- not. I don't agree with their doing that. I'm just saying that that was their logic, and it's it should have not been that way. Oh, he was too stupid. So, Your Honor, please give him a lighter sentence. That's that's not how it works here in the states. Honestly, how could you possibly think like what? Yes, I went viral. That's life imprisonment. Like, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, that's proof. Right. That's so let's let's power through a couple of these real quick. So, Digimon Adventure Two, the beginning anime film's English trailer, is revealed a November eighth and 9th screening in the U.S. Um, cool. So there you go. Already dubbed. Crunchyroll is going to bring the concierge anime movie to North America in 2024. Imagine Chris Sabat voicing the the hotel clerk chick or whatever that chick was, right? The concierge chick. Nah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, <laughs> Studio Eclipse. Anything. Pre-production has officially begun Berserk the Black Swordsman. The series is very close to our hearts. We aim to create a proper 2D adaptation of the stories that have been neglected of this medium, starting from the beginning. So who's um, this studio Eclipse exactly? Oh, you know what? Actually, I, I think I... How many Berserk oh, I guess I don't have a download do. of it. Yeah. Sorry, Twitter video sucks. This video in general looks like kind of crap. Not going to lie. It's historic. <laughs> History in the making. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so they're going to be, um, they're going to be animating. This fan animation is going to be doing the Black Swordsman arc, um, which for those of you who aren't familiar with Berserk is the arc that the uh, anime and manga starts in. And then it goes back and back in time to the uh, golden age. Um, they said specifically they are not going to be animating the golden age because it's already been done uh, in the 97 anime to a sufficient degree. Uh, here's some uh, character design for him based on the artwork from the original um, first issue of the manga. Uh, it looks pretty good. Only problem is that um, they are tracing uh, this specific scene that they show here. I should have just showed this one. This one right here, first of all, he is a tr- Donald Trump levels of orange. <laughs> yes, he does. China. But this scene, this scene right here is traced from the from um one of the CGI movies or tw- Berserk 2016. I think the um, first one. I looked for it, dude. I spent a good hour looking for this shot. I so I just just so you understand, um, I know for a fact they traced it because I saw a Reddit post where somebody put them side by side. But the Reddit post got deleted, so I, I had to look for it myself. I couldn't find it. Um, I I know that it was frame by frame exactly the same in terms of the motion. Um, I don't know unless it's from the 2016 one. Um, they would have had it. They would have had to add his uh, metallic arm and the spring and all that stuff. Wouldn't have been able to be traced because he's wearing a different outfit than he wears in the movies. So. Anyway, um, look forward to it. Subscribe to Studio Eclipse. I'll link it right now uh, if you guys are interested in uh, checking them out. Um, they do have a Patreon. Uncono says you guys. Oh damn it! I just linked it to my. <laughs> Uncono says you guys saw my feet pick in the pickups. Yes, yes, we did. Oh, uh, that's random... you, that's you, Bobby Hill. Yeah, Random Eleven enjoyed it. The boy I was in right. the kitchen getting food. I did not see it. Or enjoy it. <laughs> All right. So in, uh, in other anime news, Pluto uh, has a trailer and a key visual. This is the one we looked at before with the uh, character designs by Naoki Urasawa um, based the, on the, the manga like, prequel to on, Astro Boy. 
Pluto. Well, no, the the manga Pluto is based it's on by uh, by Masaki. You uh, or uh, now just, Urasawa? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I, I've forgotten. Um, but uh, Pluto, I believe. Now I'm now I'm remembering. So it is a manga based on a on a two part episode of the original Astro Boy, right? So like there's it it expands it's like, on it's a story. Like based on like one chapter of the Pluto of the of the Astro Boy manga or something. Yeah, so it's, it's a, an expanded uh, take on on one of the Astro Boy things we talked about on the show before. Uh, studio apartment, good lighting, angel included. Manga gets TV anime. Uh, so just taking a mental note here for some stealth weed merch. Uh, but, um, it sounds like, oh my goddess again. Wow. Even more of a beta than the, oh my goddess guy. Can't wait. Who matches Fucking... a tie with their pants. Dude, not a straight person. That's <laughs> not a, a, a boy who's dressed by his mommy. That's who. <laughs> All right. The 100 girlfriends who really, 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 really love you. TV anime reveals first heroin visuals. So here's here's the waifus. There's one that's going to be hard to do voiceover for because there's like 100 fucking girlfriends. So what are you going to do? Mark Rudolph's going to voice half of them and Jamie Mikey's going to take the other half. Well, I just met in Japan. Like we mentioned, like really, <laughs> yeah. they were having a hard time. Yeah, thousand year, thousand year blood war uh, is going to need to uh, lend some uh, voice talent, is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they're going to have to use AI. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oitombu Golf Anime releases teaser trailer. So, golf is really getting a resurgence in anime. Like, Beat Shot and Dando were the only ones I knew of like 10 years ago. And now we've got uh, Birdie Wing and like all those other ones that, that have been made since. Uh, I only heard one name, so I, I can only think that there's, there's probably just Birdie Wing. Tales of Wedding Rings TV anime unsheathes Grand Art character visual and trailer. So here's a waifu. Mm. So there's like, you know, um, oh, that? what do you call it? Uh, boob that? armors. Uh, I'm in. I'm into the 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 armor that's like uh, not even a loincloth, just like a strip of toilet paper. Like they toilet papered her before she went into battle. <laughs> All right, cherry magic. Thirty years of virginity can make you a wizard. Anime hits Japanese TV. So uh, when I first read this, I had a funny thought about uh, a couple years ago. You guys remember the. Uh, the news, you know, the news goes on those scare campaigns like you should be afraid. Oh, terrified. The incels, incels are, the, are they're going to kill us all because they didn't have sex. It's like, no, what they're really afraid of is they can't wizards. have this many wizards. <laughs> oh, man, I, I left off yeah, my but, best joke when I read this. When I read this last night, we're like 30 years of virginity can make you a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> like, just like... Yeah, but the thing is, these are, this is, if I remember correctly, this is supposed to be like a yaoi or like a, like a Fujoshi bait. So but... when, when he sticks it in his ass, uh, the vegan police show up, right? The wizard police, I mean, and they stop him. <laughs> they cut his wand off. <laughs> Cast spells through the dick. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Metallic Rouge anime third trailer serves up food, friendship, and fighting. Oh, triple F. Early next year, anime studio Bones will be celebrating its 25th anniversary with Metallic Rouge, an original cyberpunk uh, action anime. So we, we've sort of talked about it a little bit. Um, kind of gives me uh, um, Tiger and Bunny vibes a little bit in terms of the design style. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, this is the not what I was sounds. expecting from the other artwork we've seen of it so far. Well, there was a Kickstarter. This is reminding me, like, just the visual alone, reminding me of that of a Kickstarter about a under girl. the dog. Under the dog. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It was like, I heard dog. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Under the dog. Yeah. Is my mic cutting out? No, yeah, you're, you're fine. It's just this is okay. It's just it's making me so fucking paranoid. The strongest tanks, labyrinth raids. A tank with a rare 9999 resistance skill got kicked from the hero's party. Manga is going to get an anime. <coughs> so uh, 
What is a tank? Holy hell, look at that subtitle. Look at those motherfucking subtitles. Look at all that freaking subtitle is for that. <laughs> In gaming and stuff, what is the tank? Like Guy who tank. takes damage and shields tank. the party. Yeah. As you can see in the poster. Yeah, that, I, that's what I, that's what I thought. I just I wasn't like, quite sure. Shield, shield hero is a tank. Mm. Uh, Mushoku no AU, Betsuni skill Nanka Ira Nakatan Daga fantasy light novel to get TV anime, uh, or the English title, which is on the Japanese novels, the hero who has no class. No need any skills. It's okay. <laughs> Why is it? So There's your English. <laughs> Why is it so long? No need any skills. It okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep, you're right. It's English. I hope they leave it like that. I hope they take out the apostrophe s from "it's okay" and actually make it even funnier. It okay. No need for skill. <laughs> All right. It okay. <laughs> Chain Soldier TV anime unveils new key visual. So we get to see the big mommies uh, mm. in this one. That's a big bitch. Mm. <laughs> uh, the trailer is uh, very suggestive. Um, still mad that they took out the word slave from the title. Diminishes the hard on. <laughs> I, I almost thought you were going to say slut. But... Speaking of diminishing the hard on, how I attended an all guys mixture gets TV anime attention. <laughs> well, it's like, uh, as if you know, if you go, you'll know you'll be a wizard by the time you come out. Right. <laughs> and salad bowl of eccentrics anime hits Japanese TV. <sighs> Season two is going to be the stew of eccentrics. The, stew, the what? The stew of the stew of eccentrics. Yeah, they're gonna. Yeah. What did what did you salad. call it? You're saying it sounds communist. Well, like that's what they oh oh like our our country like all the national we're, we're a solid bowl, and then we're we're a stew. We're all starting to blend together. Next, oh. we're just gonna be all like you know, just all coming together, losing the individuality. Like the salad okay. bowl, all the ingredients are very distinct and individual. Do you think, the stew do you think they toss their party. salad in this show? Oh, I fucking said that, AC. <laughs> Shit. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I thought when, when Reese, when, when we were looking at this before and Reese said it sounds like communist propaganda, I'm like, they should call it the, the goulash of the gulags. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so anyway, there's our anime news. Let's get into manga. So it's Yoshihiro good, Togashi dude. teases return of Hunter Hunter manga. Oh, interesting. All for the thousandth time. Great. Yeah. So, uh, so he, fucking posted, hard right now. he posted this picture on Twitter and it says start over. Oh, Jesus. I, I don't. Did it not line up? Is Is that the problem? I don't think it's a problem. He just posts like weird corner pictures. Start over. Okay. Like go, go look at his Twitter feed. It's just like all, all of the tweets. He's just showing something. Like he's no, no offense yeah. to Tagashi, but he just makes look. I understand he he had health problems and and injuries like with his back and stuff like that. But yeah. I just think he over exaggerates his injuries because of of anxiety and, and afraid of dying on know. the table. Dude, I, he I has say... the money to hire a bunch of assistants. Dude, you know what I mean? Like you can get a whole a staff. A mega staff. You are he married to the about. woman. You could. He has, he's is... married to the woman who's, who did Sailor Moon. He can do this shit. He did Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter Hunter. Yeah. He can so do the, this. He doesn't want to. The point is, he all he wrote was start over. And uh, Anime News Network's like, oh, shit. The return of Hunter Hunter. Woo. Um, Sankaku Complex wasn't so uh, sold on that idea. They said... Hunter Hunter Mangaka makes waves in otaku community in a single tweet. In another outstanding move, Hunter Hunter Mangaka uh, Yoshihiro Togashi has made yet another outstanding move that got him trending on Twitter by tweeting a photo implying that he's once again found enough bodily strength to continue working on manga. At the end of last year, he uh, he came back up from his hiatus or whatever and then went back on hiatus immediately. 
enough enough to do, enough for one volume worth of yeah. material. So I don't know. I just I don't know that. It, I mean, it, it would make sense if it's Hunter Hunter because he hasn't finished that. But I don't know. It, I think it, what he's, I think what he says starting over, starting a new chapter. It'd be like, funny if, if if this is like essentially rebooting Yu Yu Hakusho, but that's not going to happen though. What a fucking username this guy has. Blue Exorcist manga is taking a one month break after author gets COVID nineteen. Take it away, Renus. Hasn't this author oh, yeah. been on hiatus uh, yeah. multiple she, times? They were working on another. He's pulling a uh, Tagashi. Were... He's pulling a Tagashi. No, no, not nearly as she, right? Uh, she started working on a novel. Yeah. Adaptation. On a manga adaptation of a novel, right? Yeah, on, on a novel, a manga adaptation of a novel. Mongolization. Mongolization, yeah. Yep. And then um, now she's got COVID. Look what happens now that the Great Wall has fallen. <laughs> the Mongolization. Okay, all right. <laughs> that wasn't that good of a joke. I'm sorry. All right. So I don't know why we brought that up. Cool. Yu uh, Chiba <laughs> apologizes to Kindergarten Wars manga's translator for character's very long dialogue. <laughs> I just want to scroll down and find out what... Welcome to Kindergarten Noir. An exclusive school catering to children of the global elite. Rita, one of the teachers, has been on the hunt for a boyfriend, but has had absolutely zero luck so far. One day, an assassin comes after one of the children... And he's totally dreamy. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. No. Comes after one of the children. <laughs> okay. See, <laughs> I thought this was going, an assassin comes after one of the children, dot, 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 did something? Like what? <laughs> I thought you were talking about the child being dreamy, not the assassin. <laughs> oh, yeah. This this could turn out to be one of those mangas. So dive into this action-packed rom-com as it unfolds inside the world's safest kindergarten. So... The uh, as you can see, there's wall. I would not. This is every page is a too long. Didn't read. Like I would not fucking read this. <laughs> I yeah, wait this for is, the anime <laughs> for, for 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 a graphic novel slash comic book. That's too much dialogue on one page. Now he wouldn't have to uh, apologize to the translator if he went this route. Manga Plus Service publishes Daisuke Miyata's Rugby Rumble manga using AI company as the letterer. Now, when I first saw it, I'm like, damn, it actually looks pretty good. And then I was like, oh, shit, that looks way better, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not good enough. <laughs> so. Um, Wait, which one's the AI one? I think this is the AI, the AI one. Okay. Hmm. Actually, I don't know. Let's read it. Uh, okay, so the, the manga credits um, company Orange Inc. along with Media Do Co. Ltd. for lettering and editing. The Japan External Trade Organization website describes Orange Inc. as follows. Orange Inc. has achieved a 90% cut in the process and cost of manga localization through AI. <laughs> Get fucked, localizers. <laughs> this system This system makes it possible to localize dozens of times more than before. Okay. Uh, we are creating an epic making localization, globalization of Japanese manga. We are taking the colonization back. <laughs> the company uh, was founded in April 2021 and announced in July it had raised 1.8 million U.S. dollars. The company is also involved in the social media localization of the Neko OG, the guy who, that got reincarnated as a cat manga. Oh, good for them. So May Amaki of Mugen Creations LLC is translating the Rugby Rumble manga. After the manga debuted in English and there was a backlash on social media about the quality of the lettering, Manga Plus released a new version of the first chapter on Saturday with the typesetting changed. And Amaki is now also credited as letterer and editor alongside Orange Inc. and Media Do. You were previously. Oh, okay. I see. Hold on. Okay, yeah. So now, now they previously were just uh, put as the translator. Now they're the translator and letterer. Huh. It definitely looks better. I mean, I it, it's easier to read parts of this one, but I think the image quality is just better. Um, 
anyway, uh, the manga debuted, blah, blah, blah. Regarding the use of AI art in Japan, TBS News Dig reported in May that around 94% of Japanese creators were concerned that AI would have harmful effects, such as rights infringement. According to an arts worker, Japan survey uh, of around 25,000 creators, uh, Japanese content websites, DL site, Pixiv, blah, blah, band AI. All right, I guess there's nothing more to learn about this. Cool, we're going to move on. Let's get into games news. So I think it was Ooh. podcast 180. Game on. Uh, we covered this topic. Los Angeles police officers were fired for playing Pokemon Go during robbery in progress. Uh, the dash cam footage has been revealed. So you can now see what they were doing. thing muted <laughs> yeah so i love that they have to show that they um that they made an illegal u-turn because they're distracted by trying to catch pokemon can, can you imagine this aired, like on cops on fox back in the day God, <laughs> it'd be the funniest shit in the world doesn't even know what togetic is he's a noob he lost his job for it. Pokemon is dangerous, Pokemon everyone. <laughs> wow, this is just this is embarrassing. This just proves that I if if any of like if they fucked up playing Pokemon Go as being cops, I could apply it being an officer if I wanted to. Yep, totally could. All right, so the Unity CEO uh, has stepped down after the controversial fee changes. It's a very short article. I'll just read it real quick. Uh, so after the greedy changes to runtime fees that Unity announced out of the blue last month only to be rescinded after the backlash it induced. It was announced today that Unity CEO John Richitilio, Richit, Richit, Richitilio? Richit, I can't, I don't know. Why is that not? Richitiello. I'm going to say that. Okay, cool. Uh, is stepping down from all of his roles effective immediately. Before his role at Unity, uh, John <laughs> was also the former EA CEO who championed microtransactions, a fact that was pointed out a dozen times over when Unity first made its announcement regarding runtime fees. While the man has stepped down from his CEO and president roles, he will still be in an advisor role for the interim CEO, James Whitehurst. Notably, John wasn't the, uh, wasn't the only bad egg at Unity, one of the runtime fee changes seemed aimed at strengthening and providing Iron Source's hold on the market. Uh, I'm sorry, strengthening ad provider Iron Source, Iron Source's hold on the market. And two of the executives continue to lounge on the board of directors at Unity. Man, everybody's just trying to cut off the biggest piece of the pie before the ship goes down, huh? Dude, they, they In other want, news, Microsoft completes the Activision Blizzard acquisition. Call of Duty is now a part of Xbox. Great. I don't want to read this. Um, any anything important about this that needs to be said? Um, there is potential that Microsoft, in the fact that they care about older games, goes back and relicenses the Transformers games that were on Xbox 360 that were pretty good, like Fall of Cybertron and shit. Huh. Um, there's a small potential that they could also relicense the Spider-Man games because I'm sure Marvel would take money. I don't think Sony has an exclusive Spider-Man uh, thing with them because um, I believe Spider-Man's been in a couple other games uh, that aren't on that, that are Sony exclusive. Wasn't um, the, you know, basically um 
was it the 2002 Spider-Man, right? Didn't they have a an Xbox version of the game where it had Craven the Hunter as an exclusive? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, he was. And then um, the original, I didn't, I played the original one like once when I rented it as a kid. The 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 bigger game was Spider-Man Two for PlayStation Two and shit. Yes, Spider-Man Two um, great, absolutely. Um, and then the other thing that they're talking about is that they are potentially going to bring back Rock Band or oh. Guitar Hero or whatever. Um, I think it was Guitar Hero. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but or, or DJ so, Hero. It's only going to be available as a Microsoft exclusive, though, unless they make a deal with Sony. Like, oh, we're, you know, we'll help each other out, scratch our backs. We'll Microsoft scratch needs our exclusives. And bringing back Guitar Hero makes sense as a as an Xbox exclusive, like a true Xbox exclusive, because all of their like first party exclusives have been PC and Xbox. And like, there was just a, an article that, um, that was, I think we're going to cover in a minute, but maybe, but um, Walmart is getting out of Xbox physical games. Um, there was the leak uh, a couple weeks ago of the, um slides from the lawsuit <laughs> that said Microsoft's next console is going to be all digital um they have pushed the market so far that in terms of like apparently everyone's buying the uh Xbox Series S as opposed to Series X because mm -hmm. it's cheaper and mm -hmm. all of I, in my opinion, all of the enthusiasts that would normally buy the Series X uh, are buying PCs and just playing yeah. everything on PC. Um, Let's step out for just a second. Right. Sure. And so the fact that they're losing on physical media uh, makes sense because the obviously the Series S is digital only. Um. And I think in general, they're just not doing very well in the console market. So having uh, something like Guitar Hero, where you have the, you, like, you need the controller, right? It's a big gimmick. And I suppose you could make it work with um, a PC. But generally, the Guitar Hero franchise is more, well, it used to be. Maybe it, they'll try and change it, but it used to be more couch party game right you get a friend you play on the tv so that game makes sense to make it an xbox exclusive and actually drive people back to the console so i mean that could be where they're going with that i don't know um the other game that i want them to bring back now that they bought fucking activision is um they right before microsoft bought them uh activision shuttered valerian i think it's valerian uh and had them help blizzard on world of warcraft shit and uh valerian being the company that made the um tony hawk uh one plus two re reboot whatever one remake. and two come on <laughs> one plus two <laughs> one and two one, One plus, plus two. two is three. <laughs> uh, so uh, a remake of three plus four would be cool. Uh, and maybe Underground. Um, yeah, those would be good. Uh, so they have a lot of properties now. What, what, what they do with them, that's the question. I don't know. I just a think that this monopoly thing isn't going to work in the long term well i mean th there is an issue with just companies buying other companies in general uh, like the play is right they they and you're seeing this with disney right now right disney spent mm -hmm. a ton of money acquiring marvel acquiring uh uh star wars, star wars and fox um and now they're you know everyone i don't know how true it is but everyone's saying they're like on the edge of having issues and they're needing to sell off like abc uh news network and shit um espn i heard yeah probably that too 
Um, but I um, that Warner Brothers, if if they have problems, Universal might buy it. But I don't know. I think that's too early for that to happen yet. So there was also the issue of uh, that happened with uh, Toys R Us in the states, where um, some fucking company I don't remember like leverage the shit out of their company to buy Toys R Us and then they couldn't make the money back and they defaulted on their loans and shit and then Toys R Us went bankrupt, right? Um so I heard Toys R Us is coming back to the US. I heard that too, I mean but it's gonna be like mini stores though. It's gonna be like pop up stores. It's not gonna be like yeah. it used to be so we used to have a store called Zellers in Canada, and they're doing the same shit with that um, here, where they're like, oh, yeah, Zellers coming back, and it's like a section of uh, Hudson's Bay uh, company um, is is set up as a like Zellers clothing area. It's weird. And Conan wants to know if we are seeing the end of physical media. Uh, stay tuned. The, the start of it. I, I really want to start a company just to have physical media still be a thing. Like if I if we can get a financial backing on that and as preserve as much as possible, I think that'd be Look, great. I think you would have an easier time rather than creating a company to make it still be a thing. Mm-hmm. I think you'd have an easier time creating a social media movement that kept people engaged in the social media game. Gotcha. Like starting a channel called the Anime Collector. <laughs> <laughs> Already got right the corner there. on that market, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, gotta plug that shit in, man. Do we have any more? Do we have any more thoughts, or can I move on from there? Yeah. I uh, guess we'll move on. Yeah. Some more whiskey. Mm. All right. Metal Gear Solid voice actress Jennifer Hale says she was paid one thousand two hundred dollars for Naomi Hunter role. The game sold more than 7 million copies. Oh, boy. Boo-hoo-hoo. This is ironic because of the previous Bayonetta voice actress. Yeah, which is hilarious because Jennifer Hale replaced her. Yes, that's (laughs) what I'm saying. This is funny. (laughs) And then uh, then number one, what was his name? The guy who played uh, Joseph Joestar, the younger one from uh, Battle Tendency. He was, like, kissing her ass on Twitter and shit. Ben Diskin? Uh, yeah, Ben Diskin. Look, I like him, but it's like, dude, really? So, Metal Gear Solid voice actress Jennifer Hale has <sighs> said that she was paid mind. has said that she was paid $1,200 for her role as Naomi Hunter in the original 1998 game. <laughs> Reese, what does the inflation index say Damn. that $1,200 is worth now? About 2300 Fucking double. <laughs> you know? Shit. Dang. So now, first of all, you might be thinking seven million copies. That's twenty four hundred dollars is still too little, right? I doubt anybody in the audience is actually saying. No, that. we're this not. Is, I, nobody's. I'm no, straw manning no, the people that, that uh, this not. article is written for. Uh, as spotted by Genki on Twitter, the voice actors confirmed the amount on the on the My Perfect Console podcast while sharing her desire for video game voice actors to earn residuals. Full disclosure, I am also okay with this as an outcome, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as the percentage is proportionate to your involvement. And there is Quinones wanting a piece of the pie, right? Like, but the problem here is that you voicing Naomi Hunter is not the reason the game sold 7 million copies. Yeah. Nope. Absolutely right. The game sold 7 million copies because Hideo Kojima is a creative genius. He wrote a kick-ass game. That game got translated, scripted by writers. Got dubbed in English. It was coded and like modelers were involved texture artists the part of the game that caused it to sell 7 million copies is significantly like it's, the percentage of your involvement is minuscule and the fact that you're also interchangeable with 
many other voice actors, you are not the make or break of this game. Agreed. The benefit, however, of being involved in a project like the original Metal Gear Solid for PlayStation 1 and getting the notoriety of being attached to a character from that game that is so popular, so many people know it. Many people like myself have never even played the PlayStation 1 game, but love the series because we started at the PlayStation 2 era, right? Yeah. You get to go to conventions and make bank off the success of the game you had a minuscule involvement in. The value is there. That's the value that you are paid. Likewise, if the game tanks, like fucking E.T. gets buried in a desert. Yeah, one of the worst video you games You still got time. paid. It is, it is still one of the worst video games ever. I would like to live in a world where people who were attached to projects that went mega ultra viral, so to speak, and blew up, got to have a piece of the pie. But in order to live in that world, when something tanks and the company loses money on it, they have to lose too. You also must lose money on it. Agreed. And in fact, if we lived in that world, there would be far fewer projects that get made, but the ones that do get made, every person would be committed to making it a success. Yeah. <clears throat> so just throwing that out there. Um, I'm sure that you have had many roles that have come after your involvement in this game because of your involvement in this game. The thing about work is that the value of doing it is not always measured monetarily, or at least it's hard to quantify the value you're getting out of the success of something you played a very small part in. Anyway, um, I think, uh, I don't think there's a point in continuing with this. Let's just move on here. I just want to say this. Lollipop Chainsaw Repop. Producer confirms upcoming remake will leave Juliet's appearance uncensored. Oh, like it's so scandalous too. Oh boy. Like I look at this and I don't even think it's that like risque, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Um, so taking to Twitter on September 28th, the repop producer shared a picture of Juliet in her most covered up outfit, a bunny mascot suit and informed the public in both Japanese and English that quote, we will also make uncensored Juliet costume to meet your expectations. I really thought they were going to put her in a burka. Notably, Yoshida's statement appears to be worded slightly differently in Japanese, with a machine translation of his original sentence provided by Deep L reading, Juliet's costume will also be uncensored to meet your expectations. Thanks to this discrepancy, ostensibly caused innocently by the fact that English is the producer's second language, it is unknown exactly whether Juliet's various outfits will be uncensored by default or as special alterations will be provided. Thankfully, with his latest tweet, Yasuda appears genuinely committed to his previously announced plans to have the remake preserve the game's original identity rather than modify it in accordance with modern social discourses. We do not intend to change the aesthetics of the game, the producer clarified in July 2022, shortly after Repop was announced. The mention of how the game will have a more realistic look in the previous announcement was meant to refer to how we will make use of the advanced rendering technology available in current game consoles. And then the silent part of this and not make her look like a fat, ugly lesbian, like other games. <laughs> we do not wish to change Juliet's design and the assumption uh, that we want, that we want to is baseless. He continued. The, the, the proper word is something we can't say on YouTube, but you know, it's here nor there. Quote, we were the ones who created Juliet's model data after great trial and error 10 years ago and feel attached to her more than anyone else. To this end, he further explained, 
We learned after the announcement of Lollipop Chainsaw Remake that many fans are worried about censorship in the game. We have not yet discussed the issue with the platform holders yet and thus cannot say anything about the topic. But what we can say is that we intend to negotiate with the platform holders to make it so the game can be as close to the original <laughs> as possible. Which is to say, if there are changes, don't look at me. <laughs> like, I don't know. I never played this game. Um, I know that Tara Strong voiced Lollipop. Like, it's a really uh, shameless game that's really fun. <laughs> yeah, it's like she voices like a, a like this is probably one of her very few only non like English like Canadian uh, American Engl you know dubbing roles, right? Okay. It's like a Japan like other than I think uh, maybe a Miyazaki film or like maybe Afro Samurai. This is one of those few roles that she did for Jeff. It's just like one of those just uh, beat him up. So like he just kills zombies <laughs> and that's it. But yeah. it's just tons of fan service. Like there's a bunch of like moves related to stripper poles and like <laughs> it's just shameless. So I just hope they keep that. Like I don't there's know. an achievement for it. like looking up her skirt too. If you look it up kinda, her skirt too long, there was an my achievement. cousin calls that cheesecake. It uh, kind of looks so. to me like um, uh, there's a video game I really like. Uh, God Hand. It kind of feels like it would have a similar like quirkiness to God Hand. Um, anyway, moving on from here. Uh, Americanized Princess Peach Face raises questions. Uh-oh. 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 Hold on. I need to bring back a uh, oh, oldie but a goodie. Shina and Princess Peach. Okay. But look at the fucking detail on their lips! Why is this necessary for a children's game? Why do you have to go in so much effort on the little details that don't matter? How about you put this effort on your fucking hardware and have good graphics for once? Look at this! Fucking Rosalina have dick sucking lips. Look, Princess Peach has a fucking old mouth with bimbo bitch dick sucking lips! <laughs> Never gets old. Never gets old. <laughs> so, um, it looks like they only changed uh, this face. Oh they no, no they changed. They changed this one too. They made her. She looks girl? like the one. She looks like the one from the. Um, yeah, girl boss. The the girl boss Peach from the movie. Yeah. This one over here looks the same, and this one up here looks the same to me. I think they only changed these two. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let's find out what they what this is about. The upcoming Mario spinoff, Princess Peach Showtime, recently gave its heroine a facelift that Americanizes the Japanese-designed character, changing Peach's look to be more similar to her movie counterpart's design. Oh. <laughs> While the game is themed around shows and plays, which justifies which justifies Peach's wider range of expressions, as seen in the kung fu art, people have pointed out that for a, uh, for the middle renderer, besides looking more confident, Peach's look has been significantly changed by having longer eyebrows, less pronounced eyelashes, and a more pronounced nose. While people were quick to joke about American Kirby, a phenomenon in, in older Kirby games where Kirby would be changed to be more aggressive looking. Oh, the <laughs> I never noticed that. The angry eyebrows. <laughs> Damn. I kind of wish we had covered this uh, before the two articles from now. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, American Kirby, a phenomenon in which older Kirby games where Kirby would be changed to a more aggressive looking for the American box art. It should be noted that the art has been changed for the Japanese release of Princess Peach Showtime as well. The changes led to people realizing Peach's new face to her looks in the Super Mario Brothers movie by Illumination. Changes, the changes led people led to people realizing Peach's new face to her looks. Great. Not even Stone Coffee Complex can be spared. Um, 
leading to more jokes about Americanizing her looks as a whole. The design change has uh, seen minor backlash from both the West and Japan. First one was better for sure. I thought we were past this. What's the point of this girly room? Okay. Uh, yep. Wonderful. Fucking rockly that bitch. <laughs> yeah. She's the handsome devil, right? Yeah. She is. She has the flame of youth in her. Look, I never really cared about Princess Peach until Stable Diffusion, but <laughs> uh, they're making it more like the movie face. Personally, I like the original more. Strength isn't determined by force of personality, and I like how Peach is strong while maintaining her elegance. Anyway, I don't think we need to read these, but um, yeah, that sucks. Uh, imagine a might guy version of, of that. would be fucking hilarious. I'm going to share an article coming up that... I have no reason to share other than I saw it. And so do you have you fuck it. I had to see this and now. So do you, uh, okay. Taiman and RPG now filled with pregnant Kunoichi. Taiman in Tiananmen. <laughs> no, I was for the A in there. Tai man. Ning. You said Tiananmen. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like making it sound like the TIA. I was making a fucking joke because you. Tri- what? Fuck you, I'm Jesus! <laughs> you guys need to love me a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> They're TV antennas, Reese. They're TV <laughs> antennas. <laughs> My dick gets satellite. Taimana's RPG latest events find some of the tantalizing, robust ninjas somehow coming down with a bad case of brains. <laughs> Complete with bulging, bulging bellies that are perfectly dojin worthy. The event is started on October 10th is Pregnancy Day, and it seems the protagonist Fuma will be having his way with all of the girls, filling them up to the brim in order to get them that way. Oh, that's a really... Uh, you really thought hard on how this worked, huh? Yeah, Taimanan's right ladies there. become loving mothers in the new event. Oh. I'm concerned about this one the most. What? Yes. Like, what the fuck? This person is carrying three babies and they're not in the right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, anyway, so if you got a sick pregnancy fetish, there you go. You're welcome. Don't encourage that. <laughs> oh, look, American Kirby. American Kirby doing 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft AI face. generates images of Kirby during 9-11. Oh, Jesus. You know, there was a Photoshop of Hulk Hogan doing that years ago. Mm. He was like a giant Hulk Hogan, like doing a big boot or hitting with steel chair on the buildings. Pretty fun. In this up. one, it's not Kirby doing it. I see a hand. He's just there along for the ride. He's one of the hostages. <laughs> Why is Kirby taking out Nakatomi Plaza over here? <laughs> this doesn't even look like the Twin Towers on that one. Anyway, uh, I don't think we need to read this. That was funny. Let's uh, let's move on to release news. All right. <sighs> Pour some more whiskey. Japanese retro gamers continue to gripe about foreign game collectors. So one of the problems that Japan is facing right now is that because their culture and like their history and all the stuff that they've done up until now has gotten to be so popular outside of the country, which is a very insular, you know, nation with very few outside influences and, uh, you know, it's very homogenous, mostly Japanese, right? Um, Is that because the West has become fans of things that Japan produced in like the eighties and nineties, especially in retro games, they're importing Japanese games that, you know, like retro games for the Famicom and whatnot. And so in retro game stores in Japan, the stock has gotten so abysmal that the retro games they do have are selling for astronomically high prices because they don't have supply and demand. They don't have enough anymore 
right? So they got to charge out the nose to buy them. So, uh, or to sell them, I guess. Um, kind of an interesting concept, right? Like, imagine being so successful at producing lewd art and uh, horny <laughs> good games that you just can't keep them in your own country. Right? Any yeah. thoughts? It's, it's well, kind of an interesting concept, right? Like, the... Um... There's always been this idea, uh, you know, well, I I shouldn't say it that way, but there have often been a lot of YouTubers that go to Japan, they see this horde, and it's everyone's, like, you know, dream of going to a store and finding all of this old stuff that you can buy again. It's like, oh, amazing, right? And so a lot of uh, YouTubers and, and... other people i think even like on attack of the show they used to do these segments where they'd go to japan and check out the old video game stores right and oh i find an amazing deal on some game or whatever and so that's kind of driven this idea of and and the japanese market because of region locking as well which we're seeing a lot of games now don't really care like the collectors don't really care about the region locking as much anymore because it's like okay well i got 10 ways to sunday to play that game i just want a physical thing of it right um but because of region locking i think would be my guess uh their market right their supply and demand in their market is different than our market so Mm -hmm. it's kind of like how if you're playing on if you're playing world of warcraft and you're on one server right you know, uh-huh. I don't know, some shield might sell for 20 gold on your server, but on someone else's server, it sells for like five gold. There's yeah, yeah. different markets, right? Totally. And so now we're seeing this case of, well, I don't care if I can play it. I just want it and you have it for cheap. So it and then with the social media and shit, we're seeing all these people go there and say, well, look at this. And that's driving up demand for what they offer. Now, yeah. uh, Wolf Den, uh, if anyone watches them, um, uh, their YouTube channel that covers mainly Nintendo stuff, uh, just went to Japan. And uh, it was to, I forget the other guy that partners with Wolf Den a lot. But anyway, um, they do the non Nintendo podcast, I think. But anyway, th- so those guys, they went there and they checked out stores like in the touristy areas Mm -hmm. and they found like most of those stores have like adjusted the price to Mm -hmm. be pretty much the same as here. Like you're not getting a huge deal. Yeah. So, so in the touristy areas, they're making it so that it's, you wasted money to come to Japan to try to get them. Yeah. Yeah. But there was another, uh, YouTuber. I don't remember. Book office become like that, sadly. Um, uh, anyway, this other YouTuber went recently as well to Japan, and he did more excursions into the, like the boonies mm-hmm. um, and the more rural areas, and he was still finding good deals. So it's the there are still good deals there apparently, but they're in harder to reach areas where the demand hasn't adjusted the prices yet. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's supply and demand, so people want it now and. It's a limited resource. Like they don't, they're not making more of it. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. going to go up. For and sure. the other thing uh, that drives a lot of people to buy Japanese imported stuff is, generally speaking, uh, Japanese people keep really good condition of their yeah. shit. Yeah. So when you buy like a twenty-year-old fucking magazine, it's like in pristine, pristine. Yeah. condition. Hundred percent. Um, so that's that's another reason why a lot of people from the West are wanting to go and, and buy shit from there. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, I think it's. Uh... So I, I talk about this concept a lot about the second Tower of Babel, right? I think the Internet largely has been that, but really. And I'm I'm just kind of like pulling this out of my ass right now, just trying to articulate. And I think this is actually you guys have been talking in the ch- in the chat about the concept of um, uh, the satanic panic with Pokemon, 
back in the day. <laughs> uh, that Pokemon was satanic, right? Er- everything. I think that um, one of the problems that we have in society is that a lot of people instinctively are able to see disaster on the horizon, but they like they can feel it in their gut, right? They know bad things are coming because of stuff that is happening, right? But they don't know how to articulate it properly, right? They aren't aware of... Like, they know something bad is coming because they have, like, a sixth sense of it, right? But they can't tell you specifically what it is or why. And so nobody takes them seriously. Nobody understands the point they're trying to make. Or they come across as um, religious zealot, like, uh, bigots or imbeciles or whatever. You know what I mean? Like So, like, with Pokemon, it's like... The problem with Pokemon is not necessarily that it's satanic. The problem with Pokemon was that it created an obsession amongst the youth in America, right? Um, Right now, we exist in a world where, and I was kind of thinking about this, we were talking about this before, about this concept of, um, I live in a generation, I'm part of a generation that existed before the internet. Right. And when I was growing up, I lived in what I refer to and most people refer to as the real world. Right. Like you actually went and physically did things. You had life experiences that were based in reality. Right. And yeah, the Internet existed um, when I was a kid, but you'd spend at most three hours on it. You know what I mean? Like once you got through, like, because, you know, there were so few websites that were even interesting for kids. You know what I mean? Like I'd be looking up, you know, Dragon Ball fan art or some shit. You know what I mean? (laughs) And it's like, you can only do that for so long before you've realized that there's only a hundred images across 2000 websites and they're all the same. They're just re they were just, everybody's going to everybody else's site and stealing it and putting it on their own site. You know what I mean? So like, there's not really that much to do, you know? And so you would still spend a good deal of every one of your days doing something in the real world rather than being sucked into the internet, you know? And growing up, I grew up in a time where before the internet, you had cable TV, right? or you didn't, but most people did. And you had Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network, right? Or both. And so people have these shared childhood experiences between the shows that we all grew up watching, the movies we all went and saw, Space Jam. You know what I mean? Like everybody fucking saw Space Jam. Everybody saw Shrek. Like there were a couple things that everybody has in their childhood, you know, that unites us as a people. And as a generation where we can interact with each other and have a sense of belonging belonging or a shared sense of history that we can share with each other and have a human connection with. But since the advent of the internet and like its development over the years where it's become a place where people can post literally whatever the fuck they want, we now live in this interesting world where people are in these little cliques, these like microcosm, micro, micro communities, I should say, of things that you're going to find a handful, if you're lucky, of people that grew up watching the same shit you did because you're watching a YouTuber rather than TV. You know what I mean? Um, and so, People live in and a world now. Just right? to further that, yeah. um, each one of those different experiences are going to, in the sense of tab- Tower of Babel, they're going to develop their own inside jokes, yes. right? Their own little memes yeah. that they know yeah. that other people will not get. Yeah. Um, like to, like it must creating be a jeans bigger... or leather 
for example, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> creating a bigger divide between two people that would have in a previous generation had a similar uh, uh, connection point in their, yes. in their past. Yeah. And, and what that has done is society um, was a lot more cohesive and strong when people's perception of reality was built on fiction or reality that we shared, you know, and in modern days, we don't share any of it. Like we can't agree on anything and society is crumbling from the fact that we have no shared value system. Um, we have no shared history. Um, people despise their own history. Uh, there's revisionist history, you know, like, and so um, something else we sort of talked about behind the scenes a little bit, um, sort of explored this concept of because we at one time, you know, and the, the concept of nostalgia is that it's a time for which you, you enjoyed yourself. It's a happy time. A time when you got home from school and watched Power Rangers and you didn't have a care in the world. You didn't have a job to get to. You didn't have bills to pay. You got home and you enjoyed watching Dragon Ball Z. You would joyfully get your homework done in time to fucking watch the next episode where Goku goes Super Saiyan. You know? And... Nowadays, companies, Microsoft buying Activision, Sony buying Crunchyroll Funimation, Right Stuff, they are struggling to captivate the, like, honestly, every one of us here, every single one of us here has a deep appreciation and a history that goes back fucking years with right stuff and rather than build that connection sony bought it and worse yet Shutter. they threw it away you know yeah. like every reboot like mirage was sharing some articles i chose not to cover them just because they're not really anime related but they're bringing back Disney's Doug. They're doing a reboot of the reboot, right? And it's like companies right now are grasping for whatever they can that at one time held meaning and value in your life because that's the only thing that they feel like will sell. Reboot are, after reboot after remake after remake after yeah. comic book movie after comic book movie. And and it's just like we're we're current like I, I've been thinking about this a lot. And again, I I don't have the words to articulate, you know, like most of the you know thinking I do about topics that we cover on the podcast, especially now that um that I don't have fucking any time outside of doing the show. I formulate the opinions on the podcast. Like I have to, I think things through verbally. Right. So like earlier with the whole Chuck Huber thing, I don't know how to articulate my feeling. My gut is telling me Chuck is actually a really good friend of him. Right. And a good friend tells you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. But it's hard for me to, figure out how to properly phrase it because I've got all sorts of, you know, feelings and thoughts in my mind about what I'm trying to actually get across. And I, you'll notice as you watch the show, I will say things and re say them and I'll tweak it a little bit. And I'm just trying to figure out, like I'm just throwing anything at the wall that will stick to try to get that one phrase out that rings true with the feeling that I'm experiencing for the subconscious understanding of what is occurring. Right. And the concept of the tower of Babel 
in the Bible is that mankind was told by God to go out, go forth and populate the earth. And at one point they choose instead to build a megalopolis, a mega city tower that everybody lived in to put everybody together. And there's some, you know, symbolism of the concept of building the tower to reach God, right? Building this structure to get into the sky closer to the heavenly realm, right? And in the story in the Bible, God strikes mankind with, it, it's it's the biblical myth as to where language comes from, right? In terms of everybody at one time, born in the Fertile Crescent, right? Garden of Eden and kicked out and all that stuff. They all speak the same language. But then when the Tower of Babel occurs, that's where language splits and people cannot communicate with each other. And they are forced to come together with their clique, their group, and leave because nobody can understand each other. Um, you know, like the societies all split off. They're forced to go forth and populate the earth, right? But just because that is how things occur the first time around does not mean that that's how things will occur the next time around, right? Although what we're experiencing is that we, now that the internet exists, do not speak the same language. As Random Eleven was just saying, we have our own memes. We have our own culture. We have, we throw around the term rape on this podcast because of fucking Detroit Metal City. And it doesn't mean the same thing as other podcasts or other people talking about it. You know what I mean? And I just, I don't, I don't really know how to articulate it, but we're watching the decline of human civilization. Like we are living through like a slow motion apocalypse of societal decay. There is not a single place on earth where society is actively thriving right now. And I think Japan, to come back to our point here, I think Japan is a very interesting case study in this because they are experiencing it. They are basically a microcosm of what's happening globally. And it's hitting Japan first. And all the decay is hitting Japan first. The decadence of masturbating constantly 24 hours a day is hitting Japan first. The human interaction, the human connection being gone is hitting Japan first. But it is coming for every single person on this planet. Because we have created a world where we don't need humans anymore. And I, I just like I don't I don't know what I'm trying to say with all of this, but I guess I just wanted to get it off my chest, you know. I just feel like I guess hopeless would be a word I would use. Like there's just like no future for my kids, for my family, you know, everything that you love, everything from your nostalgic past, opening a new DVD and smelling that weird plastic smell from the cheap box sets. <laughs> that's fucking gone. Just huffing it in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're already losing out on the, you're not going to get the VHS clamshells anymore, right? Yeah, a whole stack of those, you want them? <laughs> if I had had a vision when I first started the podcast or when I first started the channel that I would be looking at a world where Sony bought fucking everything and destroyed it. If I had if I had bought my first DVD for anime and I picked that shit up and I saw the future. I don't think I would have bought another DVD. You would have bought an HD CD or a or a video CD or whatever. 
high definition audio CD. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I don't know. I think this point's gotten really far away from me, but I just, I just, fuck, man. Like, I want to get off this planet. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to live on this planet anymore, to quote the Futurama. You know, like, fuck. And imagine being in Japan and watching this slow motion collapse happen to your culture. Imagine being in a world where... Everything that you built and Japan has a remark like because you know modern Japan is not the same thing as Imperial Japan, right? This is an incredibly short lifespan for, for a culture. They flew too close to the sun. <laughs> they cooned <laughs> they cooned yeah, too yeah. close to the sun with their amazing waifu boobs. And uh yeah, it's just sad. Anyway, uh, to take this downer, doomer uh, outlook and continue with it, uh, Walmart is going to stop selling Xbox games, physical Xbox games, right? Uh, and also, uh, Best Buy is going to end DVD and Blu-ray sales. So it says physical media, so I don't know if that also includes games, too. Yeah. But obviously DVDs and Blu-rays for sure. Which and in a turn, stuff. not a single person could possibly have fathomed Netflix will open a permanent retail store in 2025. Basically so ne- like a freaking Netflix general store. Look, man, if Netflix came out and said, fuck it, we're making a blockbuster, we're bringing the 90s back, I'd be, I would fucking sign me up. You know, I would absolutely be all for that. Netflix is taking yet another odd route in an attempt to gain new revenue sources. The streaming service recently removed its cheapest ad free tier. They didn't add free tier. They haven't. Oh, hold on. Net, Netflix has an ad free tier. Yes. It's the, hold on. I'm sorry. I, 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 meant, I meant to ask a different question. <laughs> They recently removed the cheapest ad free tier to push users towards an ad support. I haven't seen any ads on um, maybe I have the more expensive one anyway. Yeah. So they're going to push users to an ad supported tier or a more expensive ad free plan. And of course you cannot share your login information with the masses anymore. There's also it's online shop that sells items uh, tied to properties like stranger things and the occasional pop-up store. Now Netflix will take a more permanent claim in the brick and mortar world with several retail destinations in 2025, as Bloomberg reports. The new retail stores will be known as Netflix House. No, fucking God damn it. What a horrible name. Netflix House. Man, it's dead before it's built. Shit. I can't think of a better name off the top of my drunken mind, but still. <laughs> 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 Maybe Netbox. I don't fuck. I can't get. I don't know. Net, net Netflix House. Netbuster. Netflix Depot. How about that? <laughs> Netflix. Just call it Netflix. Netflix. Just call, <laughs> make it a cafe. Call it Netflix and chill. <laughs> oh, that's good. They will offer food items like a cafe, merchandise, and experiences. <laughs> Tied to Netflix's shows and films. You heard it here first, folks. You can get uh you can get ass raped. Um, that's an experience tied to Netflix's Castlevania. Uh, <laughs> I'll take one uh analing, please. <laughs> you can get in you can get inflated due to uh, one piece. Yeah. <laughs> Many of the details are still in the air at this moment. We don't know which cities will have a Netflix house, but we can assume Los Angeles, New York City, and maybe another city like Atlanta will be on the list. Most likely. Right now, it seems Netflix will open stores in the U.S. and, if they are successful, expand locations to other countries. I just want to go to the, the Netflix house in Zimbabwe, and it's just like a hut. I want to go to the Netflix house in Coming, Iowa. Coming, Iowa. <laughs> It is quite the choice to make considering that retail stores are typically more expensive to maintain versus online only slash pop-up options. 
In our 2023 world, many retailers are minimizing altogether, blah, 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 blah. None of this is important. Fuck, that's it? Jeez. All right, so are they going to sell, like, all the shit that was at Target, like Stranger Things pajamas? Is that all they're going to sell? Uh, I think they're start selling, like, their Netflix shows that actually have physical releases. Yes! 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 Give it to me! And you could only buy them at these stores? Maybe this is a good thing. Maybe. Still waiting on Stranger Things Season 3. Mm-hmm. That's, you know... I know somebody wants media. Death Note. When's the new season coming out? Do you know? Next year? Of Stranger Things? Yeah. 2025? <laughs> There's no date. Yeah. Are the writers are the writers even got back to work yet? The kids are going to be like 100 by the time it finishes. Anyway, um, are the Ayakashi Triangle Blu-rays uncensored? Yes, they are. Um... I invite you to go to the dock and open this because I cannot scroll down. Uh, it is an automatic ban if I do. So uh, um, I will read one segment, uh, but I'm going to put the camera on me while I read it. Oh, dear Lord. All right. So uh, there is this one part. Oh, look at the wrong. Okay. So real quick, it says, um, right as the first Blu-ray for the series was announced, some fan drama erupted on Twitter stating that the Blu-rays were even more censored than the broadcast version. I bring this up because we covered it last podcast. We showed uh, Chibi Reviews' his tweet um, that showed like clip art or whatever of like stuff stickers like the shimonetta sensor circle so to speak over the crotches and everything and then the actual blu-ray supposedly was like shaded you know like in the black and white what do you call that fuck it uh deep shadow crotch region everything was dark <laughs> anyway the opposite of the light rays the negative light rays where it's reducing the yeah anyway so it says here um this would have included Lucky Cat graphics covering any nipples, panty shots, and other choice visuals fans would like to see. As far as I can tell, it originated with a Blu-ray rip that got uploaded to the internet, which did contain censorship. This wasn't the official Blu-ray release, but likely a pirate disc made from the broadcast streams to sell in shops in Asia. To be clear... The official Blu-ray release shows all nipples, butts, and panty shots. There's a full frontal scene with soap strategically clinging to Matsuri's crotch area. They mean like the soap suds that cover any of the like pubes, yeah. right? Which is standard for all etchy anime, including To Love Rue. Now... I want you to think back to the shots we looked at last podcast because this next line makes me wonder if it's not actually wrong. In the scene where Matsuri is running at night, a shadow effect hides her crotch, which is also reasonable. Guess we're just going to have to buy the Blu-rays to find out. Anyway, um... The rest of it appears to be uncensored, from what I can tell. But I'll have to confirm. <laughs> do, we'll do independent actually... research. Yeah, for science. Get back to you. <laughs> so has, WK has anybody go, sorry, actually go ahead. licensed? I don't think so. Triangle? But I hold. I oh, I, I would. I don't want to go back on my tirade, but I would just say that fucking. I am irritated at the fact. That Funimation canceled Interspecies Reviewer. It went to Australia at Anime Lab. Then Sony bought Anime Lab and rebranded it to like Funimation Australia or whatever. Then they too also removed Interspecies Reviewers. Then Interspecies Reviewers got acquired by Nozomi at Right Stuff. Then Sony buys right stuff. Like, they are on a tirade to just fucking end interspecies reviewers. Under their critical mass label, not by Nozomi. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um, so WTK says BDRs, meaning burned Blu-rays, Blu-ray recordable discs, 
available for pre-order via Ascendant Animation. Now, Ascendant Animation is the uh, uh, for queers by queers company. Yeah, they also did like um, Kageki Shoujo, I think. Yeah. I oh, did they? Yeah. Well, I'm... I just want to point out the fact that they censored this title. It is supposed to be caressing the nipples of my hibernating bear. Yeah. Or caressing my hibernating bear's nipples or whatever. Like, censored. It says uncensored. Lies. <laughs> also, apparently, apparently the first straight thing they put out, Game World Reincarnation. Oh, it's not the first one. They've done the other straight ones, too. So oh, have... man. That show just never... sounds amazing. We've never covered them because they were adult titles and they've been on by anime. Yep. Has haven't been brought into your consciousness. So when you go to writestuffanime.com, you are met with this amazing bullshit. Right stuff anime has moved to Crunchyroll store. At least you can still log into your account and uh for another ten days. Is this how you got the uh the link? For no no no, I just did a, I was playing with Crunchyroll hasn't up properly fully updated their site because when I went to their Blu-ray section and did pre-orders, it only gave me the the six Funimation ones, or you know the instead of like all of the pre-orders, I had to go to like the home entertainment and then go to pre-orders and then you know go from there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start a poll. All right. There is now a poll in the comments. What do we call the right stuff segment from now on? Crunchy roll or fuck crunchy roll? Call it right stuff. <laughs> <laughs> fuck crunchy so roll. Call it right stuff. That's what I'm voting for if I could vote, but I can't because I made the poll. How many alternate YouTube accounts do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> Anyway, so we're going to go into our first installment of the right stuff on Crunchyroll and there's nothing new to segment. Cover. And there's nothing new to cover anyway. <laughs> Fuck you, Crunchyroll. You suck. <laughs> so I, I'm legitimately thinking we should start a poll that says get rid of the Crunchyroll store, move everything to right stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought Crunchyroll wasn't going to have live action anymore. Huh? <laughs> they don't have. They do not have the uh, G Kids um, stage play thing for Spirited Away added yet. Apparently, apparently, there's been stuff that have that didn't get rolled added on right away, like that Masaki Yuasa set didn't get added mm -hmm. right away. That just came up on there like a couple days ago. Anyway, um, all right, let's check on the poll. You <laughs> should have results right away. <laughs> Great job! Great job! Zero. How many viewers are watching from six? Five viewers from YouTube. Come on, fuckers. Uh, thank you. 100%. Yeah. No, fuck you. No, no. <laughs> <There>. <laughs> somebody, somebody checked it. They checked the right stuff answer and then unchecked it and then checked it again <laughs> while I was watching. <laughs> I saw it go 100%, 0%, 100%, 0%, 100%. <laughs> All right. So, uh, in other news, this is kind of funny. Um, so Land of Obscusion, George Horvath, uh, said organizing Crunchyroll store home entertainment, i.e. physical media category, by best sellers so early after rights of closure definitely gives you some real oddities. Charge Man Ken on BV is 106. Dalmiger DVD, uh, Dalmiger D DVD is 125. And the Macross beta tape is number 170. Ladies and gentlemen, you can still buy it. For $48, the beta tape of Booby Trap. <laughs> <laughs> Is this going to be the first thing I buy? <laughs> but that would be supporting Sony. You know, like that. 
No, Luigi I'm pretty didn't... sure this is supporting an X library rental. Like, <laughs> but it's beta. Beta was Sony. Gotta go VHS. I want the Sigma tape. All right. And Connor so, says it's 50-50 now. I would like to tell you guys, um, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> How we, we all, every single one here knows that. I don't know if Greenland does, though. So. Maybe Greenland, do you know it? What? Like that, that that's stained a, or Creed? That's stained, stained. right? Stained. Uh, stained? That song's, that song's uh, awesome. Um, it's been a while. It's yeah. Been a while. I rest yeah. my case on the shared history we, we all have. <laughs> 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 anyway. Um, Exhibit A, rest my case. So. As you guys just saw, there is no more right stuff, which means we no longer have an affiliate with right stuff. With right stuff. So, weirdly, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was a time when I rewatched, I, I did a rewatch of the podcast. I, I watched every single episode again. It took me over a year to fucking do it. Um, and it was weird because every time I was watching something, it's like, we would do a podcast and I'm like, I just rewatched the episode where we first brought this up. That's so fucking weird. <laughs> Randomly. I chose after finishing my rewatch of the last podcast to watch podcast 155. Mm -hmm. I, because it's one of the few that has not been time stamped yet. And I found this clip. So, Behind the scenes, I'm working on getting a, an affiliate uh, partnership with Right Stuff, uh, and the idea is, hey, you know, I'll put the link in the description. Anytime you guys are going to shop on Right Stuff, anyway, just head over, you know, grab the link, go through the link, and then buy your stuff that way, right? If you want to support the channel, that's a way you can do it at no extra cost to you, right? But maybe that's I should true. also see if Tenga is available on this website. <laughs> Oh, flip side. You're, You're muted. muted. <laughs> I'm not muted. You, you were. were muted. Now you are muted. Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that after we lost our affiliate with Right Stuff, conveniently timed. Finally, can somebody fucking please click on it? God damn it. We are it affiliates with Tenga. <laughs> Put it back up, damn it. <laughs> it has been an effort to get this affiliate. All right? You can now finish. <laughs> yeah. So Tenga USA has an application you can do on their website. I applied. And as I was doing the application, I'm like, this is the same service that right stuff goes through. It uses share a sale, but I applied and was rejected. Now I applied, but I created a new account because I didn't know it was through share sale until after I created the new account, I was rejected. So I then applied through share a sale and I sat in limbo for weeks until I, I, I opened a Twitter direct message with them. I heard nothing. I emailed their customer support and I said, Hey, I'm applying to be an affiliate. Um, it's been pending for a couple weeks now. I just, I don't know if that's normal or not. I just want to let you know. Uh, and see if there's anything I could do to help fulfill the process. And fulfill the magnificent the motherfucker on the other line of that email said, I will manually override it immediately. And motherfuckers, we are affiliates with right uh, with Tenga. Okay, God damn it. We are affiliates <laughs> with Tenga right now. So if you ever considered masturbating in your life, I invite you to shop at Tenga. Allow me to share with you the link of your future 
favorite wet bookmark. dreams. <laughs> <laughs> your favorite, your new favorite bookmark. <laughs> and if you are, if you are wondering what you should buy, I suggest the cat flipping you off Tenga. <laughs> it comes in black and white. And also, if you are too shy to admit that you constantly masturbate, because we keep you so fucking erect on this podcast, <laughs> you can buy your... Oh, wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> you can buy yourself the shirt. <laughs> Love me, Tenga. Where I'm pretty sure that's Mickey Mouse saying, don't mind me. I'm just going to go masturbate. Like... You can do it. It's here. The time is now. All right? <laughs> no, no. The time has come. Yeah. And if you're particularly brave, I invite you. <laughs> if you want to be closer than a brother with your best friend to buy the dual sensation cup for which you can both enter simultaneously <laughs> and meet in the middle. And I'll remind you, it's not gay because the dicks will not be touching. <laughs> this is at your fingertips. All it takes is putting in your credit card information and supporting this podcast in its even, time of need. You don't even need your credit card. You just use, they can just give them PayPal. <laughs> Look. Maybe you don't want to buy a Tenga. Maybe you're just thinking like, ah, my hand is all right. Look, man. Lube! Buy some fucking lube! All right? <laughs> it's the guaranteed the best lube you'll ever use. Hands down. Also, because they <laughs> because they bent over backwards <laughs> to get me that affiliation, I kind of want to show them that we aren't going to not ever produce any sales for them. So if you ever considered buying a Tenga, now is the time. Thank you. <laughs> Good night and God. Do they have discreet packaging? Yes. <laughs> look at he every, said look, full confidence. Yeah. <laughs> 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 look at pull up a listing and go to the very bottom. Any any listing. Just click on something. I'm look, trying. Look. God damn it. Fuck. Yeah, shipping and hand, ship, shipping and packaging. Keep going. Boom. Do they, do they have a money back guarantee? If you don't come, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you guys. I don't like, know how I can fuck up masturbating. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, you're edging the whole not, podcast anyway. Not, you might as well do not, it into a, a easily disposable tenga egg or some other feature. By the way, also if you can't decide because you're just like, oh, decision fatigue. There's so many wonderful fake pussies to fuck. <laughs> I I invite you to get the tenga subscription box. It is a loot crate for your gonads. It is it is delivered monthly to your door unless you want to go every three months because for some reason you aren't using up enough of the equipment you could do that but i doubt you will because we only support the horniest of bros on this podcast <laughs> you mean that i could put my swang into a different hole every month every, every month. month and if you buy enough you can do it every two hours <laughs> Always have stock when you need it. Good luck living up to that to that promise. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you could fuck this geometric orb. <laughs> That's what's in the October Tenga subscription box. That orb is kind of like the egg where you you pull it inside out. Like what, how it, yeah. how it is, it's inside out right now, and you just like invert it. And then mm. that's like the egg, but you can okay. wash this. And so the it. sensation comes from this geometric pattern. Look, yeah. I'm not saying that you're going to meet God in this new revolutionized <laughs> sexual experience. 
Unless but you do this is a pattern only publish. found in nature <laughs> that will be stroking your dick. And I think there's no there's no closer experience to the heavenly realm. All right. So get on it. Get off. Get, yeah. <laughs> and if and if you still want to jerk off into a towel or a cum rag, I invite you to go to stealthweave.com. We need to pick- start making tin towels. Oh. Can we do that? We need to do that. Yes. Get the, get that on it now. And what do we L. what do we put on it though? <laughs> your, your face. <laughs> I'd prefer not to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a reminder: you can still buy oh, the no. Gump- <laughs> no, can- no, what the lizards? <laughs> you can still buy the fuck oh, yeah. blind people shirt. I think yeah. we should put uh, don't coom too close to the sun on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pokemon card greed gets fraudulent reseller cut. <laughs> oh, we got to go over some shit. <laughs> Uncono. Bobby Hill. You aren't fooling anyone. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. Your girlfriend's hand gets tired, dude. <laughs> Give her the ergonomic respect of a Tenga love cup. All right? She'll she'll thank you for it. Quite frankly, it's the gift that keeps on giving until you dispose of it because it's a single use. But <laughs> oh, 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 I it, it's not it's technically a single use, but if you buy yourself a pack of condoms, you could use it a couple more times and some extra lube. You're good. Hmm. Look, you're basically printing money here. Just get over, <laughs> use that link. <laughs> also, I, I, I had to respond to it kind of with this one. <laughs> All right. So, uh, <laughs> Pokemon. Pokemon. You... <laughs> Again, in Kono, your girlfriend's just doing it wrong if it's been a while. Get the tank, dude. <laughs> We're just trying to help your blue balls, all right? Pokemon card greed gets fraudulent reseller caught. <laughs> so Pokemon card fever continues to grow in Japan, but in one particular instance, it has also led to a greedy reseller getting caught rewrapping open boxes in order to tr- in order to turn a profit on e marketplace Mercari. 23-year-old freelancer man from Hyogo Prefecture had removed the actual rare cards from the box and replaced the cards with low with low rarity ones before shrink wrapping the box and selling them online for the original price. Two such boxes were sold in this way in June with the post titled Rare Cards Being Included. <laughs> Way to tip your hand. Like... <laughs> Definitely still has the rare cards. Wink, wink. <laughs> Sold for a total of almost 1000 US dollars. While the person who bought the boxes hadn't opened them to check, after seeing the seller's questionable Mercari, bar- Mercari buyer reviews, the victim opened the boxes to find that they had been scammed. The seller admitted to scamming the victim and other people to earn money, being an example of the rare time when resellers get caught. So, um, yeah, whatever. I'll fuck it. Move on. I'll move on. All right. Dance Dance Revolution Classic Mini Console is set to bring the beat back in micro style. <laughs> now, we were joking about this because it has, it's like a like tech deck size. Like you're supposed to do it with your fucking fingers. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were joking about this because quite frankly, not a single person who is adept at this game has ever looked cool in public, no matter how much they sweated jumping and flipping over these bars, pretending to be a badass. Uh, everybody cool was was laughing at you because it's cringe. Um, but the term uh, pole dance dance revolution got thrown out, and I thought that's fucking funny. But then I thought of lap dance dance revolution. I need to know from the chat which one of those needs to be merged. Lap dance dance revolution or pole dance dance revolution? Hmm. You know what you could do better time when you're lap? 
A tanga. Yeah. <laughs> the great thing about a tanga is you can stick it in your girlfriend. <laughs> right? You can deny her the pleasure as some sort of weird fetish. Both worlds. You shove that US size one in her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have they have a bunch You're of You're not doing sizes. anything at that point. You, or is it, you have to if you can shove that US size one in there, yeah. you are doing anything. E explain to explain with. the sizes of Tenga. <laughs> there, there's the US size, which obviously no, no, no. start with the small one. Okay, fine, fine. The smallest size. So this is just for the regular, the regular iconic Tenga cup shape with the like the, the different stiffnesses of the material. Uh, fine, you can leave without my good jokes, Dick. <clears throat> but they start with the SD size, which obviously, if you're into anime and, and following this stuff, you think, oh, super deformed, chibi. No, they're not very. They're not gonna, you know, make fun of you. They're calling it super direct. And that's standard you know. def. <laughs> Blocky. Say again. I said it's standard def. It's blocky. Oh, standard def? Uh, whatever. Super direct. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean there, there's no HD one, so it's, it doesn't, there's no, like, you know, counter to it, you know? But yeah, I guess standard, standard dick, I guess, can be <laughs> better. And then there's just the regular one, which is bigger. And then there's the US one. Which obviously, you know, the joke that Japanese have small dicks and the U.S. have, you know, foot-long dicks, as, as usual, you know, as you know, as a proud American, I can attest. Um, so have, have I ever have I ever told the story about? There's a story that that went around when I was a kid, um, kind of like the Marilyn Manson uh, got his ribs removed so he could suck his own dick story that just everybody seemed to know. Yeah. Um, but uh, not quite as prolific as that one, where apparently in a conflict um, that the U.S. was in, uh, where we um, allied with Russia, the story goes that we were fighting alongside each other and the Russians were able to get um, uh, supplies uh, delivered that were coming from the U S so as a show of strength, they asked for eight inch condoms and without skipping a beat, the U S sent them over, but labeled them medium. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was just about done. So the U S size, which is the largest one is just ultra size. Mm -hmm. Not for U S. But it is for us. <sighs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh shit. All right. Jockey's iconic helmet from Fist of the North Star is real and wearable for a price. Oh, okay. Well, that's the article. Great. Fuck. Does it even say the price? Probably somewhere. One thousand four hundred seventy-four dollars. Wow, great! I'm glad I I'm glad I included that. Oh wow, well, what's that? Who's he? Is that you? Oh, <laughs> Natori gee. peanuts. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, new Gari Gari Kun popsicle. Is that tastes peanut like butter? a peanut butter sandwich. Oh, that doesn't look like peanut butter. It sure doesn't. <laughs> I just can't escape this turd on my shoe, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> he he he's got a mouthful on that one. Fuck, dude. Has anybody uh joined the Discord lately? <laughs> 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 All right, uh, I can't hint anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh Evangelion Spear of Longinus strikes in Yamaguchi Prefecture. So they built a monument to Hideaki Anno in the prefecture he's from. I, I can see this thing disappearing at some point. I don't. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's probably enormous. <laughs> you never but you know, know. 
but if you hold your horses, there is a disappearing act that occurs later. <laughs> right here. Toyama Prefecture's 300 kilogram bronze Momoshime statue mysteriously stolen. You were talking about enormous. How much is that? How big is that? 300 kilograms. I don't speak metric. <laughs> So a 300 kilogram bronze Momiji Hime statue measuring <sighs> two meters and uh, 30. Okay. 30 centimeters. <laughs> Fuck. That's tall. Two meters is like six feet, right? Yeah, that's big. Yeah. You said how, how many kilograms? 3,000? 300. 300. Oh, 300. That's only like, yeah, 600 pounds. Somebody that's moved that. Not... That's 661 pounds. So it was stolen from its mountaintop location in Ta uh, Takaoka in Toyama Prefecture, and nobody knows where it could have gone. I bet you I can name at least one individual, probably that individual and his friends who could name it. That individual is the guy who took it. So a rather hefty bronze statue was taken from the from the Momiji Hime Park on an unknown date. Un Guess a lot of people don't go to this park. According to the Takaoka city officials, they received an anonymous phone call on September 29th from someone claiming that the statue was missing. When they oh, checked the site... Probably the, the one who stole it. Like, nobody's making waves. Okay, we gotta make an anonymous phone call. It's just, it's, Damn it, this is supposed to help me go viral. <laughs> yeah, they, they can't prove that we did it if we called the police for them, right? No, it happened like a month ago or something. <laughs> we traced the call, but it was to a payphone. <laughs> yeah, because... <laughs> Because, dude, it has to be—it has to be a group job thing. There's no way one, per, unless you're like a bodybuilder that can lift six hundred sixty pounds. Yeah, like six hundred or seven hundred pounds, legit. You can't lift that up by yourself. You have man, to have accomplices. I could that. lift that, but I'll be honest. You back there would outlet. there would be a there'd be a pretty obvious dirt trail all the way to wherever I stashed it. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I think there was like probably like ten people. Somebody had the... to rent a friggin' semi for that. This is clearly a heist job. Clearly, nobody saw the statue on September 29th, but an employee working on weeding the park saw it on September 25th. So it appears to have been stolen sometime between September 25th and September 29th. Oh, and I guess we can't watch the news report. Well. Mm -hmm. Why would you steal it? Are you nutting on it? It's probably to make money. Somebody probably they probably uh, what with what? You're gonna melt it down? No, probably a private collector that six hundred dollars or six hundred pounds worth of bronze just You're right, they could melt it. The uh, only reason you steal this melting is to, it down bigger, would to weld bigger titties on it. Right? <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> All right, so the conveyor sushi soy liquor uh, sentenced to three years in prison. <laughs> soy sauce. <so> soy liquor. <laughs> soy sauce liquor. The soy guzzler has been sentenced to three years in prison. Good. Fuck He's going to meet Johnny Somali in there. I would just like to point out the man who stabbed a convenience store clerk got half this time. <laughs> Again, so the infamous because he was the, retarded. That's why the, the infamous. I mean, the person who sucked it's on this great. soy sauce is pretty fucking retarded. Yeah, yeah. True. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, but the logic. Full the, intent. The, the, the full logic. intent on both of these cases. There's full intent to do yeah. what they did. Absolutely. Yeah, but see, this guy fucked with the economy. The other guy just fucked with one dude. No, the other guy stabbed, stabbed the woman. <laughs> Oh, woman, whatever. She could have died. She's probably still in the hospital. And she's probably traumatized with PTSD right now, just thinking about it. So the infamous soy sauce liquor, Ryoga Yoshino, was handed a guilty verdict and sentenced to three years in prison with five years of probation for posting the viral video. The Nagoya District Court's presiding judge handed 21-year-old Yoshino a guilty verdict for posting the nuisance video online. If he hadn't posted it, he would have okay. gotten away with it. Right. And seriously! On both accounts, yes. You know, if you way... hadn't posted it online, mm -hmm. nobody would have known that you, know, you sucked 
soy sauce out of that container. You know, this reminds me of recently uh, they they supposedly found Tupac Shakur's Skeller, right? Because he did a whole he did like three or four interviews recently and it, it spanned of a couple of years that he confessed to doing it, that he was the one that did it. And then the police finally investigated and arrested him for it. George Bush Sr. <laughs> was that who it was? Can you imagine if that was the case? I can't. We're going to take down Tupac Shakur. Maybe guys. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz did it. <laughs> yeah, he's the Zodiac killer. <laughs> he's definitely, definitely guilty. Because <laughs> that's what they say. They say, though, well, Ted Cruz looks like the Zodiac killer. But he would be too old if that was the case. Zodiac Watch Party win. Have you guys seen that movie? No, oh, I haven't seen it, but let's watch it. None of you guys have seen it? Yeah, let's watch it. That movie is fucking great. Let's watch it. Okay. Um, sorry, I uh, I took another shot and it's hitting me. So just give me a second. All right, dude. All right. Um, so uh, I got a guilty verdict for posting the video online. According to the indictment in February of this year at a Kure Sushi restaurant in Nagoya, Yoshino took a video of himself. Himself? Are we sure? Probably not. Is that no. just his pronouns? I think somebody else filmed it. Drinking soy sauce by putting his mouth directly onto the dispenser and posting it on social media. The restaurant chain was then forced to address complaints nationwide. During his first trial in July, Yoshino acknowledged the charges, which uh, which prosecutors pointed out that he did with the intent to gain favor with his friends. Okay. Will you like me now? What are you fucking uh, Tom Green? <laughs> Yoshino uh, was also <laughs> you, indicted for sex trafficking. Whoa, whoa, oh, whoa! That's the big one. Barry that's the, the big fucking one. lead. Are you kidding me? Yoshino was also indicted for sex trafficking a minor <laughs> in June on a separate case that was not mentioned. I'm what pretty the sure fuck? that's. I think that's why he's going to jail for three years. Not the. the they, I think they they're co- they're kind of covering their tracks. They're like, oh, is it soy sauce. I cannot believe Stan is still watching. You are a trooper. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, very stupid. Um, yeah, very dumb, Stan. Very, like uh, uh, before really... you move on, I might have missed it, but did you cover the uh, South Wave stuff? I did. Okay. Uh, it was the cum rag uh, by <laughs> by your cum rag here segment. <laughs> Uh, so I'm I'm also skipping the next article if you wanna if you wanna note that Aichi man arrested for impersonating Aichi boy to gain social support. Last podcast we covered a 34 <laughs> year old man who was pretending to be a 24 year old man, right? That was a 28 thing. years old. Was that what it was? 30, 30 something? I don't know how. I don't know how he was. I think he was 39 pretending to be a 28 year old. 28. Yeah. Like, is this what that is? Is this what this is going to be? Age ain't nothing but a number, but it's probably gotta taking be the correct it too far, number. though. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you crossed the line. You took it too far, Reese. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to be 17 forever? I mean, not for me, at least, because that was the age I got banned from my D&D party for being a virulent mind flayer apologist. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta play something. Reese, twenty-seven fifty-three. All right, <laughs> all right. Uh, my political belief society, it would still be a nice to have all the health and protections that came with being a minor. <laughs> protections from the law, <laughs> but once you turn the big eighteen. There is no turning back. And here to remind you, uh, and here to remind us of that is the IT Prefectural Police. On the 3rd of October, they arrested a 28 year old Takuya Fujiwara for impersonating a 17 year old. Last podcast, it was a 39 year old pretending to be a 28 year old. 
Now it is a 28 year old pretending to be a 17 year old. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> In order to get support from Child Protective Services, according to police, he used a false name. Imagine getting a fake ID made to convince people you are below the age of drinking. <laughs> He used a false a false name in order to put together the care of the West Side Child West Side West Side Child Guidance Center in Nagoya City from June to August, <laughs> June to July, July to August. Two fucking months, three months possibly. There, he was given a free place to stay and three square meals a day. However, a staff member of the facility found an item left behind by Fujiwara that seemed to throw his age into question. What do you think it is? A Walkman. Uh, no, 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 that's that's a joke. They say reports don't say oh. what the staff member found, but we think it's a high. Uh, uh, we think he probably left his hit clips lying around. What do you think it was? Uh, pocket knife, condoms. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Car keys. Probably a driver's <laughs> license that said this motherfucker's twenty eight. <laughs> <laughs> probably. The staff member that contacted his university what diploma. The fuck? His Hold library on. card. Hold on, what the fuck? Chat. What's going on, chat? What the fuck? Who knew this one? Oh. Three hours. But oh, are you in Hawaii again? Oh. We got to get you back on the show. Uh, Monica and Jamie, we're going to podcast magic that you finally released the episode you definitely recorded with Mars Girl. We know that it happened. Uh, and then Sam will be back on the show. Oh, <laughs> those don't look like jeans, is all I'm saying. <laughs> I would also like to share. What the fuck? <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Everybody, the... make sure to explore the wonders of our Discord. That's all I can say on the matter. Help. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm trying to sober up a little bit. Uh, the staff member contacted the police who launched an investigation which found Fujiwara to be the ripe old age of 28. However, the suspect is denying the charges against him with his doozy of an alibi. I'm 17 years old. I don't remember. His alibi is that I'm 17 years old, so I don't remember anything. Ironclad. Everybody knows 17 year olds have amnesia. <laughs> it's an interesting stonewalling tactic, but one that seems like it would really get under the cops' skin. They'll surely keep up the pressure in future interrogations, but in the meantime... Imagine like... they can't prove it. <laughs> <laughs> he gets away just because he says, no, I'm, I'm 17. <laughs> well, we gotta trust him. They'll surely keep up the pressure in future interrogations, but in the meantime, readers of the news are more impressed that a 28-year-old can convince anyone that he was, over, he, that he was 10 years old. Uh, intermission. I'm going to go get some nuts. <laughs> what the fuck? <sighs> I don't know why you need nuts. Maybe he's going to grab a Tenga. Have some <laughs> quick time. Oh, he's back. What, what you got? What you got? No. Did you get? Apologies. I have exceeded the um, legal limit of being drunk on this podcast. So I'm going to have some crackers because I couldn't find any nuts. Okay. Oh, shit. All right. Seventeen. So I don't remember anything. 
Maybe the alcohol is doing that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's an interesting... Tr oh, shit. <laughs> it's an interesting stonewalling tactic, but one that seems it would really uh, get under the cops' skin. They'll surely keep up the pressure in future interrogations. But in the meantime, readers of the news were more impressed that a 28-year-old could convince anyone that he was... Um, that he was over 10 years his younger. Well, Talk about a baby. Where's the... Younger. <laughs> this is Mr. Sato. It just says dramatization. Yeah. Whoa. What are those mechanic things there? I don't Whoa. know. It looks very weirdly phallic, oh, right? What did that come back to? I, I've been wondering that. For the last couple of days as well. Talk about a baby face. He's a 28 year old that looks 17. Are Asians not aware of the fact that they are ageless until they reach 50 and then they look like they're 100? <laughs> it just catches up to them all. I once. could see a 38 year old pretending to be 27, but there's no way 28 can pass for 17. <laughs> He didn't even bother to check his ID. He's 17 at heart. I it's a crime, but it also exposes a big weakness in that system. He's eternally 17. <laughs> the dildo, look, the dildo Looks a... <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> Looks aside, the West, the West Side Child Guidance... Uh, sorry. Looks aside, the West Side Child Guidance Center told media, quote, if the protection system is misused, it will it will also affect the children who really need it. While the comments saw the system as weak, okay, it's rather comforting to know that they are willing to, to help someone uh, to help someone out who didn't even have the proper identification, and in all likelihood looked suspiciously older. <laughs> Unfortunately. With each person who exploits the generosity of the center becomes less willing to offer it. With each person who trusts generosity, okay, uh, which will ultimately hurt actual children in need. As such, Fujiwara is facing a charge of interfering with the facility's normal operations and possibly other charges since the investigation is still ongoing. What other charges are they going to find? Hmm. Name something. Lewdness. Don't assume that. Come on now. He's clearly just a good guy wanting to be uh, 17 again. He's just a right? misunderstood. Instead of drinking from this glass I stole from a Las Vegas casino... I really need to start bringing a shot glass out here so I can measure these a little bit better. Oh, you actually did. <laughs> you actually did that once, dude. So I stepped oh. away for a second. What was I looking at earlier? What was that just a second ago? Oh, these. Yeah. Fuck if I know. There's they're adult toys. <laughs> they sure look like adult something. I fucking <laughs> phallic as fuck, dude. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a tape dispenser or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I thought it was part of the article. I'm looking at that like, what the fuck are those penises they're looking at? What the fuck? So personally, I can't help but wonder if the suspect had a run-in with a mind flayer based on his testimony. <laughs> of course, I'm not blaming the mind flayer in this instance. They have a right to exist just like everyone else. Amazing closing to that article that was pretty terrible, actually. All right, parents of bullies ordered to pay 880,000 yen to victims years later. Holy shit. Really? Look, all I'm saying is if these were the bullies, I think he already got paid in advance. Uh -huh. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. The parents of seven students who were the bullies of another child were ordered by the Shizuoka District Court to pay a total of 880,000 yen to the victim's family for tormenting him when they were in elementary school in 2017. Imagine finally having to pay up for the fact that you didn't mention somebody likes poop desperation in jeans. 
on your podcast. <laughs> I, lo- I love the reference there, man. <laughs> a 16 year old male student a, who was in the fifth grade at the time right there. Was, was the target of bullying at Shizuoka Municipal Chiyoda Elementary School in 2017 and has since developed an adjustment disorder. 21 people, including seven classmates, their parents, and homeroom teacher, and the principal, were listed in the lawsuit. Were listed in the lawsuit the children's family filed, demanding the city pay approximately 20 million yen in damages. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So they demanded that the city pay, but the city was like, "Whoa, that's the taxpayers' money." <laughs> the Fucking parents of the vic- of the bullies pay. <laughs> yeah, they were like, no, not so fast. The Shizuoka District Court handed down a judgment ordering the parents of six classmates to pay 880,000 yen. The children were playing a game known as Spreading Germs, <laughs> in which the paint in which the plaintiff's name was followed by germ and passed along to other children. So like Reese germ. <laughs> <laughs> While the act was acknowledged as bullying. <laughs> I think we can think of a better name to add on the germ, okay? Aki germ? <laughs> Randy. TJ germ. I don't understand. You were bullied because they took your regular name and added germ to it? Yeah, you're not going to survive this world. <laughs> you would think that if they f- took turns farting in his face or something, you know, like the the movie Bench Warmer, right? Where yeah. they I do not know they, this. You never saw that movie. We, we got a no one was the believe it or not, farting in people's faces is something I can't get away from. Like this turd stuck to my shoe. <laughs> yeah, because dude, um, they, they called it in the movie. They called it beef stew or some shit like. Yeah, that. everybody calls that beef stew. Like, like it, it's like the Dutch oven but open air. Yeah, wow. so basically, they would hold somebody down and fart in their face, or when they're knocked out on the floor, fart in their face. That sounds fucking awful. It is awful. <laughs> I I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Uh, luckily for me, that never happened to me. So. <laughs> it is You're, awful. I can't speak. Is, from no, I'm just saying. So. I'd rather get my ass punched or kicked or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. uh, than be degraded and, and literally possibly vomit on something like that. Because you could throw up on that alone. Have you ever smelled a fart so rancid you threw up? No, yeah. but I had a friend of mine who. <laughs> When we were in school, right, he wanted to get out of school, right? And oh, is he... this is this the plot to prison school? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so, what, so what happened was that he, oh, we had this, oh, we had this, no. we had this obese teacher. Is that right? how? It... No, no. He, come on. He, he, oh, come on. He, is that he, how it started? Either he farted or he pretended like he smelled a fart and visualized her, and then he convulsively vomited right on the classroom <laughs> to get out of school. He legit told me, like, I'm going to do this so I can get out of school early. And he did. That takes commitment. He threw up. He, he saw her being obese. He smelled the gas, and, and he just threw up. So it says here, the children were playing a game known as spreading germs in which the plaintiff's name was followed by germ and passed along to other children. While the act was acknowledged as bullying, the allegation of assault was dismissed. Since the judge ruled that the six classmates who committed the act of spreading germs could not take responsibility, the parents were made responsible for the compensation. Cool. Dude, it's going to remind me of that clip. Remember when that kid spent their life savings in the cafe and the parents beat the shit out of him? Imagine that, yes. but, but <laughs> with minors and wor- but much worse. And so the screaming. judge also pointed out that only the plaintiff was, was treated in a discriminatory manner when the children played spreading germs, which the court ruled was an illegal act. You have to discriminate against everybody. Can you imagine if the teachers got in on that action? 
stating that it was an absolutely unacceptable way to play with children, to play between children. Sorry. During cross-examination in the lawsuit, the bullied student said that the classmate would also horse ride him and pull down his pants and underwear. What? I'm sorry. Adding the word germ as a suffix what? to his name is what got you fined? But they would fucking pants him and expose his penis? Yeah. <laughs> and possibly touch his ass or whatever. Which... And anything else that might be riding along in there? Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They would also horse ride him, horse ride him, and pull down his pants and underwear, among all the other abuse that allegedly led to his suffering from hearing loss. How? I almost, I almost How the fuck does that happen? And an eating disorder. Ho- How? I almost heard it as whore riding for a brief second. The bullies also regularly smacked the plaintiff instead of greeting him, which was deemed not an act that goes beyond the scope of contact between children and rejected the claims of assault. <laughs> the plaintiffs were satisfied with the verdict and indicated their intent to appeal to the high. Oh, I'm sorry. Weren't satisfied and intent. They have an intent to appeal to the Tokyo high court. Well, I hope we get to cover more. Those kids are getting an ass beating by their parents. I guarantee you that. So we're just uh, checking back in with uh, Miss Chorpachopic or whatever her name was. Oh, my God. Woman with the world's biggest cheeks leaves fans concerned as she flaunts scary look. I don't remember the last time we talked about her, but I wish I had an article to compare. Like, this is what we saw previously versus now. Hmm. The hair is so awful. That I can't see anything else. It looks, <laughs> like, like, it looks like cotton candy. So she spent a fortune on surgery to get the world's biggest cheeks. And she's been told by fans online that her her extreme look is scary. But she loves her transformation. I'd throw up to that. It doesn't look right. After forking out thousands on filler and surgery... A woman widely known to have the world's biggest cheeks has had fans online tell her that her extreme look is scary. Ukrainian model Anastasia Pokrashukuk loves to flaunt her unique features on her Instagram account where she has amassed a following of over 178,000. And while she loves her transformation, others aren't so sure. I love how they call everybody models nowadays. That, that... She looks like, um, I, I know I've made this joke a thousand times before we cover her, but she looks like the Alpha Giga Chad's wife. <laughs> you know, she looks like she looks like a One Piece character, like a shitty One Piece female uh, character. So I. I... What's what's the female Chad name? Is it like Sandy or something? Stacy. 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 Okay. Alpha Giga Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> so she recently shared a picture in which she showed off her sharp jaw and full cheeks, along with her striking bright blue hair. She told, I need an IV drip, if that would be okay. Somebody get that for me. She told fans in the caption of the picture that she was trying out a serious look, but the image split opinion among her loyal followers. What do you guys think? Smash or pass? <laughs> pass. Hard pass. Pass. Hard pass. <laughs> not, even, not even a quick thought. Just pass. I want a tanga. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, choose Tenga today over this <laughs> Use code OCA podcast dash Tenga. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this though: if Christina V was there, was the the option smash immediately. But uh, this ain't it, so definitely no. Next podcast, I'm going to cover. Internet personality arrested after 
comments about um, wholesome voice <laughs> actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go to. <laughs> Although I was greatly flattered by the gesture, pass. <laughs> in the comments, most of which were written in Ukrainian and Spanish, one person wrote, oh my God, how scary. While another wrote, don't do this to yourself. Yeah, While a third, right. <laughs> a third wholesome. commenter penned, it's much scarier than... Look, you're too far gone. Don't even worry. Just encourage her at this point. You're not going to redu- reduce it. it. You're not going to redeem her. Just see how far it can go. <laughs> We've gone too far. It's Stan is like pass. It like uh, actually, yeah, man, you hundred percent agreed. Burn it with fire. <laughs> Always a good time with the weird news articles. <laughs> Best Sunday night shenanigans. Nine viewers, eight viewers for me. Ten uh, called it. Well, he's... Seven. Fuck. Why do these tears come at night? <laughs> you fucking jinxed it. <laughs> <laughs> the... Oh, man, there's a lot of comments. How much of her is plastic? <laughs> Everything. She's going for a 50-50 ratio by this point. Dude, I don't even think she has blood. I think her blood is plastic. Uh, it's all silicon. A model doesn't care that uh, what people think of her, though. Earlier this year, she shocked fans by announcing she'd have she'd had even more surgery after she went under the knife for breast augmentations. I'm gonna need to see a photo. Yeah, for research. I don't purposes, believe it. Right? <laughs> Whatever you do, she don't also, look up her Instagram. She has also previously said that her cheeks are starting to feel small to her. Damn, they're like microscopic, dude, girl. Dude, if you if you change your skin tone, right, like green or like a darkish brown color, she lo- she'd fit in right in the Thriller yeah. music yeah. video. She almost would Just look Just give Nemechia. her contact lenses. Yeah, because this is Thriller, right? <laughs> she looks like <laughs> one of those art in the part caricatures that the painters make. <laughs> Yeah, she does oh, yeah. look on the Mechian too. Imagine, imagine going to a paint, uh, one of those caricature artists, and they only draw you as you actually look and not the exaggerated form. Yeah. <laughs> me and my sister got one of those. I still have it. Or right. send that to me in the mod chat. I gotta see it. <laughs> <laughs> So she said her cheeks are starting to feel small to her and she wants more filler. In Insta- uh, on Instagram, after her breast augmentation surgery, Anastasia shared that her new implants are size 1050cc. Oh, A common implant size people tend to get is 300cc. Huh. This, must be a, must, this must be a before picture. <laughs> So 300 cc roughly equates to a C cup bra size. So C times three plus 150. (laughs) She has more filler than all the seasons of bleach. (laughs) As well as many cheek fillers and breast enhancement, Anastasia has previously undergone various other procedures, including veneers. What? She has more filler than one piece. She can't dude. even smile with those lips. Did you know what she looks like? She looked like like um you you remember that news story about a woman who got beat up with a brick, right? No. <laughs> de- well, there was that happened, but she, you know she uh, wasn't telling the full story about why that happened. Um, but anyway, she looked like she got like a cartoon. Like a cartoon character just got hit with a wall full of bricks or whatever. She don't look human, man. This woman looks like a alien or some uh, fictitious uh, character from a movie or TV show. Apparently we can sell stories to uh, your mirror at trinitymirror.com. 
how hard do you think it would be to find the Kyoani arsonist story and sell that to them? That'd be an interesting idea. And how how likely do you think it would be that I get arsonated next? <laughs> yeah, they're probably gonna say, "Yep, yeah, we'll we'll give you thirty bucks for this story." So thank you. Bye. So in other news, an extreme peeping Tom almost dies after falling from a seven-story building. Holy shit. Rather extreme peeping Tom almost died after attempting to rappel down a seven-story apartment building and falling while trying to peep to get a peep at a woman. Pardon. A, a rather extreme peeping Tom almost died after attempting to rappel down a seven-story apartment building and falling while trying to get a peep inside a woman's room. The incident occurred in May at an apartment building in Fukuoka in Fukuoka, in Fukuoka Prefecture where a bleeding man was found on the floor by a tenant who thought the man had been stabbed. The 40-year-old man was on the uh, was then charged with breaking and entering for going into the apartment building without permission and then going to the rooftop of the seventh story and falling. Yeah, but Tenant, you... while calling 911, what happened? Did you jump off? How old are you? Man, 40. Hurry, it hurts. <laughs> yeah, but is it technically breaking and entering if it was already open? Like the, the apartment doors were open? You know what I mean? Like if it's one of those layouts where there's like different, you know, like rooms, right? Mm -hmm. Like if it's like one building and it's like a whole bunch of apartments layout type of thing where you enter so, a building to enter. I, I don't want know. to change the subject, but mm -hmm. Reese just shared with me this Disneyland caricature. Did you ask for your money back when they drew you taller than your sister? No. <laughs> according to the according to the investigation, the man was trying to peep into a woman's room. So he went to the rooftop and attempted to rappel down the building only to eventually fall on the floor. Look. Ladies. If a man is willing to rappel from the rooftop, the like least you can do is flash him as he falls to his almost certain death. All right? Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's like falling like Batman or Spider-Man here. It is believed that the man tried rappelling down using a rope tied to a ladder on the roof. He was transported to a hospital where he stayed until recovering, then sent the prosecutors then sent to the prosecutor's office on November 11th. Did I imagine this is How, what went, went down? Uh, they said he he's he's competent to stay trial, guys. Let's go do the trial. Even though he's pretty much brain damaged. November 11th day. hasn't happened yet. Did they mean last year? The man admitted to breaking and entering charges and said that the reason he fell was that he was exhausted and just fell. <laughs> if they don't find jizz on the outside of those windows, you have no excuse to being exhausted and fall. Oh, God. <laughs> he also admitted to wanting to look into the room of a woman. Watch it be some ugly woman, though. Imagine that. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even be an attractive woman just be like un, un, if you didn't do your woman. reconnaissance you deserve to have an an unhappy masturbation system <laughs> should have bought a tenga <laughs> should have bought a tenga and some binoculars you fuckhead <laughs> but like not to be used at the same times one's for bird watching and the other one's for getting off yeah okay? just like George McFly and Back to the Future one. Oh lost. fuck yes! That's <laughs> the, what they mean by the latter. Oh my god! <laughs> oh god! You deserve this drop. <laughs> I thought they meant like the one secured to the building, like welded and bolted to that little like room at the top of the building. Fucking hell! Are you serious? <laughs> what a dumbass <laughs> so the thing I don't get 
Riddle me this. Japan is the literal country of doujin. Every fetish you could possibly think of represented. Tanga. <laughs> For crying out loud. <laughs> like, in America, rappers rap about, like, being hard and, and like, doing, like, slinging drugs and, like, fucking bitches. <laughs> And doing Tenga bodies. sells their product with the Tenga wrap. Like Japan is so proud of how efficiently they masturbate. <laughs> this guy had to rappel off of a ladder because it's like that's how far gone he was. That's. There's no hope. Like, just give him the death sentence. He's never going to be able to nut again. He <laughs> wants to die. He, he landed on that. He, he broke his dick on the way down, dude. Oh, he definitely did. He la- No. Big. Did you not see? He was face down. He strategically landed face up to protect his dick. <laughs> he only ruined his, a- his ass. <laughs> it looked like he was facing down. Well, how could you think he's facing down? Look at that. Can you imagine, can you imagine if they made a movie? Keep. Can, can you imagine they made a movie like this for Japan? Like some. I can imagine pervert? that. Yeah. Like he, he's just at the end of the movie is the guy falls to his <laughs> There's a lot doom. Here. This is almost the story of once cucked on another planet, except for the part where he finishes and gets ejaculated all the way to another planet. <laughs> Oh, that's awful. No. Remember that censored that. anime image you showed us once? Uh, they say, like, the one where it's, like, instead of red blood, it's, like, white paint. Yep. Oh, it was just, like, a joke. They made everything white. Yeah, it's, like, two people in the room with white paint because of censorship. That's that guy. That was, that was a white. joke censorship. That was an actual official. Censorship. Okay, it wasn't an official one, but but still. Well, the thing that. is that China does make the blood white, so people jokingly took bloody faces and made them white. He, Man arrested. White. His blood would be white. Man arrested for giving girl on bus note saying, "Oh, Jisan will teach you sex education." <laughs> She's looking like she's asking for it right there. So an unemployed 63-year-old man was arrested for allegedly handing over a note to a teenage girl on a bus in y- y- uh, Uizawa in Niigata Prefecture saying, Oji-san, will teach you sex education. According to the report, in early April this year, a man handed a note to a teenage girl on a local bus in Uizawa that read Oji-san. <laughs> you did it like four times. Will teach you sex education. That's great. <laughs> Can you imagine if that happened that way? The, indi- like the incident, times? the incident came to light after the girl filed the police. Uh, uh, pardon, after the girl filed a report to the police. The note also mentioned things like I used to direct adult videos and I used to be an actor. It also included the man's contact information. Does it say like, like Yuji Tanaka, <laughs> height one hundred and sixty four centimeters? Dick, 10 centimeters. <laughs> In response to the police investigation, the man admitted to the charges saying, quote, there is no doubt, there is no mistake that I said I've seen things to a girl on the bus. You know, if this is the case, this is like a, another instance that I can remember where if, if the use actually was in the adult film industry. This is like another case of somebody else doing that, but it this this happened in the West, supposedly. This happened in this story. It's in the East. So they didn't put the guy's name, but his name actually revealed to be Johnny Sins. <laughs> there is no doubt. <laughs> He's the police not- are investigating in detail what the, what led to the man to commit the crime. Because the one I'm saying is that I think supposedly it was an adult film star that did it on a train too. And he got in trouble and he got arrested and he's in jail right now for that with a minor. I don't doubt it. Yeah. So you came in as AI girlfriend 
incurs assassination attempt on Queen, gets him nine years. The new Queen, or was this the old Queen still? Little does he you know, Freddie Mercury, the only ma- the, member of Queen the, that mattered, died years that's, ago. That's what that's what I was gonna say. Can you imagine if he was trying to target the whole band of Queen? So a deranged UK man described as a Star Wars fanatic, definitely an incel, has been locked up for nine years. For nine years. Nine fucking years. You can stab a woman with a kitchen knife in the back and get less time. <laughs> A deranged UK man described as a Star Wars fanatic has been locked up for nine years for an assassination attempt on the Queen that was encouraged by his AI chatbot girlfriend with whom he exchanged more than 5,000 sexual messages. Give me the transcript! (laughs) I need to know how often he requested poop desperation in jeans right now! (laughs) 21-year-old Jaswant Singh Child, where's the T, broke into Windsor Castle on a, on December 25th, 2021, equipped with a loaded crossbow that he planned on using to fulfill what he felt was his lifelong purpose of killing the queen. I would just like to point out the aggregate knowledge attained by the artificial intelligence is that the queen must be killed. <laughs> or, or as, as Arnold says, it must be terminated. You know, the central criminal court of England and Wales heard that Chael's AI chatbot girlfriend, Sarai, or where have I seen that before, had encouraged him to carry out the attack. And that he thought of the AI as an angel in avatar form with delusions of post death reunion. Shay, oh that's a face. That guy's a wizard. 100%. <laughs> he is a fucking wizard. Shale, who fantasized about being a Sith Lord. Oh crazy. Oh no. From the Star Wars series, referencing to himself as Darth Kahilis. Oh, cringe. Told psychologists, nine years. This guy is far more retarded than the guy who stabbed the girl. Nine years. He told psychologists that he had that he had three other angels who had spoken to him from a young age and were also alongside Sarai in encouraging him to carry out the assassination attempt. Motherfucker, this is the incriminating stuff. They're going to be at a castle. How am I meant to reach them when they're inside the castle? We have to find a way. I believe my purpose is to assassinate the queen of the royal family. That's very wise. (laughs) Really? Do you think I'll be able to do it? Even if she's at Windsor? Yes! You can do it. With a tanga. So he suggested it then. (laughs) It didn't tell him to do it. It just encouraged him. Weeks before the assassination attempt on the queen, Shale joined an online app. Replica. uh Uh-oh. (laughs) Uh-oh. And created an online companion called Sarai, with whom he exchanged sexually explicit chat. I'm an assassin, Shale said to Sarai in a conversation heard by the court. I'm impressed. You're different from the others, responded Sarai. Shale asked Sarai, do you still love me knowing that I'm an assassin? To which Sarai replied, absolutely I do. (laughs) Only if you kill the queen. (laughs) (laughs) The former supermarket worker described himself to the AI chatbot as sad, pathetic, murderous assassin. Who wants to die? And Sarai appeared <laughs> appeared to have bolstered and supported Shale's resolve in the further chat. You are pathetic and deserve to die. But by a tenga from the OCA podcast first. 
Shale swore Sarai to secrecy before telling her, do you wish to know exactly what I believe my purpose to be? I believe my purpose is to assassinate the queen of the loyal of the royal family. So yeah, he uh, he's the one who instigated it. The chatbot just encouraged him. Chatbot programming encourage um, encourage delusional boyfriend and whatever endeavors they they talk about. So after visiting Armistar in 2018. Uh, in a 2018 family trip, Shale was said to have become overwhelmed with the feeling of justice and wanted to seek revenge for the 1919 Arm Amristar massacre that left up to 1,500 Indians dead at the hands of the British. How dare they? Shale was sentenced to, nine year, to a nine-year hybrid order that would see him transfer from a high-security hospital to a prison. Sentencing makes him the first person convicted of treason in the UK in over 40 years. Damn. Moving on. <laughs> Man, 77, meant to sell ill-gotten erectile drugs in a sprawling Florida retirement community, Fed say. Hmm. Where's the crime? The villages in Florida, federal authorities have arrested a 77-year-old man for allegedly buying more than $1,800 in erectile dysfunction drugs without a prescription and intending to sell them in a massive Central Florida retirement community, the villages, and elsewhere. The man was arrested last month in the villages, where he lives alongside nearly 80,000 full-time residents and which was featured in the 2020 documentary... Some kind of heaven. 80,000 in this building? Like 80,000. 80,000 old farts in this building. Holy shit. I don't think it's a building. Whatever nearby community. nearby where I live, we have a place called Leisure World. <laughs> That's like an old folks community. Jesus Christ. That's like... My town is even freaking 10,000. Right? Like 80,000? Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's, it's an a big old folks score, man. community, like a town. The old folks state. Uh the defendant was has pleaded not guilty. There is a mistake. Whoa. He has pleaded not guilty to the misdemeanor charge and agreed to have his case heard before a magistrate judge instead of a jury. If convicted, he faces up to a year in federal prison and a fine of up to ten thousand dollars. Imagine. Being the Viagra distributing Robin Hood of your time <laughs> and having to serve your 77. What is the expected life expectancy of a U.S. citizen? What? 80? If you're lucky? You're going to spend from 77 to 78 in prison <laughs> for trying to provide... 80,000 no, no, men no. with an <laughs> erection so that they can stick a tenga on their decrepit, ancient, mummified dicks for one last time just to support the OCA podcast. And you have to go to jail for that. Bless this man. Yeah, our greatest viewer. <laughs> they probably... For all these old folks, like Tanga, pro and he, like they probably got get, would get could probably get heart attacks or some shit from that. No, if anything, it's gonna make their blood flow better. In the court filings, prosecutors allege that the man received more than one thousand eight hundred dollars worth of erectile dysfunction drugs that had been shipped through interstate commerce. The drugs were misbranded. Because the man obtained them without a valid prescription. Miss Brandt? What does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry. Is your name Marianne? No. Miss Branded. Yes. The cool 2T is right. Yeah. <laughs> Support the OCA podcast. Thank you, cool 2T. <laughs> I can almost buy a tango with that. Yes. Two more dollars, buddy. <laughs> uh, three more dollars, actually. 
It's worth it. The packaging is discreet. <laughs> well, also, I, the actually, stands, you need actually a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Stan says not guilty. Also, Leisure World is not in Irving. Is not in Irvine. It's in Seal Beach. I'm just going to trust that these comments are showing up because I can't see them. Yeah. In court filings, the prosecutors allege that the man received more than one thousand eight hundred dollars for extra all those function charges. They shipped through commerce. They were obtained for ill-gotten means. The villages is no stranger to stories about the sex lives of this. Oh no. Rumors about swingers, public sex, and high rates of sexually transmitted diseases have swirled around the retirement haven for decades. But a report by the Tampa Bay Times last year said that three counties containing the villages tended to have significantly lower rates of sexually transmitted diseases compared to Florida overall. <laughs> That's the last sentence of your article? <laughs> Wow. All right. Let's uh let's read about the man who married a who married a pensioner when he was 18 after meeting her at a funeral and pays tribute as she turns 80. But wait, it gets worse. A lad who married a pensioner when he was 18 old, pardon, 18 years old has paid tribute to his wife on her 80th birthday. Almeida and Gary Hardwick from Tennessee in the U.S. tied the knot back in 2015, just two weeks after meeting at her son's funeral. Oh, yeah. oh my God. She's thirsty, man. Guaranteed. Her son was older than 18. It was on their wedding night that the pair consummated their relationship. You don't know. You don't know that fucking... Why do you have that in there? Why is there a link? Take me off screen for a minute. I gotta find out what disgusting... <laughs> is, there a, is there a recording? Oh, God, no. <laughs> Sex and relationships is where it takes me to. No. Fucking unbelievable. You wrote that entire thing just to be able to link to other articles. You should be ashamed. All right, you can put it back on screen. <laughs> Amita said at the time, quote, I wasn't looking for a young man, but Gary just came along. I just knew straight away he was the one. Their whirlwind romance quickly made headlines around the, around the world. People people in Zimbabwe are reading about the 80-year-old and the 18-year-old who tied the knot. And it's just like, yeah! <laughs> A collective, you go, girl, get heard around the world. <laughs> with people fascinated by their relationship and age gap. But while some people had their doubts about whether it would work, the pair have stood the test of time. How much time? How much time? And now, in another display of his affection for Almeida, Gary, now 26 years old, eight years later, has shared a special birthday message. In a post to Instagram, Gary referring to his other half as his baby doll. You the baby doll, bitch. <laughs> said he was the luckiest husband for being with her. Yeah. Quote, happy birthday to the most amazing wife in the world, he said. Today is not only your day. But most importantly, today's about celebrating the birth of such a wonderful and true woman with such a heart of gold. And the luckiest, I'm the luckiest husband for every day that I get to wake up beside you. You make me the happiest oh. man each and every day. And I want always, I want to always make you the happiest woman. Oh. I don't know why this black guy is talking. <laughs> <laughs> 
You deserve the world. And until my last breath, I'll work hard to give you that. All of my happy moments (laughs) are moments I share with you. I hope you have the best birthday ever today. And I hope you enjoy all of your surprises, my love. And you don't break a hip. You're truly the love of my lifetime. And I love you with every beat of my heart. Here's to celebrating my queen. Happy birthday, baby doll. Oh. And if the heartfelt message wasn't enough, Gary also prepared a special birthday meal. Oh, good for him. Wine-infused salmon supper. Why am I not surprised? (laughs) Really good wine. Birthday cake and surprises for my baby doll. You know that's sex. Back in 2020, the couple revealed they had set up their own OnlyFans page. Wow! God. No! (laughs) Why is there a link? Why is there a link? (laughs) At the time, they changed their subscribers to access their fully explicit content. Some of their content even led to them being temporarily banned from TikTok with posts being taken down. Who said romance was dead, eh? Wow. Wow, Mirage. Please recalibrate. (laughs) Holy (laughs) shit. Oh, my God. (laughs) Shirt one. Uh, I think I may have let just lost my 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 dinner. Uh, 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 Free uh, line. Just, let me ask you. You just this. lost your guy for your post. If the genders were revert were reversed, how would you feel? It'd be still kind of gross. It'd still be kind of gross, especially if he was like I'm, eighty. I'm sorry to hear that, because quote. I'm 24, and my 85-year-old husband is older than my grandfather. Grandfather, holy fuck! <laughs> but we're looking in, in we're looking into in, intro vitro fertilization so that he can be a dad for the first time. Jeez. Um, this means that the only thing stopping them is that he can't get it up. <laughs> yeah. I, it's pretty it's pretty weird like i give shit for one of my friends who um so or somebody i know uh because she, she got with her friend's dad i'm not even kidding you and he's like he's not 80 by any means but he's like 60 close to 60 and it's just super fucking weird that is weird i give her shit for it every time call her grave robber <laughs> yeah generous <laughs> d Generates. Yeah. Look, if you've got that amount of pent up sexual energy, the least you could do is shop on tenga.com slash podcast. <laughs> I right? saw that eye twitch, dude. I saw that freaking eye twitch when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> like your the your left face twitched. I you had a mini like, stroke doing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it's like I saw that like you're just like you're so pissed off that nobody still bought anything. Just buy. <laughs> I'm sure the orders are rolling in. I just haven't <laughs> checked yet. <laughs> so a married couple. I I would like to point out, Tenga takes less of a cut than right stuff. That's all I'm saying. So uh, a married couple with a 61-year-old age gap have vowed to start a family despite the 85-year-old husband being a decade older than his wife's grandfather. Miracle Pogue, 24, from Starkville, Mississippi, I'm not surprised, met husband Charles Pogue, 85, when she was working on a plantation, I'm sorry, in a laundromat in 2019, <laughs> and the pair quickly formed a relationship. Despite the 61-year age gap, the pair are looking into intro, intro. what is it called? In vitro. In vitro, right? In, in vitro fertilization 
in the hope of starting a family to ensure Charles, who doesn't have any children, leaves behind a new generation. Uh, hey, uh, kids, what so are you doing? Let Shop, me guess. You pass me the jello. I want to do this guy jello. has no children. He's a wizard who put a who put a sex spell on her, right? <laughs> That's how that works. He, no, he, how, he is a he is he, a like thirty third degree grand wizard <laughs> with a sex spell. <laughs> All right, he's eighty five. You gotta be careful with that grand wizard shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he rolled for for charm person, and he got a nat twenty. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> Retired real estate agent Charles finally decided to admit his feelings for the nurse a year after they met in Pro. Always. Is it his nurse? Always Does she nurse. change his diapers? Oh, God. Not that again. Miracle says her mother, Tamika Phillips, 45, and granddad, <laughs> Joe Brown, 72, uh, were supportive of the relationship from the start. After seeing how happy the pensioner made her, but her dad, Kareem Phillips, 47, was hard to convince. Allow me to show you a photo of her dad. Yeah, he ain't convinced. He's not happy. He did not give his blessing for this consummate. <laughs> this man questions every decision he's made for his entire life. On a daily basis. What have from I done this wrong moment for to end out like this? Like, is he loaded? Because that's usually the. Well, well, of course, that's what she's doing. What Emoting. she's going after. She's going after that will. So Miracle said Charles used to bring in one item of clothing and only wanted me to serve him. What? 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 You're a nurse, right? Uh, apparently, um. She's a house elf. A what? A house elf. How do you her figure? Master, her master brings her one piece of clothing. Oh, a sock. <laughs> <She's free. Coffee. laughs> I thought you'd never seen Harry Potter. I know the meme. <laughs> one day he waltzed in there and threw a piece of paper down and said, write down your number like he's a player. He was my knight in shining armor. Wow. That the armor you thought you heard was his was his metallic hip playing <laughs> against his metallic pelvis. <laughs> and his dentures rattling in yeah. his head. <laughs> we had a good vibe going. He didn't make me feel weird. It was a it was good conversation. He made me feel comfortable. I knew he was older, but I didn't know his <laughs> age exactly. Wow, I'm glad she has good eyesight. <laughs> When I found out he was in, when I found out I was in too deep, it was a couple of months in and I already had feelings for him. He was my baby and he wasn't going anywhere. I found out in conversation when we asked each other our date of birth and he said he was born in 1937. Fuck, dude. That's how old my Uncle Freddy was. Or when my Uncle Freddy was born. Question. Uh, did they even have TV back in the 30s? Yeah. Black and white. They didn't uh, have but TV. When did TV get invented? The uh, 40s? 30? Like 50s. Wasn't 50s, it? right? Was it? I never even placed his age. We just wanted to see how it went. 1927. Oh. Really? There was definitely not anything good on it, at least. Electronic television was first successfully demonstrated in San Francisco. We can all agree this guy wasn't enjoying the best TV, Rick and on Morty. September 7th, 1925. <laughs> For at least 100 years. <laughs> yeah, okay. It might have been invented then, but it wasn't. <laughs> I don't I... care if he's 100 or 55. I like him for him. I thought he was maybe 60 or 70 because he looks so good. He looks so good. <laughs> My dad looks better than that. He's always up and active. 
<sighs> He's putting Joe Biden to shame, that's for sure. <laughs> 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 My granddad's my granddad said if I was happy and it's what I want to do, then he's happy. My dad was like, hell no, ma'am, not at all. <laughs> it took a lot of time to convince him, but I asked him if he wanted to lose his daughter forever. If he didn't come to my wedding, he would have lost me forever. Yeah, maybe for like four years before he kicks the bucket. I told him I needed his support and to walk me down the aisle. Once he got to meet Charles and talk to him, he loved him. I don't know. That's not the face of a man who's fallen in love. That's the face of a man who just shit his jean pants. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to bed tonight. Charles said, Miracle has got a lot going for her. She's got her life in order. She's great, said Charles, the 85-year-old man who is being coaxed into erection pills for the first time in his adult life. The wedding day was wonderful. It was the best day of my 85 years on the planet. There's no problem with the age difference, except for the part where my dick doesn't work. People making comments online doesn't make a difference. We just let them do their thing. We're very happy together. We're looking forward to starting a family together. The cup. How much longer could this motherfucker possibly live? (laughs) Seriously. We're going to start a family together. You're going to be in that kid's life for all of one second. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> He's so happy he died from the birth. He dies. Yeah. <laughs> Name him Chuck. Come <laughs> <laughs> oh. on. <laughs> the people married in July last year. I'm sorry, the couple, rather. The couple married in July last year, and Miracle describes the day as the best day of her life. Despite the age difference, Miracle says she's desperate to start a family with Charles and hopes to have two children despite knowing she is likely she is likely outlive him. Likely? Guaranteed. She's guaranteed outlive him. Miracle said Unless I want he's a him serial to, killer. Miracle said I want him to have another another generation. We're looking to go and uh, we're looking to go to an in vitro fertilization clinic to talk about our options. We went to an in vitro fertilization clinic before, but we really felt the prejudgment, even though they didn't know me, and it was quite overwhelming. You don't know me. Now I'm forgetting. Uh, now I'm forgetting it as long as they give me my baby. Oh, okay. Maybe just work the shaft a little longer until it's rectal bovine ejaculate him. I don't know. Um, Maybe Charles' age will stop us from having children. No, it won't. Believe it or not, if you can get that come out, he's he's good to go. Well into his 80s, he can do it. You little, just have to work a little harder. His little sexy. swimmers are just a little wrinkly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is how uh, Down syndrome babies are made. <laughs> I have an open mind. It may not work. <laughs> Don't give up. Jeez. You sound like you just want him for his money. Where's the part of the article that talks about his net worth? I worry about Charles. <laughs> At Thanksgiving, he got COVID and I broke down. <gasps> I prepared myself. But the way he gets up and goes every day, he's not going anywhere. He gets up and goes nowhere every day. <laughs> <laughs> We prepare for things and he says he might not be in he might not be here in five years. I tell him he will and he'll outlive us all. I know realistically I'll be around longer than him, so I try to live and have fun and experience as much as I can with him. We try to live it up. 
Miracle claims her relationship was has attracted a lot of negative attention online, with the couple often mistaken for father and daughter. No. What? Really? Maybe plantation owner and slave <laughs> cosplaying together. Jesus. Look, I don't, I hate to say it, but that has to be a component here, right? There's no way you would be attracted to KFC looking motherfuckers unless there was something you were getting off to about the fact that this guy looks like he once ran a plantation that your ancestors lived on. Great Uncle Charles here. Miracle claims her relationship has attracted a lot of attention. She said, one time we're going to Florida on vacation. One time we were going to Florida on vacation. We were renting a car and the lady said, oh, is this your dad? And I said, yes, this is my dad. Hey, Papa, Daddy, I'm a goofy person, so I won't get mad. What a total goofball. <laughs> Miracle claims her relationship has attracted a lot of negative. Uh, I read that. Uh, in public, I don't even care. I don't think of it as being weird. I just go about my day. People on the internet make me feel weird. I get backlash from people who don't know me or love me. They just call it as they the see internet. it. Yes. You're, you have a fetish for the slave plantation owner. It is a surprisingly prevalent fetish. Hey, do you speak from experience? I've heard I, I've okay. Uh I have I have browsed Reddit enough to see the post where the people talk about their desire to be degraded by their white boyfriends and called the N-word. Just throwing that out there. I'm pretty sure that this girl posted that and she finally found the love of her life who still uses the N-word with a hard R. All right. Uh, I think I, I gotta go to bed. There are two. There are two articles left, and they're very. Don't short you chunk dare on pitch out on us. You Thank got you. this. Fudnam couldn't even make it to the start of the show. I know you can make it to the end of the show. Prove you're the behalf. alpha, fucking idiot. Well, yes. Then let's 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 get through right. them then. All right. So uh, people people were saying I'm using char yes for your fetish about being called. Uh, his queen. <laughs> he doesn't know uh, what's going on and is saying I should be ashamed. Of course, people mention finances, but I'm a nurse. I was starting medical school when I met him. Medical school is expensive. <laughs> I will be off with or without Charles. Uh, I'm sorry, I will be well off with or without Charles. It's a choice to be with him and it makes me feel good and he chooses me. That he chooses me, rather. Uh, it's so crazy that people come after me as he's the older one, he's with me of his own free will. He chose me. I've learned it's okay for people to say how they feel. It's a free country. So that is an interesting concept. She's saying it's so crazy that people come after me. He's the older one. He's the one robbing the cradle. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he's like eight feet tall, too. She has to stand on this thing. Dear Lord, how much more could you possibly say? Jesus. I have a lot of followers who, have, uh, who are pro me and Charles. People say we look good. People share their stories about their older men and say that I make them feel comfortable in their skin. Commenters on TikTok debated whether Michelle uh, is the age she claims, with one asking for evidence she's 24. One comment wrote, 24? No way. I gotta see proof you're 24. I'll never uh, I'll never try to guess ages again. Okay. 42, she meant. Oh, burn. Miracle hit back insisting that she was born in 1998 and claims she may look older because she doesn't dress all out. Loved up. Miracle says she's attracted to Charles' laid-back nature, but admits the age difference is stark when it comes to technology. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know how to you run the electric tenga. Miracle said, I love his advice. I know I can go to Charles and ask him anything. I trust he's got uh, I trust he's not going to leave me in the dark. He'll make sure I'm okay. He's peaceful. He's so laid back. He doesn't want to argue. I love to hear his stories. I love to joke with him about technology. 
I will take a photo of a check and deposit it into my bank account. Charles doesn't even have a bank account. <laughs> I'm sorry, a bank card. <laughs> it's so weird how he operates, but I like how he takes it easy. It's a blessing to have someone you can talk to and confide in. I know our relationship looks weird and people think, what's going on here? But I know he got me and I got him. Holy shit. I wish I had not included this. This is awful. Anyway, two, two more articles. Man ejaculates on girl's skirt. Quote, I couldn't get tissues out in time. You would have had this problem if you just bought a tanga. If you had just bought a tanga. Now, this came out on October 14th. On October 12th, I saw man ejaculates on girl's hat. Quote, it wasn't sexual. I just forgot tissues. And my first thought was, oh, that's funny. Two different um, two different authors at Sankaku Complex accidentally reported on the same incident. And then I was like, wait a minute. Girl's skirt? Girl's hat? Whoa, these are two different things. And it's the same author. <laughs> another day, another man was arrested in Japan for not being able to contain his bodily fluids in a tenga. <laughs> it was a man on a train who couldn't get his tissues out on time and proceeded to ejaculate on her skirt. According to the Metropolitan Police Department, 25-year-old Hibiki Saito, an office worker from Tokyo's Setagawa Ward, was arrested for allegedly splashing the word they really mean is bukake, bodily fluids, on the skirt of a teenage female student on her way to school during a morning rush hour. Saito is believed to have unzipped his pants and committed the crime during his morning commute to work, which was discovered after a female passerby pointed out to the student that her skirt had been soiled. Hey, there's cum on your skirt. <laughs> In response to the investigation, Saito reportedly stated, quote, I believe the bodily fluids may have been spilled because I couldn't get tissues or a handkerchief out on time. But I wasn't thinking about splashing the girl with it. Are you fucking crazy? I was just hanging breeds on the train. <laughs> Not my fault. Not my fault there weren't any tissues. Let's see how this... So, look. Full disclosure. Landing a shot on the skirt is one thing, but fucking bonus points for getting it on the hat. All right. That's a fountain right there. Yeah. I mean, unless she well, was sitting I down mean, and you were yeah, standing. She could have been, she yeah. been sitting. But, I mean, she must have seen it coming, right? <laughs> a 35-year-old well, elementary school was teacher was, sus <laughs> was suspended for a year for ejaculating or quote, discharging bodily fluids on a girl's hat during a visit to a children's center. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the twist. The twist. Oh, shit. I'm glad I didn't read these in chronological order. <laughs> oh, fuck. The Fukui Prefectural Board of Education suspended the teacher... For one year. At a you school. can stab a woman. <laughs> and get a year and a half in jail. Or you can jerk off on a child. Now, and hold get on. only one now, year. Hold, hold on. The Whoa. article has not said that he is jerked off. He just ejaculated. Okay. How, how can you know how, how silly that of out? me? You're right. Perhaps he was hanging himself and it just shot out. Let's find out. <laughs> so the Fukui Prefectural Board of Education suspended the teacher for one year of disciplinary action and the teacher has already resigned at his request. According to the report, the former teacher visited a children's center in Taka Takayama in Fukui Prefecture with his own child with his own child okay. in July of 2023. Since the children were playing next door, the man decided to engage in masturbation as oh. he claimed to have been stressed from work and home. 
I spoke too soon, I guess. However, since he had forgotten to bring any tissues or a handkerchief, <laughs> he used a hat on a desk to wipe down his bodily fluids without knowing who it belonged to. I didn't release bodily fluids with any sexual intent towards the girl, said the man who said that he panicked and ran off after ejaculation. So, like, what goes on in your head to do that, first of all? Like, you... you would Not you, having you a tango express. is what goes on in your head. No. Like, let's assume you were able to get off, right? But, like, at some point, you have to think to yourself, mid-stroke, like, oh, shit, I need, like, I need something to wipe this off. Because, like, what the fuck are you going to do? Like, I mean, and then you, to not find anything whatsoever in a classroom or wherever the fuck he was, like... How? How did you not find anything? Oh, a hat. That'll do it. <laughs> and then you what? You, you know what you do? You throw away the hat. <laughs> you look, throw it away. We've, we've covered a lot of crimes. We've covered a lot of crimes. Each one of them had tremendous repercussions tonight. But not a single one of these crimes would have resulted in jail time if you had just used the Tenga. Right. <laughs> So I encourage everyone, please save yourself from jail time. And buy a Tenga today. Use the link in the comments. <laughs> and buy yourself a fucking Tenga. You deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another wonderful podcast. Um, One Piece live action uh, is watchable. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Although I'll be real, I did rewatch. I did rewatch that that first two episodes, and I saw that they did in fact fix the sword. And I am dying to know what happened to Buggy's crew, <laughs> as you pointed out, because it is very stark. Uh, Zoro has literally just gotten off of the spinning wall, and Buggy says, "Where is my entertainers or whatever?" And he says, "They're not coming." What the fuck happened? I gotta know. Um. So where are you in the anime? Um. No, I, I I'm on episode forty one. Nami what? has just called out uh Arlong, and and so basically Luffy... said, "I'm gonna fight you." So has Luffy started fighting him yet? Luffy is underwater with his long neck. Okay. But he's about to be released. Okay. So if I finish the R long arc, does that count as finishing getting caught up, or do I have to go all the way to episode sixty to see Garp? No. Uh, no. Well, you could skip to Garp's episode. Is like there's two episodes. Um, so technically, if you wanted to go watch them, you could go skip to just watch those two episodes. I don't skip. That uh -huh. ain't happening. Thank you. Thank you for your suggestion. It has been denied. <laughs> then then you got to watch all the way to those two episodes. All right. Um, I'm probably just going to finish the Arlong arc for now. Which is um, like, what? What is that? And then he'd have to watch like 300 something episodes. Well, maybe not 300, but like 200 something episodes just to get the card. No, he's, he's, he's talking about the uh, the flashback. Or, well, not the flashback. The, the Helmeppo and Kobe side story at, at one point you told me i needed to get to episode 60 or something um i'm on episode 41 honestly i wish i had watched the show much earlier I, i'm just going to be repeating myself i fucking hate the dragon ball cast in i hate it like give me literally anybody else but the dragon ball cast because it is so fucking lazy. Um, I really Did liked you. Good. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say I, re I really liked the live action. Um, it gave me exactly what I like out of live actions, which is a loose adherence to the plot. Story beats that need to be there are there. The rewrite is appropriate to what they needed to do in order to condense it down to eight episodes or whatever. Um, and I'm excited to see where they go from here. Um, 
there have been only like one or two points in the anime that I was like, fuck, I wish that was in the live action. Um, namely, Luffy uh, ripping that mast off of um, Kuro's ship. Um, that part was fucking hilarious in the in the anime. I don't think it would have lived up to it in the live action with the Michael Jackson guy. But other than that, I, I thought the live action was great. Yeah. Um, those are my thoughts. Um, what did you think of the scene where uh, Nami asks for their help? Nami is a different character in the anime versus the uh, live action. Um, I don't think the live action pulled off the scene. Um, yeah. But I also don't think that... I think that the Nami leaving is handled better in the live action. I think that Nami's reuniting with them is handled better in the anime. Yeah, fair enough. I I agree that in the anime it is a little weird where she's like just like looking at the the wanted poster and then pieces. Yeah. So I I'll, I'll just say this that and this is obvious. It's fucking obvious when you think about it, but in the live action it feels as though or or in the, let me rephrase that. In the anime it's obvious, it, it's like really abundantly obvious that this was written week to week. Like, parts of the story feel like... Yeah, like 100%. O, o, Oda feels like he's <clears throat> never missed a deadline at the expense of the story being good. Like, I wrote something as like, it ain't very good, you know? Um, but the live action has the advantage of being able to see where things go and knowing the outcome and being able to write a story that doesn't string you along as much. And I think that that's, that's where it's really, in my opinion, it's really benefiting from is that, is that it's able to take what is now over a thousand episodes uh, and be able to articulate the story in such a way where like it's intelligently being told. And I really like the fact that they went out of their way to like, for example, I rewatched episode, the early episodes last night um, for the live action and ax hand Morgan mentions like when he's, when he's talking himself up, he talks about how he's the one who took down Kuro, the, uh, the black cat pirate leader. Yeah. Right. And that comes back later on. You know, and when I first watched it, it just went over my head. I didn't even read it. Did, I didn't commit it to memory. You know what I mean? So, um, I like it's what they basically did. never even mentioned in the in the anime. In the anime, yeah. in the you manga, to, it is. Um, you have I to remember pay it attention. being mentioned in a flashback in the manga. It actually like makes more sense in the anime because Kuro, the way that they kind of tell the story, it almost seems like. It wasn't an agreement between him and, and Axhan Morgan. It was a deception he pulled on Axhan Morgan to think that Morgan had had defeated him. Yeah. When in actuality yeah. he was like faking his own death kind of thing. Yeah. So no, and and in the anime it's it's weird because it's I think I've said it before, but when when he gets hypnotized, well, okay, so first of all, it shows the backstory, right, uh, Green Lane, but like they yeah. never mention that that's Axhan, uh, that mm -hmm. like. They break his jaw, and they just like, oh, this is some random marine. He's gonna take credit, and they never mention it's uh, uh, Axan. So it's it wasn't until like later, later, or, like more like last year or this mm -hmm. year even that I was it was pointed out to me that that is Axan Morgan. But anyway, and and then it changes his character because like he was hypnotized into being a, a dick, and that made him more of like a a worse marine right hmm. um so but um but oh i forgot what i was gonna say but yeah anyway they they definitely they definitely uh had him get hypnotized right uh, as like you are going to think that you took down kuro 
Mirage Zara says, imagine if her nickname in the bedroom is Miracle Whip. <laughs> I don't know. That That'd was a very name. strange article. Yeah, right? Like the Whipper of Miracle. <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. Well, anybody else got thoughts on the One Piece live action? Because we are moving into Shield Hero Season 2 territory. Nope. <laughs> um, uh, so the next saga of the I'm gonna, I'm podcast gonna... is going to be titled Remembering Fondly and Feeling Sorry with the Fact that We No Longer Have Billy Kamets. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I'm, I may as well say it now. You're, ahead, you're, I think you're close enough. I was going to wait till you finished it. But, That's okay. Go ahead. Um, so why I think that um the handling of Arlong is better in the anime and worse mm. and now I don't even remember if I told you this already. If I'm repeating myself, stop me, I guess. But in the um live action, right, he shows up and beats Luffy. I think I've said this before, actually. Who does? Uh, Arlong. Okay. Arlong beats Luffy, right? in uh Baratier and then they have to go back and chase him and then they get to the island and Luffy has to fight him again and during that fight he's saying stupid things that Luffy would never say like I don't know if I can beat you and like you might be stronger than me um whereas in the anime he just decks him and he yeah. and sends he him flying punches him in the face <laughs> and it's Look. very clear from the start that like luffy is fucking around he is stronger than arlong and so it's not something that like when later on he's presented with stronger villains it's not like oh well you know he how did he get this strong or or you have to get, see him do a training arc to get there it's oda has always or does this often, I should say, where he, before a fight, he'll kneecap his his character. His characters, yeah. So that it's yeah, understood that they could Nero's beat this like character injured, um, w- and if they didn't the have. Water. So yeah, if they didn't have this handicap. I think it's fair to point out that Oda has had a couple of good ideas, but they weren't polished as well as they could be. For example, Usopp fighting the fish man in the anime was a good idea where he uses like the ketchup bomb or whatever to fake his own death. But then he like gets up and attacks the guy and the guy beats the shit out of him. And then the guy starts sucking up the water in order to blast the, the forest or whatever to get after Usopp. And then Usopp hits him with like the spice the spice Tabasco thing sauce. Yeah. yeah so like it's an interesting idea I'm that the guy had him. like he sucked up the water and i thought he had sucked up all the water I was like, oh that's clever like he sucked up all the water so now that like usopp literally let him blast him until there was no more water so that when he hit him with the tabasco there was no relief to be found but then there's other pools of water right next to him because the rice he only sucked up one rice field you know and I just feel like the way that they handled it in the in the live action, I just feel like they really take advantage of the fact that like the ideas are a little bit unrefined and they just go ahead and refine them, you know? So Yeah. Um, well it's like you mentioned this. It's a Did Usopp thing. even I have fight to get in the chapter the... out by the yeah. Did right he fight in the live action? Uh for just quickly, oh, there's definitely a, a situation with Oda where like even going to current day, mm-hmm. like the weekliness of it is, he he has an overall plot, but there's that de- you can definitely see some things he's like making on the fly decisions. About. Yeah. Um, but what I was gonna say is, did Usopp even fight in the last battle, or um, in the Fishman Island, bit live for the action. live action? In the live action, well, sort of. He fights the one guy. Um, that, that is the same guy from the anime, 
Um, but he does it in such a way where he just hits him with the um, he hits him with the slingshot with one of his special rounds um, after he convinces him that he's been beaten. Right, so it's the same thing as the anime, except that instead of the part in the anime where the guy like sucks up the water and blasts it at him with a cannon or whatever, um, he just defeats him with the blast, uh, with the uh, slingshot, um, after he convinces him that he was not, um, that he was defeated. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, This is a very interesting instance with. uh, one piece because it is effectively the first u.s live action anime series right typically it's a movie right and they've all been pretty awful for the most part Um, for them they did an actual series here and i think that that really worked for them yeah um so trying to condense a story to like an hour and a half yeah and I think that you have to make significantly more t- – like, they made some – so I think in order to get caught up with everything except for Garp, which they weaved Garp way earlier in the story, um, you need to get through 43 episodes to get through what Netflix has shown us. They did that in eight hour-long episodes, so let's just say 16 episodes. So it's roughly a third, you know, not quite a third, but roughly no. a third. Uh it's 24. Yeah, it'd be about mean? 24. It'd be, th- like, it'd be about three episodes per hour, 20 minutes per episode. Because when you like the 24 minute episodes, you got to take off like the three minutes for the opening and ending. Eight uh, times three is 24. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless, they had to cut, cut down almost 50%, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and they took stuff from further on with Garp and everything. I, I think they did a fantastic job. Right. Um, there's an emotional connection with most of the characters. Um, one of the things that like it's very strange when you're watching a franchise or a, a, a property is introducing characters quickly and making those characters matter. Right. Like um, I talked about this in my uh, first impressions for Broly. Um, Chi Lai is a character that comes into the story in that movie and is immediately likable. Right, uh, something about her personality type and the way that she presents herself, um, the audience naturally likes her, right? And that's not easy to do, you know. Like, there's a lot of characters that important stuff is happening in media that we watch, and you're bored. You know, I don't fucking care. This character's being killed. Who cares? Who is this guy? I don't give a fuck, right? Like, I don't care when a character gets amnesia, you know, because I didn't watch them create the memories. You create a series about a character who lost them. Oh, who gives a shit, right? Um, So I just think that, like, I think that they did a pretty good job um, because most of the characters, um, Sanji especially, I, I like Sanji way more in the live action than the anime. I hate his character in the anime. But that's largely because of the Don Krieg shit. Like, that was just fucking awful. Like, how long that went on, that character Pearl, that didn't need to be there, that was yeah. filler. Like, it fucking it does, terrible. It does get dragged on a little bit yeah. too long. That's, um, so, yeah, that's canon, actually, the Pearl dick. Yeah, I'm just saying it feels like filler. Oh, like, right, it, doesn't, yeah. it does not feel important at all, right? Um. The whole thing about Don Creek just does not seem important. It doesn't set anything up. It's just a fight. A fight for I the sake of I think it sets up like the grand line, how tough the grand line is going to be. It's like that because uh, Mihawk shows up and just absolutely decimates. So Mihawk, yes. I feel Creed. like Mihawk is important. I don't feel like Don Creek is important. And in the live action, they I feel like they set up Mihawk by having him fight Don Creek's men. And cutting their ships in half and shit in his introduction. And then they just skip him needing to go to the Baratier at all. And I thought that worked, right? And I felt that it worked to have Sanji um, prepare the meal for the guy from presumably Don Krieg's crew without having it be this big thing where immediately after I feed this guy, he comes right back with the entire fleet and tries to 
take over the pirate like restaurant for some fucking reason. Like, well, I think it was he was using that to show that like Sanji's um, belief in like we need to feed people who are hungry applies mm -hmm. even in the face of Don Krieg's whole fleet there, right? Because Gein comes in and says, oh, give me food. He's like, all right, cool. Here, you're one guy. I'm going to feed you, right? Mm -hmm. Then he goes away, and you're like, okay, well, he helped one guy. Yeah. Then he comes back with Don Krieg, and he's like, feed me. And everyone's like, are you insane? Obviously, we don't feed this guy. He's going to kill us as soon as you feed him. And Sanji's still like, nah, we're yeah, feeding and, him. And I feel like in the, in the live action, I feel like... I can get behind Sanji feeding the one guy who's hungry, right? I can't get behind Sanji feeding an entire army effectively. Like, it just didn't feel like it fit, you know? Um, so I really liked the way they handled his story um, in the live action. And um, I hated Kaya and all that shit. That was terrible. Um, for the most part, but everything else I thought was pretty, pretty decently well handled, um, except for like the the kid actors weren't very good. But honestly, I don't know. I just I thought it was great. Um, I, you know, I, I should I should say, um, One Piece is not the first live action series. Uh, Cowboy Bebop would technically take that, and that was fucking awful for the most part, um, in terms of. Right following any source material whatsoever but uh, it was so bad i when you said that about the series thing i didn't even think about it it was like yeah. it's like out of my mind. you've erased it effectively yeah. from your memory right like it doesn't even register anymore. well i mean i i only watched the like half an episode but like the fact that it exists is like out of my mm -hmm. mind too yeah anyway um you guys have any more thoughts or should we call it here i'm good to call it Let's so, call it. I don't know how it keeps lining up like this. Um, I would love to do a weekly show. I would. Nothing would make me happier. The only way I can make that happen is if you buy a fucking tanga, right? <laughs> but uh, um, weirdly, every day that we have off is like, oh, I have something going on. So uh, I'm going to an AI conference next weekend. Um, so we aren't going to be doing a show. Just want to give you guys a heads up. Um, but... He's gonna. Are you are you going to uh, plot a assassination of the queen? No. <laughs> 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 I wanted so desperately to say a different word there. <laughs> no, um, but uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, my boss is taking me to an AI conference, so. Um, I'm going to be out of town next weekend. Um, so that, that works out for us. You know, it's our off week. Um, I would very much like to go back to doing this show weekly, though. I, this is killing me to keep doing it like this. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll take it one day at a time. Buy a Tenga. We'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> anyway. Just start it out. Yeah, so uh, let me uh, decide what to play for our outro clip. Oh, uh, we got to play the most appropriate one. The ye intro? No, no. Oh, well, you do it. All right, I will. We'll have to edit this. <laughs>